Good morning and welcome to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the Rawleys Stuart Butter Invitation Burnside Pairs for 2024. Uh, obviously broadcasting live from the Burnside Bowling Club. We're going to cover three games today and today's the last round of section play essentially. And it is an interesting, it's going to be an interesting one. We're going to see an Australian team of N Natasha Van Eldick take on, with Alan Ryan, sorry, uh, take on Barry Andrews and Tom Tyra. Uh, my name is Alex Reid. I'm joined in commentary today by Dave Edwards. And Dave, I believe you've had an update on the conditions. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, look, very, very blustery weather down in Christchurch today. It's going to be extremely challenging conditions for the players. The greens, you know, at Burnside are always immaculate, but they're also a little bit quick. So any wind about is going to have a big effect on today's game. So we're probably going to have to cut the players a bit of slack today around, uh, and the heads might not be quite as uh, brilliant as what we normally expect when you've got that blustery wind. The biggest enemy of bowls, of course, is that wind. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah can be one of the most incredibly frustrating things. Uh, but, you know, we're still going to see some good bowls, and it's an intriguing section, this one. You can find everything you need to know about it on the Burnside uh, website, but essentially all the teams have a chance of going through to the final later on today. Yeah, it's an interesting format that the Burnside Club runs, and I'll sort of explain it as we go through this end, perhaps, uh, as we see... Natasha Van Eldick with her first bowl of the game and you can see Ellen Ryan just clapping it on the left of the photo there, two current international uh, players for Australia. And yeah, so uh, 48 teams started the, the event, it's a, it is a huge event, uh, been going for a number of years now and 48 teams started this, so into um, eight sections of six, you play your five section round games and then the top two from each section qualify for the main event. So that means there are 16 play, 16 teams who come through and qualify for the main event, and they're split into, then re-split again into four sections of four. And so you play, in your section of four, you play the other three teams, and the winner of each of those sections of four then goes through to the semi-final, which will be on after this game. So, yes, it's a reasonably convoluted exercise no, made, to get through to the finals. But made absolutely yes. beautiful sense there, there Dave. That's great. That's great. I suppose it's one of those things, once you've played it, um, once you sort of understand what you need to do. And these players, like we spoke about before, all the teams having a chance, they'll have had a look at the results and understand who needs to win by how much um, to have a chance here. See Barry Andrews bowl just got a gust of wind, you can see it on its way up the rink, just stepping out. Still, gonna get Still coming desire. back. Oh, oh, oh what a, a shot. Bowl. Very, very good. Yeah, so within this section of four, the other two teams, uh, Bronwyn Stevens and Mike Galloway. Yes, yep. Uh, skipped teams, and in this section of four, so they've already had two rounds of, of the little section of four yesterday, and uh, each team's won one game each, so it's really cutthroat. It comes down to this game, and we'll have to keep an eye on the Mike Galloway, Bronway, Bronwyn Stevens scoreboard as well as we get near the end of this game. Uh, just yeah. to see, because it, it's going to come down to, because uh, at the completion of this round, uh, two teams in the section are going to have two wins each, and it's, so it's going to come down to differential of shots as to who's going to win the section. Yeah, essentially, if Galloway wins by a little bit, it's the winner of this game that will easily go through. If Galloway crushes the Stevens, and this game's close, something else could happen. <laughs> so, so on and so forth. So, it's going to be really interesting. But we'll tr we'll do our best to sort of uh, uh, keep our eyes peeled and. Uh, Everyone know what's happening. This is Tom Tyro here. That's a nice bowl. Good start here from the Tyro Andrews team. Yes, you can see a good call here from Tash. Natasha Van Eldick, she's telling Alan to play with weight through those three bowls. You've got a reasonably wide target there. Just clean something out. If you're underneath the bowls, you might get the jack, but she's in the area. She's going to get something here. Only got one of them. She's a little bit unlucky that she didn't clean out more than just the one, but yeah. reduced the count to two shots at the moment for Barry Andrews and Tom Tyra. 
Because it was right in the area, wasn't it? Sort of when someone's that close to Kennedy and all the bowls out, you sort of half expect to see three or four bowls go flying. But as you said, we only we only lost two off the head. Thanks, Barry. Oh, we'll try. <laughs> Here we go. Tom Tara, his bowl. Yeah, that's good stuff. Like we said before, I mean, the conditions are not going to be easy today. Uh, Colin and I were putting the cameras out this morning and we just about took off like a parachute. And it's certainly uh, the wind is blowing and it's gusty wind as well today, which is going to be... That's the challenging one, isn't it? Because it's so unpredictable. And the moment you start trying to uh, go, oh, the wind's going to blow this way or that way, you're asking for it to go wrong. Yep, it's one of those scenarios with, with wind about. You've just got to stick to your, sh your, your pre-shot routine, your process... And obviously, if, a, if it's a side wind, you may have to adjust your line a little bit. But generally, it's a matter of just doing the best you can at your end of the mat to get the bowl away as best you can. And if the wind gets it, it's incredibly frustrating. But you've just got to let that go as we see another run shot here. She cleans out another one of the shots. It would still be two to Tyra and Andrews. Yeah, they're still holding two. Back of the head... Isn't brilliantly covered. It's the other thing, <clears throat> sorry, the other thing to point out, Alex, is the format of the game. It's um, it's an unusual format for us. This is the way the Australians tend to play a lot of their peers' competitions. It's two by two by two by two. So lots of walking for the players, and um, so so the lead plays two bowls and then goes up to the head, and the skip goes down and plays two bowls. Then the leads go back down and play another two and then the skips go down and complete the end. So there's a lot of walking. Uh, and so, so, so basically, my way of defining this game is that it's a game of fours played mm. by two, two people. Yeah. It's the best way to go about approaching this format. Yeah, I quite enjoy watching the um, the walking pairs or the Australian pairs. Certainly far more interesting. I think the um, the most boring game I've ever seen in my life is the two bowl pairs that is really popular in England, where the lead plays two bowls and the skip plays two bowls. And it would be exciting to play, I'd imagine, because every bowl is important. Um, but I'd, yeah, nah. <laughs> this is a good form of pairs. I like this one, Dave. Yep, it's a, it is good. As I say, it's very tactical. As it, it, you make it a game of fours oh, being played by two people. As needs to hold! On the drive again. Oh. Goodness gracious me. That may very well have drifted out a little bit on the wind. It looked like she was definitely going to make contact with that front, front shot pop, but it may have just drifted off, drifted out away from that bowl on the wind. So it could be a very, very good opening end here for Andrews and Tyra. Oh, perfect end. And Barry slightly overplayed that bowl, but it's easy to do, so we're going to see... I think three I on think that first end. Yep. Excellent start, particularly if uh, you're in the situation with that Barry and Tom are in, and Natasha and Ellen really, where it's essentially a must-win situation, and you want to ideally um, get on a roll. It'll become more clear as the game goes on. Tom Tyra and Barry Andrews, South Canterbury players, and both very, very experienced. Barry Andrews um, been on the scene for a number of years, played representative intercentre bowls for South Canterbury for, look, a very long time. I'm not 100% sure exactly how long, but a very long time. So very experienced player. And Tom, a lot younger, but um, also, um, even though he's a younger, he has been on the scene for a long time and... When I was involved with the New Zealand system, he was on the radar at our, for our age group training squads. So very, very well-regarded player as well. So one of those players that's come through, come through the ranks and through the systems, now playing senior senior level bowls. He's got a pretty groove delivery. Let's go with the smallest. It's very consistent. I'm not going to call it a dump because that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of it doesn't quite come out super duper smooth, but it's exactly the same every time and looks pretty good. He's a very, very consistent player, uh, Tom. And of course the two Australian girls world 
world-class players, both of them. Alan Ryan, of, of course, won the gold medal in the pairs mm. at the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Played an extraordinary last bowl to win it. Had to drive a shot bowl off the he- off the jack. The jack had been moved off centre, and the opposition had drawn a very very close shot. And uh, the only option for Ellen was to drive the bowl off, and she got it as clean as a whistle. Sort of uh, thing to win a gold yeah. medal. It was, it's a shot that'll live in her memory for a long time. I was going to say, if ever you were having a bad day, you just go and find that clip. If I was Alan, <laughs> go. Here's a good memory. Absolutely. Absolutely. She played with Christina Christick from Perth in that uh, in that team. They were the pair that won the gold. Very honest back end here. Now we um we did think that because the Australians generally use yellow bowls, uh, we weren't too fussed about stickers. Uh, for this game, Dave, because well, the Australians always use the yellow bowls, but they've gone and uh, they've not done that, so we just have to pay a bit of attention in this game. Nice, no, it's simple enough though, because as you said, it's a game of fours, but it to be four bowls of one colour and four bowls the other, so we don't have to think, uh, don't have to think too hard. So we watch this bowl here from the Tarshes. Something to work from. Very good opening bowl, perfect speed. Under the windy conditions, you take that one any any time. Yeah, it's just it's an interesting mindset for this form this form of the game, the two and walk as the Australians call it. Uh, it and I, as I alluded to earlier on, basically it's a game of fours played mm. by two people. So you've got to have the right mindset when you go to the mat, right, what, what's my role at the moment? Okay, obviously, right, the, the first end leading, all I'm doing is trying to get as close as I can. But then when the skips go up for their first set of two bowls, they've got to be thinking like a two and a four. Yes. You'll be thinking, okay, have we got the shot? Yes, we have. Okay, maybe I need to start looking at getting something around the back with my first bowl to get some cover in. If we haven't got the shot, obviously, I've got to try and draw the shot. Uh, so it's really very much um, putting yourselves, putting the hat of the position in the four that you're playing on before you get to the mat and working out. Uh, how, so, so it's a very good challenging format of the game. As we see um, another well-drawn shot from Natasha Van Eldek at the moment, they'll be holding two. You can see the wind blustery when fluttering the clothes of the players and Tom taking a moment to try and <laughs> hopefully pick a time when it's settled down you can see he's, he's standing on the mat waiting for it to drop a little bit on the back end a lot of bowls narrow on the back end on the second end see how this bowl ends up a reasonable track if it just holds. Very good first bowl, isn't it? Excellent opener from Tom Tyra, and you can see, it's as you say, all those bowls finishing there. Obviously, the wind is assisting them across the head. There, you really need to. I think they might. I think they might <clears throat> still be one down. I think it looks like the angles that we can see there that Natasha Van Eldek's bowl might still be holding shot. We can see Ellen really giving this one some grass now, and now she's praying for the wind to blow <laughs> just to bring it back, although she's overplayed it weight-wise. So it's, um, but her line would have been not too bad. She definitely threw it way out into the wind. It's quite an, exp- it's an experience thing to do, isn't it? Because you want to sort of, um, early on in the game, it's not a bad thing to do something that feels instinctively wrong. Like you just think, right, I'll just I'll make sure I take... A lot of green here, and if it's successful, then you go, cool, now I know my line. Instead of spending four or five ends battling away and trying to take, you think, oh, I've taken, I know I've taken six inches more green or a little bit more green. Why is it still turning? It's quite smart just to push it right out, further out than you think you need to go, and just see what happens. Absolutely, and if it does finish a little bit wide, so what? At least mm. it's, um, it's out, you haven't crossed the centre line, and you can then, as you said, you can then... 
use that as your as your gauge from for, for for adjustments going forward as we see this one on a very very good line from Barry Andrews here. Oh, beautiful Fair, track. Is he going to finish off? Just needed a little bit more running. Natasha played two good bowls already on this end. Well, there's a commentator's curse. I'll be surprised if that's wide enough. But she could yeah, be heavy and narrow enough to get a good inside out result. Or a lucky slide, but <laughs> yeah. no, not quite. You can see there. It's a reasonable cluster of bowls, isn't it? Not too bad ahead, really, considering the uh, conditions. So the other conditions of play that we've got to keep in mind, of course, Alex, is the fact that they 13 ends this game or two-hour time limit. Yes, I scroll down to the bottom. It says it's 15 ends for post-section. Um, okay. So I was that was my fault. <laughs> but only for this Division 1. Everyone else on the greens, three greens, is playing 13 ends or two hours, and that's how they got okay. here. Uh, but it reads like this one's 15 ends. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the time limit is. Um, but it'll be running close. I know they've sh they took the time limit down a little bit. They play a lot of bowls, these guys. They've played, uh, what is it, three rounds. They've played five rounds up but until, seven rounds up until today. So this is their eighth yeah, game. Yeah, so they played four games on Friday. It's a mm. massive day on the Friday. Eight hours of bowls with the little gaps in between for a bit of refreshment. But Oh, oh it's, lucky, it's gone lucky, well. lucky there. It's going to be the shot, and now they're measuring for second shot. We think that it might be two to the Australian girls. So Tom Tyro's bowls are the ones with the split, and the Aussie ones, they've got Australian stickers on them, so that makes it a bit easier to see. Yep, so that's definitely two. Two it is. So the Australian girls on the board. That'll give them a, a bit of confidence to get underway. Shorter length end being played here by the Australian girls. Alan Ryan. Much shorter, isn't it? It is. Let's see her first bowl Maybe here. Maybe they're working on the... Th Working on the theory, less distance to get hammered by the wind. Oh, look at that. You can see the wind is just blowing that bowl. Didn't even get a chance to break that bowl. It's taken, it's turned less than a foot. Tom here on his back end. Watch this one out. It'll, it'll track out too. The theory usually, Dave, is that you play the, the straighter hand, isn't it? Well, look, now you see, this is a great debate. We used to debate this a lot uh, in the New Zealand team. Now, if you can get the narrow hand, absolutely. If, but my theory that we tended to run with was that at least on the wind-assisted hand, your bowl's coming back into the head. Yes. At least it's, it's going to bring it back into play. But sometimes on the, on the narrow hand, if it's... One minute, like, you can see exactly what's happened there with Ellen. She cut her green with the second one, got no wind, and goes hooning across narrow. So we tended to work on the theory your bowl was better off coming back mm. into the head with the wind up its bottom yeah, uh, rather than trying to fight whether you were going to get a straight. You know, I mean, look, if you can latch onto the straighter hand and it's more of a consistent wind, it's not gusting, then yes, you're right because you, you can trust that the wind's there the whole time and you can play that narrow hand with confidence. However, it's when it's gusting that um, you get this, the, the exact bowls that we see here that Alan's delivered. One where the wind held it out, she makes a little adjustment, gets no wind and goes narrow. So yeah, we, we tended to let the bowl, let the wind bring the bowl mm. home on the big swooping hand. That makes sense. I think that makes sense. I think there's probably an argument that if it's a... Uh... 
if it's a rink issue, so if you're just playing a normal day of bowls and your wind is not an issue, if your rink has a straight hand and a swinging hand, the logic should be you play the straighter hand because there's less margin of error. You know, if you miss by a foot on a straight hand out of your hand, you'll be a foot away when it gets to the end, whereas opposed to missing by a foot on a swinging hand, it'll hoof across. But certainly yep. inconsistent when that makes sense to me. Look at this. Barry Andrews just getting no turn. <laughs> Shorter end as well, of course, so you don't have to take as much green, but that bowl is one he would let go and thought, well, it's never a chance of coming back. And Tash, Natasha, she's judged to her first bowl to perfection, so, and drew the shot with it. Let's see what happens with this one. It just all depends on when you're playing the tight hand like this, how much wind you do get, and she's played it pretty well again. Good bowls. Yeah, that's very, pretty very class. Good bowls, that's yep. Pretty classy stuff, isn't it? So you would say that she's worked out the wind. She's she's worked the wind out on that narrow hand, obviously, with two very, very good bowls. So she can play that with a lot of confidence now. See, Barry's one being held out here, held out, held out. Now, as the speed comes off, it'll start turning. It was a bit unlucky not to have ended yeah. up with a second shot there. It wasn't far away, really. So on the crossover, Australia holding one and a half. So the bowl at 11 o'clock and the bowl that sits at mm, seven to the jack. So another thing I'd like to mention, too, about this event, it's known as the stew butter pears. Now... Stu Butter was a member of the Burnside Club, but Stu, first and foremost, was one of nature's true gentlemen, an absolutely unbelievable guy. Just no one ever had a bad word to say about Stu Butter. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say, well, he was an outstanding coach. Mm. Now, Stu was the coach of the New Zealand team before I took over the role, and Unfortunately, Stu died far, far too young of cancer. And it was a really, really sad time and a big blow for the sport in New Zealand because Stu was an outstanding coach. And I was privileged enough to work under Stu as a, you know, as a Bowls New Zealand regional development coach, as we see. Excellent reply there from Tom Tyro. And I was, so yes, I was privileged to work under the tutelage of Stu Butter, um, learning my trade as a coach, and uh, he was an outstanding coach and a great mentor for up-and-coming coaches and passed away, as I said, far, far too young, and uh, hence the, this event named uh, in the memory of Stu. And, um, yeah, as I, was, I picked up the role of national coach a few months after Stu passed away, and it was... Um, yeah, incredibly sad times for the sport, but we remember him with huge fondness. And I think uh, really fantastic that this event uh, continues. I mean, it's it's going to be going on for the foreseeable future, right? It's a very popular event, and always you get those conversations um, about Stu and his work uh, as the national coach sort of set the tone um, for what we do in coaching in New Zealand. And we still play... You know, the DVD they made 20 years ago, uh, The New Zealand Way, is still requested often <laughs> and watched a lot by bowlers in New Zealand. So a huge amount of work uh, that he put into the sport and, and I think you could argue has made a, a real tangible impact to the players that we have now. Absolutely. I remember Joe was hugely complimentary of Stu and the assistance that he gave her uh, in the international scene, but you're dead right about that um, DVD. And not only New Zealanders use it; it's used worldwide. The number of players who have told us from overseas that they, it's still there. The coaching DVD that he developed, he put together, is still used internationally. And I remember um, Kerry Clark said to me after a, it had been out and about for 10, 15 years or so, he said, "Look, do we?" do we need to update this DVD, do you think, do you know, to have a look at it? And I said, look, I'll go through it bit by bit and just see whether there's anything that we need to add. Or mm. and, I, and I did, and I went back to him, I said, no, nah, we don't it's need fine. to change anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he was so far ahead of his time in a lot of ways, uh, Stu, and um, 
he was uh, he was instrumental in getting a biomechanist involved in uh, looking at, at the perfect bowls delivery and uh, using the use of biomechanics as we see an attacking shot here from Barry Andrews and he's close to the wind just going all in now. That's the weight that the wind can really, it just gives your bowl just enough time to get a gust of wind if you're playing with a bit of movement, doesn't it? That sort of, that ditch weight. And, and it only needs a little feather of wind just to, just to deviate it half a bowl off yeah. line is enough to make him miss. So he was desperately unlucky there. Running this one out. This could be... Oh, I'm not sure that's good. Probably still enough of a gap. Uh, and Barry's going to have another play, nibble. Yeah, he's just looking to play weight to Tom Tyro's uh, red and blue bowl that we see there. If he, if he happens to make contact on that bowl, he's going to pop the shot bowl out. And Tom's bowl should stay there, but he's just pushed it out a little bit wide. I don't think we can blame the wind that time. I think he was just a little bit wide out of the hand. So another one to the Australian girls to tie things up at three apiece after three ends. Well, contested game, good ends, good heads so far. For the conditions, yeah, for the conditions, the heads have been really good. Be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if we see those um, arriving shots or the shot play will probably speed up. You want to give your bowl sort of the smallest amount of time uh, between letting it go and it doing the thing uh, to get moved around by the wind and those run shots can be super duper frustrating because you know you've let it go good uh, but it's got maybe seven seconds just to, to deviate before it hits. And short ends seem to be the go from the Australians here. That's interesting. Good first bowl, and they look like look like they've decided to to stick with the narrow hand, which is fine, that, that, especially when you're getting it. Yeah, it's fine if you're getting it, isn't it? <laughs> it's uh, there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Even Tom's decided to stick with that hand as well. So it's funny; it can be easy to follow the leader, can't it? When you're playing in a in a game of bowls, you don't even you don't think about it too much, but often you find yourself uh, following your opposition's path down. Absolutely. It's all about being comfortable yourself, though. You've just got to have the confidence that yes, I know my lines down here now, and I can, and I'm more than happy to stay here. As we oh, see that's another brilliant. very, very good opening. That's two great opening bowls there from Alan Ryan. To get them on the line like that in these conditions, it's unbelievably good and inter interesting. So Tom must be just trying to look to get another bowl. There or thereabouts, that's when we talk about this fours theory. Tom's not thinking, oh, I have to draw the shot now. He's thinking, I'm a lead, so I just want to make it easier for the two. And uh, the way he's looking at that, I would say, oh, well, the wind's coming across the head, I suppose, so we can't blame it, but certainly not where he was aiming for it to be. I think he did cop a little bit of a headwind scenario there. Yep, you did right, Alex. It's about, yep, getting into the mindset of, of playing fours. And, uh, yep, you don't have to have the shot. The leads and twos don't have to have the shot. It's about building the head, and it's like a game of chess, building the head, getting the head set up so that later in the end for the for the three and the skip, that's when you can start looking to, OK, what shot do I need to play now to get... Now that we've got some bowls in the area, some bowls mm. we've got the head set up, we, we might still be one or two down, but we've got chances because we've got bowls on the head. Yeah, and a lot of it's patience, isn't it? This it's so, so tempting to play a bowl too early. As we see Barry, maybe he'll be, there could be some aggression here. I'll just, I'll hold that thought until we've seen Barry's bowl. He is going to be, and I don't mind this, because at two and a four, if the skip was up there, he'd probably look at this and say, yeah, look, we need to, we need to get into this before the, it, yeah, so I mean, Look at the wind, grab that and <laughs> take it offline pretty quickly. Turn the entire way, but I think Barry's probably committed with the second bolt. And it looks like a, I mean, the target from the player's end, that'll look pretty inviting. You'd back yourself to be within, you'd back yourself to change something, provided that nothing changes here. Barry will back himself to change something with this bolt. And as I say, if you were the skip of a fours team and you're looking at this head, the option of, of driving is not a bad one because... Mm. 
you've got to draw within a foot to get sort of third or fourth shot. So, and a kill's a kill. That's better green here. Watch it coming to the head. Chipped one out. He was much closer with that bowl, but still that half a bowl wide. And an interesting end developing here for the, the West End team. Warning bells will be ringing. Still three down. What now thought? Be interesting. What thought was I having, Dave, before that happened? It was you something. Back to oh me. goodness! It was something interesting as well. Now nah, it's gone. <laughs> That's <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> I'm, we've got two more games after this. I'm sure it'll come to me at some point as we see Alan Ryan stacking it in. This is when you can smell a bit of blood in the water. That's lovely bowls, right. isn't it? Look at that. It's a lovely bowl because she hasn't fanned it up a great deal at all. It's only sort of a one and a half bowl target. But uh, I see Barry Andrews pointing at, at the target saying, yep, you're going to have to hit that, mate. Get past your own bowl. This is very close here. This is very... Oh, look at that. Oh. Duck away. The wind really got oh. that. As you said, I was very interested. I thought, yes, he's on target here. And then the gust of wind just hooked it offline and dire straits now. They've got three bowls left. They've got, and they're going to be driving with all three of them until they get a result here. Oh, I, think sure you have, the, I think you have to. I think you have to. I mean, because as I mentioned earlier on, you've got to draw within, what is it, about 18 inches to get third shot even here. So, so we see Ellen Ryan running for cover. She's putting in a back bowl here just in case it doesn't kill. Yeah, that's smart. They've th thought, well, we've stacked up enough. We're holding four. We've got a narrow target. Look, from the player's point of view, no, I don't like this. I think you've just got to commit to the drive. From the player's point of view, oh, that's what you can see, a one-and-a-half bowl target. You may as well just have three flies at it and see what you can, see what you can do. It's so hard to try and draw even. Even fourth shot would be good, Dave. You'd be happy with fourth shot. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's such I understand. A, you've got to get within 18 inches to get fourth shot. It's In these conditions, it's a big ask. And he, I mean, that's yeah, he's it. He's over, overplayed it a little bit. Um, had pretty good grass, but still four down. Now Barry Andrews is humming and hurrying. Do I go it or what? What do I do here? Oh. They're up a creek, is what I would suggest. And uh, Australia holding a good four. All that Natasha will want to do is not make the target any bigger than what it is. You know, if you draw a fifth shot beating Tom's bowl at five o'clock or six o'clock to the head, you're, you're fine. On the forehand. This is the holding hand. Well, it's the hand where the wind's going from right to left on your screen. Don't want to make the target any bigger. I want to make the target any bigger. Hello. Oh, Hello. Yes, that's not a good bowl. You know, if Barry... She knows oh, it. Yeah, gutted. There's a chance to make this a three or a four. It's, it turns... The, it gets rid of the kill, right? Because we were looking for a kill before through the short bowls. Now, if Barry comes off that last bowl of Natasha's, which sits at one o'clock to the jack, you come in at a sharp angle to the jack. It's coming back in the six o'clock direction. I don't know, we'll see what yep. happens, but uh, I'll be surprised if he's not hitting this one, Dave. Not a good bowl from Tash, and she knew it. It threw her head in the air, and she needed to be past the jack, and she's really given Barry an opportunity now. Can use that bowl of Tash. Oh, is he on his forehand or his backhand? Hand. He's oh. playing it on the other hand. Why? Oh, I don't. <laughs> I can't work that out. That's okay. And you can see what happened. The wind just puffed it out and out and out, and it missed the head altogether. He need, I know it. Oh, <laughs> not an easy shot. Oh, on the I mean, to be either, fair, it's so much easier in the commentary box. To be fair to, to be fair to Barry and Tom, it's easy to see here. It's a backhand shot. It has oh, it to does be look a backhand like it. shot. And you're now five oh, down. She's just gone through, but five down. This is a big, big bowl in the uh, in the whole concept of this game. It's going to set the tone, isn't it? You know, if Barry can make Has magic he switched happen to here. The backhand, I think he might have switched to the backhand now. Yes. Or has he shuffled over to his mat and stayed on the forehand side? I don't know, Dave. 
Well, he's oh, close he's to something. He's close. Needs to get that ball square. Beautiful ball. And that's what we're talking about. Oh, and he's going to make him. He's going to score out of it. Beautiful what shot. What a great ball. The chance to make a number. He played the hand that we thought was not favourable. Absolutely nutted it. And because of that one loose ball of Natasha Van Eldick, a an end there which was looking like a five for Australia for the entire time, essentially. We've seen two go to Barry Andrews and Tom Tyrart. What a great ball that was. It was. And look. He had the confidence to play it again on the forehand, which yeah, surprised both you and I, Alex. And <laughs> and he did. And and yep, yeah, good good luck to him. Good, <laughs> I admire him for sticking to his convictions and doing that. And uh, yep, he got to, he got a, an outstanding result. Hit the target, and uh, yeah, smashed the jack back onto the onto the only bowl behind the head that belonged to the Australians, which rolled that out of the count. And uh, they picked up a two. So, yep, he hit it. Good good luck to him. Over. And uh, what we saw there while we were just having that chat, um, Dave, Tom overthrew the jack. And in this event, I think probably because of the, just the tighter time limit. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, what we saw uh, was... Um, if the jack is incorrectly delivered, the opposing skip can place the jack and determine the placement of the mat. So it's not thrown back, it's just placed wherever the opposition wants it. So even more important that you keep control of the jack, really, because uh, if you throw the, the jack away, your opposition has absolute control as to where everything goes. So, yeah, a bit of a blunder from Tom there, throwing the jack out. It meant that the Australians could straight away go back to that nice short length that they've been playing handy bowl from Tom Tyra there lovely correction and on the crossover after this bowl uh, Dave we're going to see that run shot of Barry Andrews and we'll just uh, keep your eye on the jack because you're right I think it actually removed the Australian yes. bowl far enough away <laughs> that it would then bounce back up the rink and hold it too. So let's just watch this very carefully. So he hits that bowl at 12, and the jack, look at that, actually moves the Australian bowl, bounces back up for two. That's an optimal result, isn't it? It was, it was. He, he got the target, he was in the target here, and he got the best bowl that he could have got, and that was the one that was going to plant straight through onto the jack. So in that regard... You got to give him credit. He was exactly in the area, exactly the bowl that he wanted to hit, and uh, fortunate with the result after that. But he he hit the best bowl that he could have out of the bunch. Yeah, at that point you just go, well, I was in the area and I've been rewarded. And the Australians team of Natasha and Alan will be absolutely kicking themselves because uh, uh, I don't think that would have happened if we hadn't seen that bowl widen the target a little bit. It seemed like uh, Barry and Tom were pretty committed to trying to draw themselves out of trouble near the end of that end uh, but a great shot now we see a 5-3 scoreline and it could be so different watch for when this bowl breaks look at that actually oh, picking up speed that. actually picking up speed <laughs> <Look at> that. <laughs> uh, Alan waved yeah, it goodbye <laughs> Tom having to hold on to his cap there look at Alan almost getting blow, blown over. That was a super gust, that one. Because these Australian girls, they've been here a lot and they've been to Burnside a lot. They've played a lot of bowls in New Zealand, so... They know what these conditions are like. They know that we uh, we can get these conditions in New Zealand and in Burnside especially, and well, just you know, anywhere in New Zealand. But um, so they'll be aware, and they would have played in it before. They'll know how to mentally handle the challenge of playing in the wind. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh, the attempt to not get frustrated. You're just going to accept that there'll be bowls that we'll get. You know, we saw the, the two most scattered bowls on this uh, head. You can see Tom's bowl and um, uh, Natasha's bowl. 
uh, you just write them off. You know, there's nothing. You didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> you've just no, had a gust of wind at the wrong time, so you can't get yep. frustrated because you've done nothing wrong. Yep. Watch this one. When's it gonna break? Oh, when might have got that one again? I think almost it was when it left his hand. It just tracked out further than what you would have expected. Beautiful weight there. Natasha on, uh, Ellen on the back end, sorry. Good to have an Australian presence at the Burnside Piers. There's been one on and off uh, since its inception, hasn't there, Dave? There's always been Australians sort of coming here and, and flying their trade. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure whether it, since the inception, but it, I, um, it definitely came in. I know Steve Glass and the coach of the Australian side, They, you know, when, when the World Championships were held in Christchurch at the Burnside Greens 2008 and then again in 2016, I know after the 2008 um, event, I'm pretty sure that's when the Australians started sending... And it might have been even prior to that in the build-up to the 2008 World Bowls. They they sent um, a couple of pairs, a couple of women's pairs and a couple of men's pairs over to these events, over to this event, um, realising that it was um, being played on the venue for the World Bowls Championships and also that the standard of competition was outstanding and, and that the, the Australian players were going to have a real good hit out in the conditions on the greens that were going to be used for World Bowls events. So Yeah, you may as well. Look at this. Been oh, since just then. through the gap. So he's a bowl from the rink next door. <laughs> The wind once again keeping that uh, keeping that out now. So the wind looks like it's really picked up even now. I mean, we saw Alan struggling to stand on her feet there a, a, a couple of bowls ago, and so then maybe now my theory starts to come into play about looking to play the hand that's going to bring the bowl back into the head. But yeah, it's not going to jump out end, randomly. This end, I think they're committed to sticking to the tight hand and hoping that the wind behaves itself for them. Barry here on his back end. Gets it out pretty good. Now let's see when this bowl turns. Is it going to turn? Just holding clean past. Slightly overplayed really based on that weight, but that green was lovely. It's finished right back on the centre line. Would have been happy to have got a touch on the jack there. But the Australians have got it surrounded, but I think they're only holding one, maybe two at the moment. So. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. It's gone. Yeah, that's gone as well. Yep. Well, and truly... See it just sort of making it so back in. So a bonus bowl here for chance. A, a very, very tiny chance because what she's trying to do is touch the jack here. If she trails the jack back to that bowl right in front of Velan's feet there now, she'll make a handful of it, but very, very difficult shot in these conditions. I mean it's a hard enough shot to trail a jack when it's dead calm. Uh, so trying to do it in these conditions is nigh on impossible. Yeah, really good is, luck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck to do, doing that. So. The um, Christchurch Air, Airport, the planes are going directly over Burnside today, uh, which I keep thinking is thunder or wind, but it's just a massive plane uh, going overhead, so it must be something to do with the, the weather conditions. Norwest. When it's a nor'west, that's when they come in over the top of Burnside, nor'west wind. It, they use the other runway at uh, Christchurch Airport, and yes, it's, um, yep, they come in pretty low over the top of you, and as you're playing there at Burnside, not far from the airport, so 
another distraction to add to the list on a Norwest day at the Burnside Bowling Club. <laughs> And uh, Tom Tyro leading off, so must have had a they bowl. I scored on that end, yeah. Coming in there, scored a 1, 6 3 on the fifth end. Just the camera angle was sort of uh, deceiving us a little there. They did. Be pleased with that. It was an end where there wasn't a huge amount of effective bowls, it was mainly spent fighting the win. We just saw the players just try and sort of get close ish. Allen here on the forehand. Planking into that now, bowl. Tom's, Tom's made the decision those bowls are in the way. I'm over onto this backhand. Let's see if he can trust his eyes and give it enough green and let the wind bring it back. Yeah. I'll watch this track. So that's he's gone slightly outside of his rink and this bowl coming back across. I think that's a uh, I mean, that's a lovely bowl, and I expect we'll see Tom maybe switch to that swing in hand, and Alan's going to follow him down. One point to note here is that um, Tom threw a short jack. Yes. Uh, and the Australians were definitely favouring the shorter length, as we see this one now. This has got the wind up its behind, and back it comes. And so there's Beautiful. my theory yeah. coming into play there. Throw it out into the wind and let the wind bring it back. So two good... Second bowls from each of the leads there. Both of them have and, switched uh, to that back end. This is a, yep. The first two bowls were on the forehand and they got sort of pushed out by the wind and fell short. Barry. Hard to tell who's got the shot there at the moment. A lot of bowls to come, so it doesn't really matter at this stage, but... So Barry Andrews punching it out into the wind and wanting it back in. Yeah, we'll see it see it come swooping back home. Here it comes. Yeah, that's nice stuff. This is um more settled bowls. And Natasha now on the back end. Remember the Australian bowls have the little uh, the Aussie stickers on them. This could get a good result or a bad result. Bad result is the answer to that question. It's folded them both <laughs> slightly further away. I'm sure Barry, um, do you know Dave, he was a very good cricketer, wasn't he? He's got a good... Oh, as he gets blown a bit by Oopsie. the wind there. <laughs> yep, I'm sure he, he was. holds some records in cricket. Look at Colin in the background. That's making sure that the... Uh, the tripods aren't going to get blown away. Oh, and there's Barry getting blown. And look at the scoreboard numbers getting. It, it is really quite horrendous. Played 15 ends according to the scoreboard and 16-3. I don't think I don't <laughs> think that's quite the score. Yeah. Right. Fourth time lucky, Barry. Here we go. on the back end I've seen videos Dave in Wellington uh, of of jacks being blown off the the centre line uh, without them being touched uh, we're not quite at that stage yet but that must be stag a staggering experience well I can relate a story of, about playing at the Nationals in Wellington on a really really windy day and uh, the in the end it was agreed that the marker would we were playing singles the marker would take the jack down with him yes and place it where we wanted it whoever had won the last end and then put a couple of pins down uh, with big head you know the pins that have got the heads on them to yeah. stop the jack from blowing away <clears throat> uh, and it got to the stage where the manager of our centre can't remember what green we were playing at, rang headquarters and said, look, this is ridiculous. We'd finish, it. we'd complete an end, eight bowls played, and there might be three bowls on the rink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so he, he rang headquarters and said, look, this is ridiculous. So the guys can't even, no, they've got to keep playing, they've got to keep playing. And in the end, the players, we all took a vote and we walked off. Fair enough. And we just refused to play. The, the mats were 
we, you were having to chase the mat across the green. They were getting, and as I said, the you had to put pins around the jack to stop it being blown away. <laughs> So uh, we went into the clubhouse for an hour and a half or so, and things did calm down. Still blue, but they were manageable. We were able to get back out and complete the day. But um, yes, horrendous. In comparison, this is a, a nice uh, summer's day. <laughs> so I'm on the back end. Oh. Alan Ryan holding on to a cap. We're going to see caps go flying. And this bowl's not going to hold up long enough, I, I, I suspect. Disappearing across there. So at the moment, two, it looks like, to the uh, South Canterbury pair. So Alan's just got to really trust her eyes and throw this right out into the neighbouring rink and let the wind bring it home. You can see, I oh, will switch to this camera, you can see there how much the camera is moving. Look at that, just as a player. You can sort of feel it, and you're watching your bowl, and you go, oh, I know I haven't taken enough green, and then it starts to break, and you think, well, it's just turning across. And goodness, it's just deflating, isn't it? It is, it is. Um, it's giving me um, what PTSD. I'm getting flashbacks to <laughs> the days <laughs> where I've tried to play in the wind. So we think uh, the South Canterbury combination holding a couple, so... Barry will be looking to add to that. So it's Tom's bowl at 12 o'clock. Will be the shot. We've got He's two. given us plenty of green here. And he just had a bit too much speed on it, but he had the weight right. Uh, had the line right. Oh, he's going the bowl. This is an interesting call, so they must have second shot here. And Natasha wind up. She will be right at this. The quicker you go in the wind, the better. Great call and a great shot. Beautiful. That's class. Very well played, yep. Must have only been the one, as you said, and it must be the Australian girls' light blue bowls, the right-hand side of our screen there, that must be one of them that's holding at least one, possibly two. I think it's only one. Yeah. But Barry Andrews has now got the... Oh, no, he hasn't really. He hasn't got enough bowls on the head. He has to draw this. He has to draw this. Is he? Is he? Li oh, he's lining up with some speed here himself. Maybe they have got two or three seconds as he's on the drive. He's going to get all three. They're all gone. That He's found the gap. How did he find oh. the gap? <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious me. Looked like it was going to miss oh. narrow to start with, <laughs> and then the wind said, uh-uh. But that's, oh. that's, the, that, that's the advantage of, you made a good comment earlier on, that Barry doesn't go flat out with these drives, mm. whereas Tasha's drive, when she got rid of that shot bowl, was full-blooded drive. Yeah. Less likelihood that the wind's going to have an effect on a, on a bowl of that speed versus Barry's bowl, where he, he drives with uh, as more of a run shot type. Yeah, and the bowls uh, just drift a little, don't they? I think we might see a three yeah. here. See what one. they put on the scoreboard. One. One, one it was. One. Three's not quite as exciting as one. What a great shot that was from Natasha to just chip that bowl off. Exciting game, really. Yeah, considering the conditions, 6 4 it is to Tom and Barry over the Australian girls, Ellen and Natasha. And I noticed the scoreboard next door and the other the other game that's on in this particular section of four, uh, the other scoreboard locked up at four all after six in. So that's a, another tight one as well. Remembering that that we're in sections of four. This is the la they they play the other three game three teams in their section. This is the last of those section play games, and all four teams in this section have all won one game. So. Mm. It's going to come down to the winners of these respective games, this one here and the one on the rink next door between uh, Bronwyn Stevens and Mike Galloway. And then the winner, then it's after we find the winners, then it's going to be who's got the best margin, the best differential between shots scored and shots conceded over the four, over their three games to decide who goes through to the semi-final of the Stew Butter Pears for 2024. 
exciting good times. Opening. Get your abacus, abacuses out and working for this section. Alan stalking after this bowl. 6 4 the score to the South Canterbury pair. It's a good start. Been a couple of chances. Interesting, I'd say um, it feels like Barry and Tom have played some, have had some very good shot play. You know, we've seen a couple of ends where Natasha and Alan out of their eight bowls have had maybe six effective bowls and looked like they were going to score numbers, but Barry and Tom have their timing working pretty well. Good shot. Just looking at the the other sections as well, we've got um, Carl Healy playing with Aaron Tees, another mm. two Australian World Bowls champions. Uh, look like they're, they're in control of their division, although they're playing Craig Tinker in this last round. So actually, basically the winner of that game, Carl Healy against Craig Tinker, will decide the winner of that section. Uh, and then... Rodney Graney, uh, whoops, no, Division 1 over here. Nathan Black looks like he's in control of his section. I think I have a recollection. And Nathan Black won last last year. Yes. I think the Burnside Piers, I have a... Yes. And Paddy Stewart playing mm. Mike Kernahan in this... Uh, round, but he he looks like he's in control of of his section as well. So we've got this section that we're st we're we're following here at the moment, uh, which is going to be anyone's really. We'll have to wait until the result of both games to find out who's going to progress. But it looks like Carl Healy, Nathan Black, and Paddy Stewart are the other three that you would say are at this stage in control of their sections. Yeah, certainly the um, that's what the money would be on. And look at this shot here. That's a beautiful, beautiful bowl. Beautiful bowl. What a toucher in the wind. Not a not an easy target. Barry Andrews. Looks like he's lining up again. Yep, he's lining up to fire at this. On the back end. And there the we other, go again because he uh, does need to be quicker, eh? I think that would be the he, solution he here. He needs to be quicker, yep. And that's where Tash was with her drive. A lot, lot less effect from the wind and she, uh, with the speed that she drives at. Whereas Parry, you can see that one was pretty much online, but then just a puff of wind blew it, strained it up, and it missed the target. It's not massive margins of difference as we see Alan on the back end. Holding three at the moment. The wind, remember, doesn't blows from the left to the right. Doesn't want to fatten things up. And, uh, just if that runs past the jack, it'll be, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I think it's still attack time from Tom Tyrone. Yeah. I, I would be actually aiming for the for the three lighter blue coloured balls say that. out on the on the forehand. Yeah, but best it looks ball. Looks like he's playing the backhand. It's the best ball he could hit. The shortest ball on the forehand side. He's playing it on. Going the for that bowl clean. He's got it. It should be a kill, and we'll see the end replayed. It felt like there were more chances on the blue balls to the left of the screens. We see it, but I mean a good shot. We've seen a couple of really good balls from Barry and Tom. When they've been in dire situations, they've managed to get themselves out of it very, very well. That was a very good shot. Yeah, and as I look, he was happy to play it on the backhand, but both you and I thought it might have been a better option to play it on the forehand. But who are we to argue when he when he gets it? Yeah, it's happened twice. It's happened twi twice now. We've seen them just sort of play shots that look a bit unusual from the commentary booth, but they've absolutely executed them to perfection. And uh, that end of another one building up horrendously for the uh, South Canterbury team. They were four down and already had one swing and a miss with Barry's bowl, but Tom able to kill it, so you get this chance to, to start again. That's good. I mean, it's brilliant too that they, they go with their gut, they go with the shot that looks the best, the hand that looks the best to them and feels the most comfortable to them. So be it. Good on them. Brilliant. the 
back end. Very, very good opening bowl here from Ellen Ryan. Very good. Lovely shot. You can hear the wind in the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. It's just horrendous. And yet we are able to see poles like this. It was a great effort there from Tom Tyro. I didn't miss it by much. And the players dealing with it well. Ellen Ryan would back herself to put another bowl within a few feet of the jack here. Need some wind assistance just to hold it yeah. up a little bit. Uh, not too bad. That's very acceptable in these conditions. This is close. Yeah, good stuff. Four good bowls to start off with. Both teams will be happy with that. Another head building nicely. That's a good first bowl. Oh, <laughs> the bowl fell over just before she got to it. If it had stayed up, she'd have probably sat on it and fallen back in. But still nice, handy home and good position bowl from Natasha Van Eldick there. Overcooked it a little bit with speed. You yeah, just look to correct it back in. Four very, very good deliveries we've got on the rink here. The one thing that you'll notice about all four players, and it's something that we all should be, is, is keeping the head level and and also as still as you possibly can during the, the delivery process and you'll see Barry look how still he keeps his head his eyes focused and his head up and but uh, he's underplayed this one as far as line is concerned unless he gets a heap of wind heap of help from the wind it's, he's got a bit of help from the wind goodness gracious <laughs> oh, it continued to hold so two, possibly three shots to the Australian girls here as Alan and Tom go back to play their second set of two bowls. So playing the third position in a game of fours. Make their way down. It's interesting the yeah the strategy behind this walking pairs because two for two, which has become more popular in New Zealand. Uh, you can tutu a bit with with your positional play because often you get um, uh, you have your middle four bowls and then your first two bowls and you get players you can get some really aggressive leads or you can be really aggressive in the middle four etc. There's lots of different theories with the two four two as it becomes more popular in New Zealand. The walking pairs, you're right, Dave, is a lot more. It feels like you're playing a game of fours, doesn't it? So we already understand we understand the logic for a game of fours. Um, it's it's how we've been playing the game for a hundred years. So you have your lead two, three, and skip positions, and essentially you just have players who, in theory, should be slightly more effective in those places because instead of playing uh, two bowls uh, per end, they're playing four. Absolutely. I mean, look, that's the beauty of the pairs. There, there are those three formats of the game. Uh, the three lead plays the 3-3 three, three, which is the most common format for us here in New Zealand which that you get specialists you get a specialist lead and specialist skips plying their trade in those roles and then yeah very very popular and a very very good game uh, the 2-4-2 two, two format 
Uh, I, I like that for players to help develop their game, the up and coming. You know, it's definitely a good event that we recommend to you know our junior and development type players play because you get to experience all the positions and then that, what you get uh, similar to to this format as we see it oh he gets a very good result there very very good result trails the jack back to his partner's bowl to tom tyra's bowl Here's a question, Dave. Have you ever seen AJ not an orange? Does he have Never. anything that that isn't orange? Of course, um, that's a, a hint to his Dutch heritage. Always in the orange. Let's make it it's simple. It's good because if you, if you ever need him, he's easy to find. Yeah, <laughs> easy, to sp- <laughs> easy to spot. And Wendy Sutty there, who was the chief technical official for the recently completed Somerset Nationals. Interesting thing about, um, I'll just go on a slightly uh, inane uh, side note to do with orange and Dutch people. Uh, that's why carrots are orange, Dave. Did you know that? No. So carrots are orange. Please elaborate. Well, the, 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 the Dutch wear orange because of the House of Orange, which is the royal house colours. And um, carrots were originally, I don't know what you call it, farmed or put together or created uh, in their colour that they are in the Netherlands and and a Dutch. So wild carrots are all different colours, like purples and oranges and greens or whatever. But the Dutch uh, sort of created this orange carrot, and carrots are orange because of the Dutch. So I wonder if that's his favourite. I'd hope it's AJ's favourite vegetable. <laughs> to just sort of really sort of sell it. Random bit of information for a bowls commentary is... Uh, we stand well, stands directly in front. Apart from seeing some magnificent bowls, I'll be able to finish the day enlightened on the life of the carrot too <laughs> now. So that's good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you're more than welcome. Happy to help. So now, Barry will be looking just to arrive to this, looking to sit that blue bowl to the right of it. Close. Our, close. Oh, oh, he just missed it. You can see, so Tom's bowls, the shot, it's that split bowl. Australia have second and third. You can see Ellen just put her foot in front of those two bowls. Yeah, whether she's looking at that plant. It'd bounce the jack back uh, up the rink, wouldn't it? Well, uh, yeah, that's a danger. That's a possible danger. So you can't see the plant wouldn't get Tom's bowl out without removing the Australian bowl to the right. I don't in which know. In case that'd still be, yes. that'd still be a few down because you can see to the left of the screen there we've got three more Tom Ty Rye bowls sitting for pretty handy. So uh, I don't know. I'm not sold on the plant, but um, I'm also not a national representative. So let's just wait and see what happens here. Well, she's definitely driving. We've Could established a, that fact. A very intriguing result. Oh. She got a little bit of luck because she got a wee slither off of those short bowls. I don't think there's any change unless we've... Oh, we've got some bowls at the back. <laughs> so it could be two down now. Just in time. Just sort of crunched it back. I think that was a poor shot from the Australian uh, pair. Unless they were going for something else, but I don't think that plant was ever going to be favourable. Tom just saying, draw a toucher on the forehand. Which, um, he's making it sound easier than it is. That shouldn't be wide enough. That'll run into the bunch. Or underneath the bunch. And Actually, had lovely weight. Two. Two. A good end. So an unlucky result there. For Alan Ryan and Natasha with her drive, so uh, they've opened up a little four-point gap here now. Eight shots. Look at this. Look at four. this. Oh, sort of got the half the plant. I don't know. Maybe they were going for a kill, Dave. I think a kill was a fair result from that because she was half I a ball so. away from perfect. Yeah, I think the kill was what they were after, definitely. Yeah. Three, a three-point gap opening up now. And uh, in these conditions, 
And in this game, you've had, what, uh, 13 points and eight ends. Wouldn't expect to see more than maybe a three scored on one end, so it'll be in the back of the mind of Natasha Nolan that they want us to stay within Kui, stay within five. Interesting that uh, Tom has played the backhand, the swinging hand, and we see Alan persisting with the straight hand on this occasion. So Tom lead off his bowl there, finish at 12 o'clock on the backhand side, which is to the right of your screen, and Alan's lead off on the forehand side, which is to the left. And you'd think Tom will still be able to get around that bowl. wonder if we've had a slight, ever so slight easing in the wind over this mm. last couple of ends. I hope for the players' sake that's true and that it is perhaps going to drop a little bit. Would be ideal. You can see there the... Um, oh. No, the, maybe the wind <laughs> has actually wrapped one of the flags around the flagpole. Uh, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Might still be a little bit windy out there, Dave. Yeah, indeed. Players cross over. Tom put two good bowls in. A long end here too. Essentially two meter to two meter situation. Longest we've seen in some time. And Barry on the forehand, left of our screen, just a holding hand. It's on its way. It's got 35 metres to get affected by the wind here. Oh, that was a reasonable track, to be fair. just seems like this end the bowls aren't being knocked around by the mm. wind as much so they might be in a little bit of luck a little bit of a respite from the wind a good bowl there yeah, a little bit unlucky still one down Natasha after touching the jack Barry on the forehand side it's just looked to the side. I think uh, it didn't come out as smoothly as it could have. So I'm not sure no. if that's. Uh, I don't think that was. No, that's related. not wind related. That was that, just. That's uh, not. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a push sometimes. Tasha has a, a very aggressive um, stance. Like it always looks like. You know, you have those players where they sort of, it always looks like they're sort of half winding up, so she's just playing a reaching bowl here. Which I suppose she was winding up. What was she going for there, Dave? Yeah, I guess trying to sit the shot bowl back. Um, but yeah, not, yeah. I think, wrong option, really. You needed just another bowl handy and perhaps look to um, play a bit more aggressively later on in the in the end. But, probably, uh, probably slipped into the mindset of being on a slower green there, where your bowl would have stayed up if she had missed, and you would have just shunted some things, whereas on this occasion you're in the wind on a 17 second green, so you've not only lost your collision bowl, but you've achieved nothing. Pretty good line here from Tom Tyra as he breaks towards the head, gets around that short bowl of his Oh, look at this. Very close. What a great bowl. That is absolutely exceptional there. So Tom Tyra holding two. One Australian bowl past the head at 6 o'clock. Just see the green Australian stickers. Alan Ryan following Tom down. She may have over to be quick. overplayed this bowl. Is it going to stay up? It has. That's a good shot.
So hugely busy time for the Burnside Bowling Club, of course, just having completed the Bowls New Zealand Nationals, where Burnside Club were the headquarters, and we uh, obviously saw lots and lots of um, bowls from Burnside over those couple of weeks of the Nationals, as we see Natasha calling for a bit of an attacking shot from mm. Alan here, looking down through the head, trying to clear some front stuff at the front and maybe even get through, get to the jack. Just Gotta get... um, open things up at least at the front. The split absolutely perfect here. Goodness. Oh, she's chipped out one of Tom's bowls. Got it square, removed it. That's what it looks like from the player's end. Not a big target, is it? No, it's not. I'm just... But she has removed one of the shots, so just the one down now. So, yeah, so Burnside Club, they, you know, this, this event's been going for, I'm not sure how many years now, but a very, very long time. And uh, regularly at this time of the year. And so having the Nationals in Christchurch with Burnside as the headquarters, followed immediately by this tournament of huge two or three weeks for all the people at the Burnside Club. And yeah, incredible Jamie job Ferris, they've done. The, the, uh, the green keeper as well, exceptional job. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, running on, <laughs> he's running on fumes. He's playing at this event too. So I think uh, Jamie will have about a 50-hour sleep upon the conclusion uh, of the Burnside Pears, done a fantastic job and has been working and working and working and working. So much better line here from Barry, although it's uh, just holding out a little bit there. He's got pretty good speed. If it comes all the way back, no, not quite going to, no, it's not going to count. Definitely not. Beautiful speed. Just heard Alan say, go the bowl. So it'll be on the backhand. You'd have to go the bowl on the backhand. Your bowl swings away, you could potentially chip it off clean. Very aggressive game plan here from the Australians. She's not far away. Not far away. That one square could work. Oh, great effort. Oh. I think the, the theory behind it, excellent call from from Alan because um, uh, under these conditions very very difficult to draw yeah uh, within a couple of inches you know, even though Tom had done it earlier on in the head of course but very very and so good shot option I like it you and you're backing your your drive and we've seen um, Natasha's played maybe five drive shots in this game and she's not been more than a, a bowls width away I mean she's had some results that haven't been ideal but she's always been there with thereabouts and Alan's going to have a good look at this one. Yeah, the percentages aren't quite there for an attacking shot now, so she's just asking for a draw on the forehand. Yeah, they've only got the one second, so you wouldn't want to drive now. Draw over the trail. If she gets around that short front bowl uh, with good speed and trails the jack, it's... Um, it's a it's a great result for the Australian girls. Is she going to get down? Look at this! Is she... Look at this! Yes! What, what a, a shot. bowl! What a shot! That is staggeringly good. Wow! Outstanding bowling! It was a great shot option. Just clearing the short front bowls onto the jack, trailing it. Three shots, the result, wow. and we're all tied up at eight shots apiece. That's fantastic, isn't it? And see, look, Alan's pulled the mat right up here. So if she successfully throws this jack, the Australians are indicating a change of of tack. Otherwise, uh, Barry and Tom can place the jack wherever they would like to place it. And we've spoken... That was a massive oh, conversion it... bowl, that one from Natasha. Shows her international experience. That's the bowl of the game, really. It's just unbelievably good stuff. So eight apiece we are. On the ninth we'll end see. of 15. I am going to put my head on the chopping block here and say that the wind has definitely dropped away. It's not affecting the game as much as it was earlier on. Well, I'll agree with you, and then we're both we're both either right or both wrong because it, uh, we have it's seen still there. Obviously, it's still there, but nowhere near with uh, the vigour 
<laughs> that yeah. it had earlier on in the game. More we effective seen balls. Ellen, yeah. We haven't seen Ellen get blown away for a while, so... On the back end. I think that's what I'm here again. Oh, she'll be frustrated because they've made a change. And there we can see the um, the wind. I mean, it looks like it's died down a bit, although it's absolutely destroyed that. That flag has had better <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's played this one well again. Just going a little bit. Handy home, though, at the back. Nothing wrong with bowls behind the head, as we know. Still in play, whereas those two bowls of Allen's are out of the game, pretty much. Very, very rarely do we see this, the jack go back up the green. It does happen, but probably only about 0.001% oh. of the time. Yeah, not not very often. <laughs> I can remember one time um, I was playing an event and there'd been a skip who had been, shall we say, um, expressing their frustrations at uh, their team's seeming lack of ability to get past the head for the entire day. Uh, and he let the entire green know. So we all knew that the team had been <laughs> short the entire day. And I happened to look over and the team had, um, it was triples, the team had four bowls past the head and the skip had two bowls sort of past the headish, and they were holding one. And the opposition drove, and the jack bounced back up the rank, and he dropped a five. <laughs> and, and what he would have done for a short bowl. Uh, oh, it's yeah. a fond memory. I found it quite amusing, Dave. Not as, uh, I mean, the, the skip didn't find it funny, but the rest of the green was, uh, uh, yeah, we were pleased. So excellent bowl from Tash again there, drawing the shot. She's... Uh, Played a couple of very, very good ends in a row here, trailing the jack that last bowl of the previous end to give themselves a three and draw the shot with her first bowl on this end. And this one here has ended up pretty handy as well. Could be holding two, so Natasha on form at the moment. Remember the Australian bowls of the green stickers on them. And a head building here, okay, for the Australian team. Barry Andrew just uh, throwing that ball into the ditch. So Tom, he'll have to, I would imagine, change his hand and play the forehand as well here. As we see, it's Alan's bowl first, of course, and she's having to do that as well, switching to the forehand. After dropping two very, very short bowls. Yeah, she'll was be her a... first set of two bowls, but this one's going to arrive. Oh, this is a Probably classic overcorrection. Look at that. Now we see on the scoreboard on the rink next door the score eleven to four. Someone's we can probably if we could find out who it is that's in front on that game, that's quite significant because that's a decent margin that they're getting there the as we see a here. very, very good bowl here from Tom Tyra. Beautiful what a shot. River that was. So remember that the rink next door, Bronwyn Stevens against Mike Galloway. and So Bronwyn's, it, Bronwyn's the 11, Mike is the 4, Bronwyn's so that's in front. good news for Team Stevens, who are leading the section, or equal leaders, aren't they? Because it was the, um, I think the, the diff was very similar. Look at that, up and over just the once. But stiff. Very good effort. Very good effort there from Ellen Ryan. She's a bit unlucky because she's made it. A little bit more difficult to get at the shot bowl now. I've got two good seconds, but rolling that shot bowl over once has hidden it in behind the jack and the other bowls that were short. Probably made it a little bit more difficult. Thanks, Barry. 
So we'll just start. Yeah, you'd think Barry would have <laughs> Barry would have a little bit more nous than that, having okay. uh, been around as long as he has. He's very focused on the bowl, and we see the. I mean, it's um, we didn't miss much. <laughs> it's, it's just underneath the head and a bit short. So the South Canterbury team holding a, a well protected one, really. They got two seconds, and there's technically a, a enough room on the back end to chip out Tom's bowl. And if you're narrow by a quarter of a bowl and chip your own bowl out, you'd still have second shot. So I think I saw some gesticulating on the back end, and maybe that's what uh, Natasha will be looking to play. Yes, it's a possibility. It's a it's a challenging shot to play to get the edge of the shot bowl. Yeah, what she's looking for. And she's having well, a and off the out. outside yeah. one. I suppose, you know, your worst case scenario is still one down, isn't it? Like you'd have to get a pretty ridiculous result to to end up worse than one down. And if you feel like the conditions are hard, you may as well just have a nibble. And she obviously backs her. Um, Back to her drive, but yeah, you say you can you can literally see maybe a quarter or an eighth of that bowl. So Barry Andrew now, Andrew, sorry. Interesting. What, excuse me, not wide enough there by any stretch of the imagination. It really hoops across the head. Pretty good speed, but he was never wide enough. This could be an amazing bowl if it is well executed. Challenging shot, this one. And one, two, three. Oh, oh, my word. What has well, just happened? Look, You'd say sorry for that. You would say sure, sorry for that. That was a miles off target. Tom's not sure he's pointing one down. It's very, very close for shot now. Yeah, this is a very good call there from Tom. He just needs to roll his own bowl on the draw, turn that, or land the second, or land the the opposition yeah. bowl that's in the measure for the shot. And you could make two of it if he if he landed that bowl and rolled it out once and stayed there. It's a measure for shot, obviously. So good call from Tom Tyra and a good shot option for Barry Andrews here. So he's on the back end, needs his bowl to break back in. Just not going to turn for him. He had pretty good speed for it, just not going to turn for him. Well, this is a potentially uh, gutting way to drop a point if you're the South Canterbury team. Well, um... Watch a replay when we can of that shot, but it was like a pinball situation. One to and Australia. Shot out of it. Yeah, that was very, very lucky. She was way off target. Look at this. One, here. two, three. So, yeah, I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing. <laughs> Just happens all, all in bowls I, sometimes. All I say to myself in those situations, if I'm on the receiving end, is that Unfortunately, the laws of the sport say we have to take it. There ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Move on to the next end. I've been known to um, suggest to people that they should not buy a lotto ticket, <laughs> given that all their luck may or may not have been used up uh, on the um, on their bowls. That's when I'm in, having a bad day, a bad day, Dave. But you know, such is life. It is what it is. Uh, you'll get a good result sometimes, and you, know, you say sorry, but you're going to take your point. And that's a good first bowl there from Alan Ryan. A great first bowl. Excellent first bowl. And the wind definitely has died down. It's still there, but it's definitely not the real, real blustery, almost uh, bordering on gale that winds that we had earlier on. So therefore, we should start to see the players honing in on the jam. We have seen that over the last two or three years. They've just really started to hone in on the jack. Alan Ryan looking to make it two right on top. Leading 9-8. And we know Bromwyn Stevens is up 
uh, by a few against Mike Galloway. Now, if we think back to what we said at the beginning, this section, Bromman Stevens and Natasha and Allen were on the same points diff, which means that if Bromman's winning by six points and Natasha and Allen are winning by one, Bromman is set to go through uh, to the final or the semi-final. And I would imagine that all the teams understand who's doing what and as we near the end of this game, even if the Australians are up, or even if Barry and Tom are up, because they're in the same boat, we may see uh, more opportunities look to be taken, Dave, if the Stevens uh, continue to increase their lead on that other rink, because there's no point in winning by one or two. You're right. They, they have to start getting the, the calculators out and working out, and they have to take risks. There might be the opportunity to take a bit of a risk to try and get a number, so that's the sort of thing that they'll be keeping an eye on as we tick through the ends, as we get closer to the end of this match and the one next door. Just keep an eye, and, and if we get a chance to get a big number, it's a bit might be a bit risky, but we're going to take it. And yeah, absolutely. Tash didn't like that ball from the minute it left her hand. She slapped, slapped her uh, thigh in disgust and... Barry's decided to follow her. He's gone out in sympathy. From a coaching point of view, we often talk about that as being a good thing, don't we, Dave? Like, if you know, the moment it leaves your hand, if you know you've missed, that's actually a better space to be in than leaving your hand and you're thinking you've, you know, oh, it's come out beautiful and I've nailed my line and I missed by a metre. How am I, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> it's, it's a much easier correction just to get it out of the hand good and know that that's what you need to be doing to, to improve. Absolutely. It's um, something that we used to work on a lot with the New Zealand team and, and even now some of the players that I've still coached, we do a little drill every now and then of asking the players the minute it leaves, like we, you're just going to draw to the jack as we see Barry Andrews on the drive here, on the four. If he gets it square, it's close. amazing. Look at that. What a shot. Split and follow through. Great result. Great shot. The option was there to play to get that perfect result. If he got it right, and he did, he got it absolutely perfectly. Now we're back to the draw again, the battle of the draw to see who yeah. can uh, who can nail the jack. But yeah, getting back to the com we, we, little drill we do on a scale of 1 to 10, we'll get the player to say as soon as it's left their hand, 1 being awful, 10 being f that felt fantastic, and it's going to be very, very close to the jack. We get them to, uh, to rate how it felt as it come out of the hand and and uh, the object of the exercise is to get the players saying, oh, that was an eight and that was a nine. And then we see at the other end that, yes, it was an eight or a nine. It finished right on top of the jack or it finished really, really close. Or Yeah, I like that. And, and, and what we don't want is someone saying, oh, that's a nine, that's beautiful, and they finish seven or eight feet away, mm. wide or something like that. Then that means we might have some problems, but... And it's about replicating the f that feel of the good bowl, remembering what that felt like as we see Tom Tyra draw the shot a little bit narrow, but Jack level, that'll be the shot. Alan, on the forehand side. And going back to the um, suggestion that the wind might have died down, Barry's bowl, which we saw earlier, that's a lovely shot from Allen. Probably indicates that it has died down because he just, he's continued to play that that reaching weight, but his bowl didn't really deviate, and he was able to get through the, the target pole nice and square. I think if he had tried to play that uh, five ends ago, we may have seen it drift. Needs it to hold. So... Excellent bowl from Alan Ryan there. And it definitely is um, quite calm, a lot calmer now wind-wise. But if, unfortunately, I've heard from a very good friend of mine in Christchurch, Raylene Peters, I've heard that uh, the forecast is not flash for wind this afternoon. It's meant to get worse again. <laughs> so hopefully that's not correct. Oh, good luck to them.
Raylene, of course, um, worked with myself at the, as an assistant coach with the New Zealand team. Fantastic coach she was too. You can see the jack is essentially touching that bowl, the Australian bowl, the stickered bowl, and set to go in the essentially to where um, Tom's standing actually in the four or five o'clock direction. If the shot he's on the run here, I think he's looking for the shot bowl here, and he's tight. Intriguing that that was interesting. Wasn't a very so, convincing shot. Tash needs to draw another one here, but not fatten the target. And she's not going to do that. Well, the target's not As bigger. So this is a huge bowl for Barry. A couple of good second shots he's got. Plucks this out and they'll get a two. As long as he gets the edge of the bowl, he could kill it if he gets the Much back better of the effort bowl. here. Oh, it's gone wide. He's going to take his second shots out. Oh, dear. He's removed his second shot. Second and third shot. Is it just two now? Two there. Two oh, it is. Oh, dear. It feels like uh, a couple of really important ends for the Australians. Remember, they got a very a fortuitous result on the previous end, and have, but have backed it up with a, a good end here to score a two. So they now lead 11-8. And the mat's going to be pulled up a little bit again. They're repeating the dose there. Interesting. Tried this tactic earlier on, playing the shorter length in, but making it shorter by bringing the mat up. And then Alan dropped two horrendously short bowls with her first two bowls. Let's mm. see if she can make the adjustment this time. Very, very good opening bowl, that one. That one ain't short. Tom on the back end. Pulling this ball on. That's a good uh, good ball. This is an end which the um, South Canterbury team realistically need to win this end and kick on if they're going to qualify because whichever team wins this game needs to win it by a little bit to, to be a chance of going through. So if you're a South Canterbury supporter, you want to see Barry and Tom score on this end. Close bowl here from Ellen Ryan. This is close. What a great shot this is. Classy. Classy stuff. Tom Tyra's on a very, very good track again here too. And the temptation may have been for him to switch his hand there because... He he obviously would struggle to get the shot on the backhand, and this is another another failing of a lot of people. A lot of inexperienced bowlers they get on the mat and they've played it because he's played it. He played an excellent bowl with his first bowl. We can see it there, just behind the head, nice and handy. And uh, then Alan drew the shot like she did, and the temptation is, well, I can't get the shot on the backhand, so I'm going to switch to the forehand. But He's just played a bomb on the backhand, so stick to the backhand and get another handy one. It's not the role of the lead to get the shot. Yeah, and you've just and reminded that... me, Dave, what I'd forgotten I was talking about seven ends ago. <laughs> oh, good. So thank you for that. It's about <laughs> patience, isn't it? A lot of bowls, particularly your six-bowl pairs or your where you play at bowls in a game of fours, it's about patience because although it's tempting to play shots early, if you play the shot early, as we see, a great effort there, um, you're giving your opposition four or five more goes at getting the shot back off you. So why would you not just leave your opposition, is it not better to leave your opposition holding a one or a two and your skip plays a first or second bowl for a bundle, then there's one chance to get it back. 
than getting your two or three to play a shot early. So it's often about patience. Like you say, it's a game of chess. You build your head up and then you execute a little bit later on in the game, even though it's tempting to play those shots earlier sometimes. Quite right, quite right. You see an end of changing fortunes here. That <laughs> Tash actually, it was a very, very good shot from Alan and Tash changed things up a little bit and um, was possibly one down, but that's okay because it she still had another bowl on the head and had options, and now you can see she's got a great shot option here. Look at this. To sit that bowl oh, of Tom Tyros out. Little touch on the jack. Made a two or three of it. few bowls to come in the end, but still uh, a very, very good bowl there from Natasha Van Eldick. Been a very exciting end, actually. Lots of stuff's happened. Seen lots of effective bowls. And the two green stickered bowls of Australia, the two closest ones, and Barry here on the back end. He's getting down Needs to the jack. the jack. Needs the jack. He oh, just great like effort. passed it. Another very good hit, as you see. it. There's been some bombs of bowls played on this end, and obviously the dying down of the wind has enabled them to do that. This is the sort of stuff we, we love to see when there is no wind around these exactly. sorts of ends. Yeah. It's great stuff. You'd think Alan will be probably on the forehand side, but just to the left as we see it. I think that's the way she's lined up. They've got the two bowls there already, so you just draw over the two metre mark, and then wherever you finish, you're going to be a nice third without making the target any bigger. She's something like area something too. like this. Absolutely. Classy. Yeah, that's a really classy Very good. bowl. Made three of it now. Sitting with a comfortable 3 2. Tom Barry just said, saying, oh. <laughs> oh, you go. Yeah, Barry saying, look, yeah, just draw it there on the back end, and then Tom standing on the mat a little bit uncertain, and and then Barry, well, look, you can, you can have a go at it if you want. So Tom's won the battle of the conversation, the conversation. by the looks of things, and he's going to be attacking on the forehand. Here we go. Playing with weight, just controlled weight on the forehand, looking to make something contact square. With something on the head. That's a beautiful bowl. But unlucky, actually, he's still set. I think he's going to be two and a half down, but he hit that bowl lovely and square. Well, he, it, it was a. Excellent result. I mean, excellent. He hasn't got the result, desired result because he's still a couple there, but he's opened the head up. He's given Barry Andrews a look at the jack and a lot more room to at least get second shot. So very, very good bowl from Tom Tyra. And Ryan looking to finish right on top of it. That's it's pretty good. That's from pretty Ellen good, isn't it? We've, we've had some bowls in this end, haven't we? We've had some real classy stuff. Jack in the ditch says Barry. We've got three Jack back in the here. Ditch on the back end. Look at all those bowls. They're all all in play. They've been fantastic head. So you'll see this come onto your screen shortly. Barry's kindly obscuring the view, so we'll get this one. Watch this. Just a bit wide. The shot's still there. So this is an important end here. If Tash and Tash and Natasha and Alan leading by three at the moment, and if they can get another two or three here, then they start to uh, starting to hunt down Bronwyn Stevens' lead in the game over the other side. So very very important end. Yeah, the complexion changes, doesn't it? For what what's trying to be achieved here? You sort of. Uh... You're not no longer fighting for the win in the game. You're trying to catch up to someone on the next rank. And look at this. Stacking the head. Just needs to land that bowl there. Oh, just ran through a little bit. She's unlucky. But unlucky, really. Mind you, she's tipped that bowl and she ran around behind that. 
Is that another counter now? Be close to it. There's at least three. At least three to Australia. Three or four there at the moment, yeah. We know Barry's intention. You see, we've got three bowls at the back, so in or out here. On the back end. Got that one out as smooth as silk. And steering it down. He's very close here. Look at this. Close. Oh, he's got the bowl only. That's unlucky. What a great shot, though. Great bowl. It's a great shot. Look, because he was two or three down. He, he was wanting the jack, but look, he got... He got second prize and it's a fantastic second prize sat the shot bowl stayed there beautifully for the for the shot itself now tash needs to go hunting that purple bowl of barry andrews as she got the line she's going to duck underneath it trying to hold not to beat this feels like an important bonus bowl here from barry so a great conversion shot from barry andrews in danger of the australians kicking well clear in this game but he played an absolute bomb. Perfect speed for it. And weight that was just going to arrive to the ditch. If he had got the jack, that was plan A. But he just had beautiful speed to land the shot and stay there. Plan B kicked in and he played it with superb speed. He's on a very good line here to add another one too. Just going a little bit. I think he's just going to drift around. Oh, I nearly got second shot out of it. But it's one to Tom Tyra and Barry Andrews, narrowing the gap to two shots now. 11 shots to nine. We should be on the 12th end. Yep, 11 ends gone. So, does the time limit apply to Division 1 is the question I've got. To, um, we should have probably clarified that before the start yes, of the game. Yes, it does. Because if yep. it is, it does. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes to go. We're not going to get the 15 ends in. So now the calculators really have to start coming out. They're probably going to get two more ends, I would say, this one mm. and one more. Oh, no, here we go. So day three. Division 1, 15 ends, two and a half hours. Everyone else is two hours, Dave. So they've got a two, two and, and a half, half hour time okay. limit for 15 ends. So. Oh, well, they'll get the 15 ends in then. Four ends to go. 50 minutes to play, uh, 40 minutes to play them. You'd expect Unless so. Unless there's some more kills, of course. <laughs> Anything's possible. Two point lead to the Australians. The other score between the Stevenses. Oh, they're running away with that game. 16-6 is the score. So they're in the box seat, to be fair, Bronwyn and uh, Roger at the top of the section already at the start of the day with the same point stuff as Natasha and Alan. Uh, but uh, Natasha, Alan, Barry and Tom will be wanting Mike and Dave uh, to try and claw their way back in that, in that game to narrow down the points if required as we see a great shot there from the Australian. So, yeah, at this stage, one of these two teams that we're watching here needs to start hunting shots, start hunting scores, which isn't easy when your opposition are playing so well, so real challenge, but, and you can see the, the quality of the bowls has lifted since mm. that wind has dropped, which we're all extremely pleased about, especially the players. They'll be delighted that that wind has dropped. A little bit on the tight side here, and that's just a, a little fault that Barry's got 
I've noticed it earlier in the in the game, and he's he just that the hand doesn't go straight through the, the arm swing. The hand doesn't go straight. He just flicks it right at the last minute with these with these fingers and these hand, and it just tugs the bowl narrow across the head. The so, hand. We we talk about the follow through of the bowl, and after it's left your hand palm to the sky, so that you get the the hand going all the way straight through palm to the sky on the follow through let's see if he can do it better this time around that oh. was a lot better just a little bit of a kink in the hand but it didn't flick as badly as what it did with the bowl before just didn't quite have the old palm to the sky thing but and look at this correction out of this. that's beautiful he'll be happy with that should be holding yeah, should be holding one there. Absolutely. Still pretty good chance for Natasha on the forehand. She can use the second shot bowl of Ellen Ryan's as a guide just to either turn that, be on the inside of it. And she's just overplayed it with weight a little bit. She's going to be very, very handy as well. Still in a very, very good position. Not far away at all. But uh, just needed to use that wing bowl of Allen's to her advantage. Remembering that um, if you are tuning in, and thank you to the nearly 300 people who are uh, watching this broadcast, there are two more games to go. So this is the final game of... We'll call it section play for simplicity. The final game of section play, there's a semi-final and a final to come of the Burnside Pairs. They'll be 15 ends and they'll be exceptional games. So after this, we'll have two more two more games to show you today and well worth watching on a... What is it? Is it Sunday today? On a, sun, on a Sunday um, um, uh, morning and afternoon. I've lost all sense of time, Dave, with the uh, Somerset Nationals and then the Burnside Pairs. I couldn't even tell you what day it is. Understandable. Disappointed with that bolt. In the area here, very, very good chance here. Just turn that bowl over and stay around herself. Fall in. Beautiful Not going to fall in. Still the one down, but got bowls all over the shop here. On the head to, to get result with, uh, with the bowls that had come for the Australians. But uh, no doubt Tom Tyrell will have some, something to say about that as well. Absolutely well. Steering after this bowl. If it holds up past that front bowl at 12, he's close. Maybe you need a little a feather of it. There. Oh, psychologically, though, yeah, as a player, you go, oh, we were unlucky earlier. <laughs> so that's just the bowl's gods. You just consider it to be the bowl's gods balancing it out. Absolutely. Still a good shot option here for Ellen, too, now. She can... Play with arriving speed, just over the draw, looking to get that gap between the two shot bowls. And she's in the area. She's in the area here. Very close here. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Oh, my <laughs> word. She is unlucky. <laughs> she's got a touch, huh? It's unbelievable. And she'd be three at a look down, or three down, definitely. She's <laughs> desperately unlucky there. She did nothing wrong. An eighth of a bowl one way or the other. That was perfection from Alan Ryan. And it's been a real tussle this match, hasn't it, between the South Canterbury combination and the Australian team. See there from the players' point of view what they can see. Certainly the wind has died down a bit now and we've seen some really good, um, a lot of really good effective bowls from all four players. That 
Airy on the back end. Just a little bit too much weight on that one. Sort of wait while well, we're going to see a hit here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we, well, I thought that might be a good option for her to, to whack this. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, Sorry. no, she's not. Oh. No, she's playing on the backhand and it looks to be narrow. She must be playing with a little bit of weight. Oh, no, she's going to promote a fourth one into the head. Oh, goodness. That was nearly per was perfect weight to promote a fourth one. I thought she might have gone quicker at that. The only danger, I suppose, is she's only got one bowl on the head there now after... Ellen was so unlucky with what she did earlier on. I suppose so. I so. She's thinking, I we've just seen her be so accurate. Out. So accurate. Yeah, she has been. Oh, well. She's got another bowl to come. Barry there with that delivery that on the flick. forehand. There's that flick I was talking about. He Again, has he managed to get away with it this time? No, he's going to see once again. He's going to oh, finish careful. narrow. He's, be careful, Barry. He's gonna fin he would have been narrow, but... He ran into his own bowls, and now it has to be a drive now. Oh, Barry is, yeah. he'll be disappointed with that. He's hes opened everything up, made the target so much wider, and here we come with a drive this time. Very close. Look at that. It's a kill. It's a kill. So It's a kill. Very good shot. Poor bowl from Barry. It, it, like... It just made the target so much more inviting. Mm. Immediately, Natasha's eyes lit up like Roman candles, and she yes. ah, I'm into this, and got the desired result. And that was, once again, that little technical flaw of Barry Andrews. The little flick meant it was narrow. It would have been narrow. If, been, if he hadn't run into the bowls, he would have finished way across the head. Yes, really, yeah, he just was able to hold up. To, he, sh he should have been wide. He should have been drawing a lot wider than that and not... Fattening the head up like he did, but um, Tom has his thrown the jack there, so Alan able to place the mat uh, where the Australians would like it to go, and she's still walking very short because you get to place it, you see. So there's no you don't have to worry about the skill required to to deliver the jack. You can actually place the mat down in this event. Interesting, Dave. Um, we've had an ongoing conversation. I continue to say points by mistake instead of shots uh, when it comes to shots scored in a, in a game of bowls and commentary. I was reading through the conditions of play and they refer to the jack and the conditions of play as the kitty. And I reckon kitty is more egregious than than points. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it's, I've heard that the jack gets called all sorts of things. Jack and kitty and... It seems to be kitty down south, eh? Kitty or cat? down here yep. they seem to Cat, be called yep. a lot and and when you're using the yellow ones I've heard it called a canary mm. so yeah there are and then when it won't go where you want it to go it call it other words yeah. all sorts of nasty <laughs> things <laughs> bowls bowls get funny names as well but we won't go uh, we won't go there Once again, two pretty good opening bowls here, and Tom Tyra with his second bowl on this end. Another very, very good. So the head already starting to develop into a, a nice-looking affair again. It's a little bit tight this yeah. time. We feather on the jack on the way past. No one's going to bother marking it, though. I'll leave it for someone else to do. Maybe they didn't notice it, or maybe I was seeing things. I was pretty sure oh, that it I think I saw just it. feathered the jack. It looks like the jack's slightly off-centre. Slightly off-centre, yes. So, yeah. Do a, um, a video review. So Barry on his forehand. Remember the Australian bowls are the stickered ones. They're leading by two. And one of these teams needs a good break in this event or this will be their last uh, last game or the they won't have a chance to go through to post section. 
Only half a bowl out, out there, Barry Andrews. Nothing wrong with that, though. Another bowl on the head, and so still an opportunity to draw down on that forehand and sit on the Alan Faulkner bowl and get the shot or turn it over once for two shots. Once again, just Barry at the moment is fulfilling the role of the number two in the mm -hmm. game of four, so just needs to draw, get another one handy. If she, if he happened to sit that bowl and stay there, that's great. But And he's played it pretty well, but it's just another bowl on the head. So that's what you'd be asking your two to do in a game of fours, just drawing, get another one on the head. Draw the shot, that's great, that's a bonus, but let's just get another one on the head. And so he's achieved that now. This ball's slightly overplayed. You can see it just running around the back with the other ball. And a ball set down there. That'll be the shot now, I'd imagine. Yep. Holding one. Mary Andrews ball Barry. falling in, so. You don't see balls sit down that often in outdoor bowls, do you? They sort of, they tend to sort of. Stay static, unless it's on a pretty precarious angle. Not after that length of time. Normally mm. after that length of time, if they're up on their edge, they'll stay there. But, yeah, that... Uh, no, we... Um, in indoor, our nationals just played on sprung floors because you have to fit 80 mats in a hall, so you get these big sports centres. And on a sprung floor, uh, you sometimes have to walk. <laughs> if, you've, if you've got bowls that you don't want to sit down, you give them a wide berth on the crossover. Look at this here from Tom. Lovely correction. So the only option here for the Australians is the draw shot. They don't want to be playing with any sort of weight. They landed on Barry mm. Andrews' shot Cannon bowl. They themselves could out. punch their own bowl off the head. So. Shit. And that's actually what would have happened there if she'd been uh, tighter. That was enough weight to, to cannon their own ball out of the head. Beautiful, sweet delivery, Tom Tyra. Nice and fluid and rhythmical. He's overplayed this one just a little bit too, but not a bad home. Nothing wrong with being back there. Alan following this ball down. This is a much better line here. Much better line. Oh, oh dear. Does. So now we're at the skips. The last two bowls now. So we're the, we're the skips of the fours now. And Barry may very well be looking at playing that shot that we talked about earlier on playing with a metre of weight to his own bowl to pop the second shot off the head. And if he stayed there, they'd have five. And we just heard, we just heard Tom Toro say literally that. So a big chance here for Barry Andrews. So a metre of weight. Not, not vicious weight. A metre of weight, hoping to arrive to his own bowl. He's got a lovely effort. This is a lovely effort. Where's the wind when you need it, Dave? <laughs> God, that weight was Good perfect, Good sight, though. Perfect weight. That was spot on. So he now knows that same weight, he'd be saying to himself, same weight, just bring it in a bowl. Bring it in a bowl's width as far as my line is concerned, but Natasha's going to have something to say about this. Have a look at this. Oh, she's just going to duck across the head. Well, we talk about timing and opportunities in a game, and this is the time to take your opportunities. Barry Andrews with a huge chance to sit with a number. You want to pick your moment. So same this is speed. It. Same speed. Just tighten that line. On its way. How are we looking? Oh, I think he's still out wide. wide. 
He's wide. That yep. was your moment. That was the that was the opportunity Boy. there to sit with a number in a game, and he'll be disappointed with that. Two things there that I want to comment on. First and foremost, he was a lot quicker. Mm. He, and this is when we talk about when you have one attempt at a shot here, as we will just watch this bowl of Natasha's, and then I'll elaborate on what I'm going to say. She's just going to hang wide too. So it'll be one, I think, to Tom Tyra and Barry Andrews. Uh, but what I was going to say, when we have one attempt at a shot and we we, we make a, a mistake, only at just one thing. Yes. Yeah. With the next one, don't go thinking, well, I've got to go wide around a bit quicker. You've just adjust one thing, okay? And in Barry's instance there, he didn't need... He, 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 and he obviously didn't on purpose put more weight on. He obviously accidentally put more weight on, but... He didn't want to put more weight on. All he needed to do was exactly the same speed but bring his line in. So just make one adjustment. We've only got to get two things right, line and speed. Sounds so simple. So he, had, <laughs> he had the speed right with his first one. All he needed to do was adjust his line with the second. As we see uh, Thomas Bowl will come onto screen shortly from your left. So I'm here on the, by Barry's uh, elbow. So you can see on the rink next door, they're playing the last end by the looks of things, and it looks like uh, it's going to be quite a big victory to Bronwyn and Roger Stevens, which means it looks like they'll be the ones that qualify from this section of four to go through to the semi-final. Yeah, that would be the expectation, unless something really dramatic happens in the last couple of ends here, and we see some eight scored. Uh, that'll be enough, because the Stevens were equal on diff with... Uh, the Australian combination of Natasha and Alan going into this game and they are comfortably up against uh, Mike Galloway and Dave Clark and the Stevenses will be feeling pretty good about their chances because it's a it's a very classy section when you look at the section of players you've got um, Barry who has a national title in the fours uh, Mike Galloway and Dave Clark who actually won the New Zealand pairs together in the early noughties, uh, a literal world champions, Commonwealth Games champions sort of situation with the Australian pairing. And then the Stevenses, who are very well known uh, husband and wife combination. So for them to get through this section, they'll be feeling pretty good about taking on either Carl Healy, Nathan Black or Paddy Stewart in the semi final. Barry on his forehand here. Yeah, it's always an outstanding quality of player at this event. And the Australians add to that, obviously. But if you go through the list of winners of this event over the years, there's some fantastic names. Always a quality field. Yeah, I mean, I look at the, the previous winners here, Dave, and 2006 was the first year it was run. Andrew Curtin and Morris Symes. It's a pretty good... <laughs> That's a pretty a pretty good inaugural pairing in 2006. Uh, but also people like Sean O'Neill and Paul Girdler, Andrew Todd and Jamie Hill, uh, Kearney and Symes, uh, Dave Archer and Bob McCauley, Scott Thorburn and Corey Wedlock, who would have been the first Australians to win this in 2017. And last year, Nathan Black and Cohen Litvin. So Nathan Black is back, but he's playing with uh, another Australian whose name escapes, who I'm sure we'll see, we'll find uh, before the end of the um, this broadcast. Look at this, squeeze to the left. Well, Just that's where Barry's bowls are. Far, very, very good. Very, very good shot. A little bit unlucky, but room now for Alan to draw.
Here we go. Tom on the forehand. So let's hope for the remainder of the day this wind does stay away because the quality of players that we're going to have in the semi-final and then later on the final, we should see some outstanding bowls as long oh. as the weather gods smile favourably upon us. It's a mouth-watering proposition, isn't it? When you look at, you've got the um, Team Stevens is through and it will it's likely to be that we'll also see uh, Nathan Black and his partner, Paddy Stewart and his partner and Carl Healy and his partner. So... It's just uh, class all around when you consider the field they've gotten through as well. Looking forward to the next two games of this of this walking pairs. But we've still got a game in front of us that's been intriguing to watch. And I I still couldn't pick a winner. And I couldn't tell you who's played better. I think they've both played really well, Dave. It's been a good game. It has been. We had the, the issue with the wind early in the game where bowls were getting hugely affected. Uh, but now we've got much more benign condi conditions and the players have really turned it on for us over these last half a dozen ends or so. Some really, really good heads. Great conversion shots. We've seen it all. This is very, very close. Look at this from Alan Ryan. Drawing to an off-centre jack. How good is that? Another skill that we need to train in our practice regimes is drawing to the off-centre jack. Making the adjustment with uh, the line that you need to get out to a bowl, uh, to a jack that's been displaced like this one. But then the other, the other concern you've got to, you're out on a little bit of new territory as far as the rink is concerned. You're out, you're sending your bowl out where not many bowls have been played out there, and uh, and so the speed can quite often be different out there where you have to go. So all of those things you have to factor into it, and that's why it's important that you practice it. So I think we see. On the drive, yes, he's looking to remove the shot bowl here. Is he close? Is it he's to get close. down? No, oh, kind of be far away. Tash looks to be on a very, very good line here as well. She's going to be close here. Just ran through, needed a bit more grass than that. Looked to be a good line to me, but needed even more than that. Barry with attempt two here, removing the bowl. Not getting the jack in the ditch. On the backhand, I think. Or maybe it's the forehand. It is Look at the this forehand. just He's underneath. Holding four, where? No, no, I think she was saying that you've gone through by that much, I think. Oh, OK. Is. Oh, that makes more sense. I thought I'd gone yeah. uh, crazy because I can see two of Tom Tyro's bowls. Maybe she said we need four. Oh, OK. Think. Oh, maybe, yeah, trail it for four was mm. probably what she's saying. Yeah, if you trail it straight down the line a bit. It would have made four of it, but they're going to have to settle for just the one, I believe. Right, so let's get the calculators out then. So we're on the penultimate end. Natasha and Alan are winning by two. Uh, the difference on the other match is 12. 18-6 to the Stevenses. And it looks like they're holding on that head. Uh, so essentially your eight's all the way home, aren't you? If, if you have any realistic chance, or any chance at all, not even a realistic one, but a mathematical one. Uh, yep. You need to be winning by 13 points here if you are Natasha and Alan. And probably more. There's a bowl to come on that on the uh, next rink. Mike Galloway has last bowl in hand to cut it down. And then we can get the mathematics out. But that's a beautiful first bowl there from Alan Ryan. Yeah, so 
All favours to the Stevens couple as they shake hands on the rink next door. It looks like it's going to need a minor miracle here mm. from one of these two teams to, well, especially uh, Natasha Van Eldick. Yeah. Uh, uh, leading only by two at the moment, so we'll need to get the final result of that game next door just to work out exactly what they need to do. They're oh. running out of ends too, of course. Yeah, they've got two ends to do it, and they're going to need to score literally... We haven't seen more than, I think, a four scored in this entire game, and they're going to need to do more than that twice in a row. Uh, so they're rubbing the board off. It looks like the Stevens have scored one, so let's say they scored one. So um, we need to see... Natasha and Allen need to win this game by 13 points, or 14 points, uh, to go through, uh, which I would suggest is... Really hard, <laughs> considering the fact that we play, played 13 ends and they're leading by two. It's uh, challenging to see 10 more points scored in two ends. Yeah, and the, and the biggest scores we've seen in this game have been threes. Mm. Inside half, good result there on the back end. Obviously the barbecue's in full swing there. I see the players in behind with the sausage sandwiches. Another famous part of the Burnside hospitality as the barbecue gets fired up and the sausages and onions and tomato sauce and a piece of bread. I wonder if the onions are on top or bottom. It's the, um, wasn't there a health and safety thing in Australia? The onions had to be on the bottom of the bread in case they fell out of the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop that idle thought. Here we go. There's the Australian squad. Nathan Black in the middle, I think. Our last year's winner. I'm a firm believer. Sure just to the right of yeah. him. It's quite a good, um, a good squad set out here, actually, from from the Australian team. We'll switch back to it uh, after Barry's bowl. I wonder if they did the... I wasn't here in the morning. Often the Aussies do quite an enthusiastic warm-up in the morning, don't they, Dave? Uh, yep. To get all the things working. Has it always been the case? When did that start happening in the world of bowls? Because I see um, most countries sort of do it now. Yes, they do, yeah. Um, it's, oh, yeah, it was a, around in my time. We used to recommend that our players did it, and some did it with more gusto than others. But uh, the Malaysians were probably the first team to really, really get into it. They used to have a very well-coordinated warm-up session out on the green or out on a back lawn somewhere. Uh, but then, yeah, we definitely, definitely recommended that it happen, that just to get the parts moving. One of the things that during the 2008 World Bowls Championships, we actually had um, just down the road from the Burnside Club as the, the rugby club rooms at the at the Burnside Park there, and we had a room to ourselves in there. We used to congregate there just to get away, just to change things, get away from the venue, um, some chill out time. But we had a couple of exercise bikes put in there as well, and the players okay. used to get on there and huh. have a bit of a rev up before they wandered down the road to the club to start. We used to con meet there, go from our accommodation and go straight to the our war room as we called it. At, uh, at the Burnside Rugby Club and uh, we'd have a little team meeting together there and just a few laughs and but then yeah we'd definitely do some warm-ups out on Burnside Park or as I said some of the players would get on the exercise bikes and just to get the blood blood flowing and just to get warmed up and loosened up and before we got stuck into the day's play. Mm. 
on there on the back end. I think we've just heard a siren go. I'm not sure if it's for this green or or not, but we'll know based on whether the players shake hands. They may shake hands after this end anyway, Dave, if it's not looking like a, a number's been scored. I think it just goes straight into your post section, doesn't it? So if neither of these yep. teams can get through, I think this may be the last end that we see. Lance Tasker in the background there. It's a gold star holder. He's been coming to this event for some time. Chasing after this bowl. Looking to sit that bowl of Barry Andrews out of the head, and she's done it. So they'll have one. Yeah, lovely shot. And they need to score at least a handful here, provided that it's not the um, the last end. It's been a great game to watch regardless. It's a good indication of things to come, hopefully. Just one job for you, Alex. Just ensure that that wind stays away. Well, I'll do That's what I can. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. I asked for no rain a year ago in Auckland for the Nationals, and that went well for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> As we see, it's still one to the Australian girls, but you can see they're looking there. If they can trail it to Ellen's feet, where she's holding that foot there, if they can trail it there, they could get three or four anyhow there's a, a little cluster of their bowls back in that area I've seen Natasha be very she played some absolute bombs played the, the bowl of the of the game for me earlier on when she trailed the jack back one and a half feet for three essentially brought themselves right back into this game with that shot and another opportunity for something Damn. pretty cool here that was when it was still blowing too, so it was mm. a very, very good shot. This needs to get down to the jack. Is it going to? It's trying hard. Just Slightly on passed. the side of it. Pretty good speed. That's another bowl in the weight in the holding pin. Waiting for the jack. Barry Andrew's saying something funny. <laughs> I don't know what, but saying something. And he's, uh, now he's going to talk to Tom, so perhaps playing the backhand side. And there's Tom's split red and blue bowls. You could just about go the shot bowl, couldn't you? The, um, there's almost a bowls well, gap between the shot bowl and the other, the other ones. You can get it through the other the, option, the as, we, as we see the head there now, is to play down with weight on the backhand, looking to use Tom Ty Tom's bowl inside edge of that onto the shot bowl flick the shot bowl out and stay around yourself so there's some there's some quite good percentages mm. of success on that back end and that's what he's playing down there on the back end looking to um, get the inside edge of that tom tyroa bowl and hopefully that'll take him across on oh he's too wide i think here oh, he needs a gust of wind in the other direction that's the weight he played that sort of just sitting through Speed, but a little bit wide in the end. He might just be a nuisance to the Australian girls now, though he's finished around about where they wanted to trail the jack to yeah. to get their big number. So he's he's uh, inadvertently he's uh, he's stymied the plan right in the right in a very good spot as far as defending a big number is concerned. Natasha will just wander up and have a good look at the head. See if they can find that number. You can see that Last bowl of Barry Andrews sitting right in the middle and now she's looking to play on the other hand perhaps and trail it. Uh, she's looking at all sorts of options. It doesn't look like there's a number anywhere there for them. Nah, really. it's really hard to see. There's scattered bowls, South Canary bowls all throughout that head. Yep, she does. she's a bit bemused as to what to attempt here. 
I yeah, it's, I can't really see you know, can't really see a big number there anywhere for her. As we hear that wind starting to pick up again. Don't say that word, I Dave. Just, <laughs> I just heard another plane flying over the top of the green as well, of course. So yes, the Norwest wind. New Zealand flights have to come in over the top of the Burnside Bowling Club land on the different runway. On the forehand. Looking to get down, or maybe she's just trying to draw another shot here. Needs it to hold a little bit. Inside out off Tom's bowl. Yeah, good yep, shot there for two. two. Bit of weight down there, says Tom. Pray for a bit of luck. Possible to cannon both the shot bowls out. And maybe hang around with one and a half. Two shots, so Barry on his back end. We expect this is going to be the last bowl of this match. And we will return with the semi-final. And the final later on in the day. Barry on the back end now. Oh, forehand. I keep calling it wrong. There we yep, go. Shake hands, time. Oh, congratulations to Natasha Van Eldick and Alan Ryan for winning that match. It's not going to be enough uh, to get them through to the real point end, but it was a well-contested game, wasn't it, Dave? It was. And look, conditions early on were horrendous with that wind, but the players adapted well, and and they, it, despite those conditions, we had some pretty good bowls played, and... It's, it was interesting to observe them in those really, really tricky conditions as well earlier on. But then, for the benefit, uh, to, for all of our benefits, the wind did drop, and then we saw the real class come out, and we saw some fantastic heads, some great bowls played by all four players. So, it's only going to get better as long as this wind stays away. I'm sure we're in for some cracking games this afternoon, Alex. Yes, yes, we will be, uh, Dave. And on that note, uh, I will bid everyone a fond farewell. For the meantime, we'll put up on the screen when we expect to come back uh, with the next broadcast and whom we will be broadcasting. We have to do a bit of camera shifting on to rink 10, I think. Um, so we'll be back a bit later on, maybe around lunchtime, I'm not sure. But we'll be back then and look forward uh, to commentating the semi-final and the final later on today.
Sometimes we're not ourselves There's no one I can turn to
Good morning and welcome back to the Bowls New Zealand coverage. I just about said the Somerset Nationals, but it's not of the Stu Butter Pierce <laughs> here broadcasting live from the Burnside Bowling Club. We're up to post section now. We're down to the semi finals of the main event and we're going to see the Kiwi husband and wife combination of Bronwyn and Roger Stevens uh, take on the Australians, Nathan Black and Nick Cahill. Nathan Black won this event last year with Cohen Litfin and he now has Cahill as. Uh, his peers partner looking forward to this one Dave what are your thoughts well look it's going to be another very very good game as long as this wind behaves itself but <clears throat> you'd have to say that it's going to be uh, a tough ask for the Stevens pair but look they've done exceptionally well to get to the semi-final and that's not a bad way to start with from <laughs> Roger uh, but they're up against a very very good up-and-coming uh, couple of players from Australia and, of course, um, Nathan Black is the defending champion, as you mentioned. And um, Nick Cahill, uh, he's, uh, both of these players are in the sort of emerging Jackaroo squads over in Australia. They're up and comers. There's just some more players coming off the Australian production line. <laughs> they, uh, they just seem to churn them out over there, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the game. But... Um, the way it started, you'd say the Stevens with Rogers sticking one right smack bang on top of it. Who knows in this great game of ours? It's Bronwyn here on the back end. Easy this one to tell who's who. You've got the um, the split bowls or the Australian ones, and the solid bowls are the Stevenses. Bronwyn actually improving the head there. Good opening bowl from Bronwyn. Of course, Bronwyn been in the New Zealand squad for um, a few seasons now. Very, very competent player. And Roger, her husband, also exceptionally good player. Play a lot of bowls. Involved with the sport. Oh, doesn't like that one on pull release. That would be why. It's just gone a bit wild, this bolt. They do play a lot, the Stevens. They love the game. You talk to them and they just can't get enough of it. And they do play a lot. Um, obviously, husband and wife, they've got the opportunity to travel, like, go to Australia and play on the Gold Coast, the Carnival Lear during, the, during our winter. Uh, lots of bowls to be played over there. And they do travel to Australia and do that, as well as playing in... Uh, Lots of events here in New Zealand. The Nationals, they were both involved with those recently. And, of course, now now the Burnside Pairs. And they've done, as I said, outstandingly well to make it right through to the semi-final. Bowles is not the only feather in Bronwyn's cap. She's a power lifter, believe it or not. I'm not sure whether she's doing much of it nowadays, but in a previous life, she was a very, very, very good power lifter. That's very interesting. I suppose that can be it's comp anything competitive, isn't it? But it would be one of the, the, um, the more unusual uh, code switches. Yeah, yep. Power lifting to bowls. So the Australians just struggling a little bit on this first in three down at the moment, and they've just overplayed things a little bit. Whether they were on a different or on a rink that was playing a bit quicker earlier on or not, I'm not sure. But uh, they've, they've just not quite got their weight control early on in the game. They'll pick it up pretty quickly, mind you. Yeah, I wouldn't give them more than... <laughs> wouldn't be expecting it to last more than an end, an end and a half. Nick Cahill on the forehand. Just might still be going a tad. 
they're just going to drift around. Is he going to cut one of them out? I don't think so. Might still be. Oh, could might have cut one out. Definitely two to the Stevens combination at the moment. And we talked in the previous game about the format of this particular event. It's two and walk, as we call it. So two by two by two by two. The leads have two bowls. Then the skips go down and play two bowls. And the leads go back up and play their other two bowls. And then the skips go down and play the final two bowls. So lots of walking involved in this game. But it's it's a very, very good format of the pairs game. And basically, as we mentioned in the first game, it, it's like playing a game of fours with just two people. Two people per team playing a game of fours and you fulfil two roles in a fours team uh, each end. It's Brom Bromman's bowl. Just yeah, it comes back a bit. A little bit it's wide. They were just trying to get some cover in case the Australians trailed the jack. You see, they've got some waiting bowls just a metre or so behind the head, and if the jack was trailed into there, it would have been trouble for the Stevens combination, and I think that's what they were trying to cover with that first bowl of Bronwyn's. Just left it a bit wide, as we see. Look at this. Nathan Black, is he going to trail it? Oh, oh what a did. shot. Got the dream result, though. Fantastic bowl. Good call from Roger. Last bowl for Bronwyn. Getting it a change of hand. Got the option of using her own bowl out there on the wing. One of the second shots that they've got. If she can get down to that and get the inside edge of that, she might get back onto the jack. And she's close here. Very she's close. close. Outside half even. Yeah. Oh, great try. Right in the area. So an end that looked like it was being dominated by the the Stevens combination and one bomb of a bowl from Nathan Black has converted it uh, to advantage Australia. A very good line again here. They'll try and add the bonus. He's trying very hard here. What a great bowl that is. I mean, that's pretty... That's two pretty good bowls, isn't it? <laughs> two well, that, outstanding bowls from fantastic. Nathan Black. That's as good as you'll see anywhere in the world, those two bowls. Fascinating that the Australians, we saw it in the first round that we broadcast today, seem to have a plan where they, they pull the mat up. And you would think... Um, on New Zealand greens, if you've gone from slower greens uh, to the New Zealand ones, you'd think that something that you wouldn't do would be to pull the mat up and play short ends. So interesting. Obviously a plan that they have. Yep, maybe it's something they've talked about as a squad, the little, little squad of players that they've got over here, That something that, a tactic that they might use. The greens in Australia do sometimes get to the speed that we have here in New Zealand, but mainly that happens on the Gold Coast winter time. You'll find that um, the greens over there do speed up and can get up to similar speed to what we experience here in New Zealand, but down in sort of New South Wales, Victoria district, the greens are definitely a little bit slower than what we're used to over here in New Zealand. A, another plane takes advantage of the northwest wind here at Burnside and hurdles in over the top heading for the airport. Absolutely, I'm happy to report that it looks pretty stable. It doesn't look like there's any turbulence on that particular flight. So, <laughs> so there'll be no screaming children. Well, there might be screaming children, but it won't be because of the turbulence. See this bowl. Inside half of that will do the trick. Doesn't need it. That's a well-played well played shot there from Roger. So yes, these two youngsters in the Australian system, as I said, in the development squad for Australia, Nick Cale and Nathan Black, and 
talk about the production line over there. The, the number people quite often ask me how come the Australians keep tuning out so many players. Well, there's there's a number of reasons in in my opinion as to why they are able to do that. One is population. Well, they've simply got more people over there than what we've got here, and the law of averages says that they're going to produce more players. There's a lot more youngsters play the sport in Australia. And the reason for that is that they're given so many opportunities via clubs, big clubs over there that, um, that do offer the opportunity for players to play the sport full time or not, if not full time, then well supported, yeah, well supported to enable them to, to really, really focus on playing a lot of bowls. The other thing that I feel leads to the development of these players so quickly that they become so good so quick is that in Australia the standard is a little bit higher than here in New Zealand and you get the, the good players in Australia, the, and I'm talking the very, very top players. Oh, look at that, great job. Another great bowl from Nathan Black as he's trailed it back to Nick Cahill's bowl at the back there. They play with and against each other a lot in big tournaments and the standard of those tournaments, because all the top players are there, the standard of, of play at the events are always very, very high. So in order to achieve, you've got to reach those standards. And that's why I believe the Australians do have this production line of players that we see a very, very good reply here from Bronwyn Stevens. She's made it better, that's for sure. She's got a bowl on the head and given... Uh, a view of the jack, so definitely a good change up to the head there from Bronwyn. So, yep, so the Australians, I think that's one of the key things, the very, very top players. They play with and against each other week in, week out at massive tournaments, and the standard automatically is that much higher. And so to, to, to win anything, you've got to reach those standards. Spall. Good weight. Would have just about drawn the shot. See Bronwyn's bowl there, third shot to the right of your screen, and Roger. That would be a good target for him to, to draw to beat Bronwyn's bowl, and if he does that, he's going to be very, very close. He's just a bit underdone with green there. He needed to be round those bowls. He had the weight, had the weight right. He's definitely cluttered up that forehand now and forces Nathan Black to switch hands to the backhand. Well, not Nathan Black, it's um, Nick Cahill, of course, playing his set of his second set of two bowls on this end. Well, they've got very similar bowls and very similar deliveries, and they're both Australian, they're both young, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, Nick, of course, has a cap on. I was very impressed by Nick Cahill in the, uh, I think it was the multi-nations, whenever it was that Queensland um, put a team in because a country pulled out, so a state entered instead, and Nick was part of that team, as was uh, Cohen Lipvin, actually, who won the, this pairs with Nathan Black last year. But Nick Cahill, very, very uh, good in that event. Uh, I think he may have won the singles or finished runner, runners-up in the singles. He had a very good run. At that multi nations, I was very impressed with his with his play. Yes, he did. He he uh, he did play ex exceptionally well at that event, and I think that's what really catapulted him into the development Jackaroos squad. Well recognised as a as a real real good up and coming prospect. Over in Australia, as we see, this one's going to get hooked up on those short bowls. He's got so rid of it now, bowl. though, so that might help. You'd suggest that means the, the path is a bit clearer on that forehand side, although Roger's asking for the backhand, which is intriguing. Looks like a nice track on the forehand now. Roman's playing the backhand, though, walking after this one. See, it's making its way. She's pushed it wide there. It's 
But as you get square through the shot pole, you could pop the jack to the to the left as we see it. But it did look like it was just opened up a little bit on the forehand side. Made a good adjustment with these. Good adjustment with these line here. Oh, I found the just gap. Just a bit quick. Just a bit quick. Problem I've been asked again on the back end. Tighter line this time. She gets past the front bowl. She's very close. Not going to be. Uh oh. Oh, just, just about, about rolled one of their short bowls up for shot, but no, it's another two to the Australians. I think it was two, wasn't it? Uh, we'll call it two until it otherwise uh, otherwise suggested. It looked like a two on the cameras for shot. Yep. Should be 4 0. Let's re approach the third end. Once again, Matt up, short jack. It must be the plan that they've decided as a squad. The Australian team, so Nick here on the forehand side. Roger opting for the backhand. Played pretty good speed, just a bit wide. Yeah, both hands pretty consistent. We have seen the wind die down considerably since uh, this morning where we had quite a bluster. So both hands here will play nicely at the Burnside Bowling Club. These greens, I must say, have held up remarkably well when you consider the fact that they had eight continuous days of play at the Somerset Nationals, maybe three days off, and then straight back into it here for the, the Burnside Stubata Memorial Piers. And the cover's still good. It still plays nice and consistent. They've done well, but I think have well earned to rest at the completion of today. And that's where big clubs like Burnside need the cooperation of their membership to allow these sorts of events to occur at their club. And cause you're right, no doubt, Jamie, as, as the greenkeeper here, as we see another very, very good opener from Nathan Black, his first bowl on this end, uh, no doubt he will be keen to rest the uh, the greens for a, a, probably at least a couple of days so no doubt they'll be shut for the next couple of days which once again you need the cooperation of your membership to enable that to happen and the members at Burnside generally understand that and um, and and are patient enough to wait until uh, they're allowed back on their sacred turf a bit quick this time still holding a couple and Bronwyn's first bowl was overplayed big time she raced all the way through to the ditch she'd be wanting to get a handy one with this one because they've got nothing really close at the moment it looks like she's quick again yeah this could be dangerous dangerous territory for the Stevens we talk about this being a game of fours, and Bronwyn was in the two position there, it would have been nice if she'd just been able to get two bowls past the head, so then Roger can do something, whereas the, the way it sits now, Roger almost has to get the position bowls, there's no point in being proactive with your three now if you're playing a game of fours, because you've got nothing behind, so a bit of pressure goes on to Roger, and then depending on how Roger goes, maybe the pressure dominoes uh, back to Bronwyn, it's a fascinating game. The 
This looks to be another handy one. That's a lovely bowl. Yeah. yeah. Really so classy Roger stuff. Needs, needs to get a bowl on the head here, definitely. Opting to do it on the back end. I mean, there's nothing to hit, so you think to yourself, we've got four bowls left as a team. Let's try just to improve the situation. Make it so that if if we do have to be aggressive with our last bowl, there's at least something. And that bowl, good line, but past the head. The Australians are just going to keep stacking this end up. 4-0 ahead already. A bit quick here. Staying up on the paddock. Better effort here from Roger Stevens. When's it going to turn? We Just passed. So still three down. He's a bit unlucky there. The Northeast Valley Club. And Bromwin's going to be under big pressure. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one, really. It, it it's almost like with Roger failing to get anything on the head for her this this particularly, it might be attack time. I mean, she's got to draw within eighteen inches to get mm. third shot. You know, and she's got to draw within sort of eight inches to get second shot. Um, so that's what yeah we would say the, almost that moment's past now, isn't it? I mean, it comes yes. down to you. You had your opportunities to try and get your seconds and thirds and make the target wider. You're not going to make it a lot worse by attacking, and maybe that's a better option here. Kills a kill, of course, in the Burnside pairs, which is convenient. So if the jack gets knocked out of bounds to the left or the right, you just replay the end. So I think forehand, forehand attacking shot might be the go here. Let's see whether that's what she's opted for. Yep, it is. Looks like it is to me, yep. She's actually... Uh, her setup on the mat was interesting. Just um, had her... Looked like to me the, who had, she had her foot right across on the left-hand side. Mm of the mat for the, for her attacking shot and that's a personal choice as to what feels comfortable for you didn't take a lot of time in the setup with her bowl no Let's see what no, she does she this time going to be four down so your shot selection in theory should not shouldn't change here you just play the four by drive you may as well have another nibble i think so because as we mentioned earlier on there's not a lot of room to to, to cut shots out on the drive again. She gets past the front one. She's not. Oh, she's going to plant that in there, though. <laughs> she's a bit lucky, but got the desired <laughs> result. Oh, of all the ways you could kill that, that would be the last ball I would have pointed at. But look, she was up to it. She got a good result, and you just go, cool, thank you. Thank you, Bowls Gods. We'll take the, uh, take the kill. So that end replayed. The weight was good, and the bias was right. He was fortunate. She hit it right in the belly, and that punched it, you know, either edge of it, and it would have just peeled off, and nothing would have happened. But getting it right in the belly, like she did, just punched it straight into the head, and got what what she was after. Not the way she was wanting it to happen, but got the result she wanted. And the Australians straight back into their work, right on top of the jack there. Okay, so this is where the pressure goes on Roger here. He's he's got to respond to this great leading that's that's happening from Cahill. He's just overplayed it. Stayed up on the paddock though, Roger's ball. But he really does need to start responding and, and getting some bowls. If not the shot, he's got to at least get them on the head. And yeah, you know, the pressure that Nick Cahill is exerting with his first bowl every end, mm. at the moment it's working. They're, they're getting domination early in the end and maintaining that. 
So Roger really needs to get on his game sooner rather than later. He's underdone the grass this time. And as they cross over, let's just check out that kill again. It's quite an incredible result that Proman was able to achieve. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> shortest bowl on the shortest bowl on the rink, as square as you like. And as you said, we just uh move right along from that. We <laughs> say thank you, Bowls Gods, and let's get on with the next yeah, end. Absolutely. Okay, so this and the, Austra the, the Australians did exactly that with uh, Nick Cahill getting a touch with his first bowl, so definitely hasn't uh, knocked them at all. Get that little bit of luck for the Stevens duo. Very good first bowl. Pretty keyed in, this Australian pair. Well... We did question them on the first end when they were heavy, heavy, heavy for their first set of bowls that they both played. But then Nathan Black played an absolute bomb, as we see a good reply oh. here from <laughs> Bowl fell over just in time for her to land it. Just as it good sat bowl. down. Good bowl from Bronwyn there. So Nathan, very um, an Australian habit nowadays if they sort of are almost off the map before they've let it go. Looks more like a Northern Hemisphere delivery than what we would have seen 10, 15, 20 years ago. Nathan and Nick both uh, play like that. Yes, it's, um, there's a lot of players in Australia who do do that. And, you know, um, as we see another good effort here from Bronwyn... Uh, uh, Aaron Sheriff and uh, Aaron Wilson, um, and, and it, it's not a bad thing because what it's what it's showing is that you've got your body weight is is going forward and your body getting some body weight behind the bowl. So when you do strike the slightly slower greens that they get down in Victoria, New South Wales, and places like that, it enables you to get the bowl up without too much effort. You're not mm. relying on just your arm to get the bowl up there, and that's. One of the biggest faults we have in New Zealand is that we tend to rely on the arm because our greens are so fast. We can get the bowl up there just using our arm. But the minute you strike a slightly slower green, you, you're going to run into problems. And Absolutely. You can see Nick, Kay, Nick, see Nick Cahill's delivery as well. We'll have a look at the next time he, he delivers his next bowl. So pretty good from Roger. Like, his body weight is going forward there. It's just that he doesn't leave the mat, and that's fine. That's what we coach in New Zealand. We don't necessarily want you leaving the mat, but if you do, it's not a bad thing. Now, watch Nathan K. Uh, sorry, Nick Cahill here now, if we get the camera on him. He, he actually does leave the mat. His back foot will leave the mat as he goes forward, and he, that's because his body weight is travelling forward. And as you mentioned, Alex, all the Northern Hemisphere players play like that too because on the super slow greens that they have up there, they have to have body weight mm. behind the bowl to get it up there. All right, it doesn't work. <laughs> Good luck. Yep. You know, I think people misunderstand. Um, uh, you know, you hear your, your international players, you, they'll talk about a 12-second green or 10-second green. And all of us in New Zealand go, oh, yeah, I've played on a slow green, I, I know what a 12-second green is like. You don't. You don't know what it's like. Like, I, I can't even... I had a roll-up at uh, Mount Tambourine, uh, when they had the Trans Tasman, and to be fair, they'd slowed that down to about ten seconds. I thought, oh, I'll see how this goes. And you can't explain to a club bowler or someone who's only played on New Zealand greens how much slower it is. Like, think of the slowest green you've ever played on, and then take a few seconds off it, and you're somewhere approaching what our players have to do when they go up to the Northern Hemisphere. It's ridiculous. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, and I just love the fact that you had a go yourself on a slow yeah. so that you could just, you, you could experience it and that's what i yeah like i remember you know a great story about joe as we see a very very good reply here from good nathan black excellent bowl played by roger uh too to sit the shot bowl through and stay there and looks like they <clears throat> roger and bromwin are holding a couple of this two possibly three yeah, great story about Joe when she was first selected to play for New Zealand up in the Northern Hemisphere. 
and uh, best bit, going back to Stu Butter, the great coach Stu Butter, who this tournament is named after, was the coach of the New Zealand team at the time. And he said, Joe, you've got to find yourself a croquet lawn and, mm. and mark out about 25 metres and put the jack up there and draw to that. And, you, and he worked with her on her technique to enable it to happen. And I was in on the on the trainings as well, being a regional development coach for Bowls New Zealand at that time under Stu Butter. So the first time we went down to the croquet lawn, Joe and I, and she let the first one go and it sort of got a third of the way towards the, the <laughs> jack and said, oh, well, okay, yes, yeah, so I've got to bowl it a bit fast and the second one might have got halfway. And then, and it was almost like after two or three efforts on the on the croquet lawn as we see some weight coming here, some some real aggression coming from Nathan Black. He doesn't like the way this head's sitting, so I'm going to do something about it. Got rid of one of them, but he's still be a couple down. And so, yes, so Joe, it was almost after the second or third time we went down, she, I'm going to have to pull out. I'm gonna, I just can't get this. I'm going to have to pull out. Oh, no. And we just, <laughs> and, and we just persevered. And eventually, one day we were down there, and after about the third or fourth bowl of the day it got up there as easy as and joe had already turned around to pick up a next bowl and i said have a look at this one and she put, turned around looked up oh my god she said i hardly even let that one go and it's up mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and so she'd got it after the after all the practice the, the getting the timing of that body weight in behind the bowl and from then on she was away laughing and um was able to uh, make the adjustment from then on. It, took, it still took time. You know, you come home, play on the New Zealand Greens again, and then get selected to go to the Northern Hemisphere again. It was always right. Let's get back. And it took a it took a few days again to get that delivery right to be able to to be able to uh, handle those super slow greens mm. of the Northern Hemisphere. As we see, the Stevens have opened their account. They'll be happy about that. Yeah, keeping well in touch. Fifteen in, so. They've got a while, but you want to score, sort of, we always talk about it feels quite different. Even 4-0 down feels different if you haven't scored yet. Whereas if you've opened the ledger, you go, oh, you know, it's fine. I know I know that we can score in this game, I think, is the, is the psychology. And they've immediately lengthened the end as well, which is a good thing. They've taken the mat right back, and, and Roger's opening bowl's pretty jolly good. Unfortunately for Roger, Nix is a bit better, although he's very lucky there. He was, actually, it wasn't a great bowl. He just ran into the jack. He's very, very lucky there. Yeah, we tend to call that a um, like a, a first year, a first year toucher. <laughs> you tend to be heavier, narrow through, through something, and he'll be pleased that it stuck with it. So now for the rest of this end, unless someone kills it, we've got this conundrum of drawing to a hugely off-centre jack mm. and the challenges that that throws at us. As we see, a very, very good yeah. performance at doing that, just that from Nick Cahill with his second bowl. And an even more off-centre jack now. It's moved further to the right as we see it. So it's... I mentioned in the first game the challenge for these off-centre drawing is that we're now playing out of the normal tram lines, as we call it, for the for where the bowls go when you're just drawing to the centre line. We're outside those normal lines. We're out into new territory on rink. Uh, and what can often... Close here. Oh, that's a miracle. Be happy with that result. Yeah, happy with that result, Bronwyn Stevens. Big inside out. Her weight was right, just underneath the line, quite considerably. Yeah. 
So she want to keep that speed. But just uh, take a wider line. In the area in here, she's trying to see that's not what she was after. Mm. So played that far too quick. I suppose the good thing is there's two bowls past the head. So Roger has a sort of half a chance. Oh, what's happening here? What's happening here? That's a slice of hell. Oh, that couldn't have gone any worse for the Australian team. Yeah, it's the last thing they wanted. And that's what can happen, as I said. When we are drawing out into new territory, we're not quite 100% sure of the speeds to take out there. And um, obviously overplayed that time by Nick Cahill, but he may have, it's probably a measure for shot, he may have hung onto the shot, although you'd, you'd favour Bronwyn's bowl. To be holding. Yeah, Bronze will be holding. He's just sliced the jack back there. So now for Roger, it's about going, right, we've had, this has gone well for us. <laughs> it's a, a good result the way it's sitting. I need to rub some salt into the wound and get a bowl close. And if he gets a wick, Luke's going to get a rub off that front bowl for half a second. That would have been one way of doing it. Here we go. Nick's going to be on the back end. He's given himself space for his bowl to turn and for it to run. Look at this. Needs it to hold. Oh, I've been a, it's a bit stiff. He's one down there to that bowl in the ditch. Very positive bowl. Right on the edge of the ditch, the blue bowl of Roger Stevens has ended up the shot. <laughs> so... All four players, well, the three players that we've seen so far have struggled with this drawing to an off-centre jack business. As we see Roger pull up way short on, on his attempt to draw to the ditch with that bowl. So that's where the um, jack is, so Roger clearly holding one. Nick looking for a way through. Australians are aggressive. Uh, Roger's bowl's not a toucher. That bowl is that he just pointed at as a toucher. If there's a way... If there's a way through to it, you might have a they might have a look. Where are we? Seven. If there's a gap through, I think we'll see um I think we'll see Nick have a nibble. See if he can cannon Rogers bowl off the head. Or the other option, plan B, is to put the toucher into the ditch. Look at this. He looks oh, a bit tight. Yeah. It's in the area. So, two more bowls to come. This is what the players see. So those three bowls of Rogers, brilliant blocks to stop the cannon <laughs> onto his bowl that's at the back. Lots to navigate for the Australian team. You could just about do it on the forehand based on, on this angle. Or, you, as you say, look for anything else to shelf up. Interesting. Doesn't look like it has the weight or the green here, this ball. You can see just how short that was. Reaching the two metre mark, the jack's in the ditch there. What are they talking about here? Are they looking at coming in off that one? I think what the concern is, if if they do drive and get the, sh the, the toucher ball, their second shot, that is... That, that they could shoot it out way out of the count. You know, it might get the left-hand edge of it and shoot it right. It'd go into the ditch and probably still stay in, but be a long way from the jack. So I don't know whether they were concerned about it. He still looks like he's going to play the shot. He's going to play with weight, looking to More hunt, reaching, hunt that... More uh, reaching weight. Yeah. Here we go. Come into the screen now. That was weight to get your collision bowl to do stuff. I didn't mind that weight, um, that weight, Dave. It means if you connect with something, your collision bowl's not going to shear off the head sharply. Yeah.
Hmm. So Bronwyn really needs to get another one. Try and get another shot. It's not easy, but there's, this end has seen two facets of the game that we need to practice. Not all, not hours and hours and hours of it, but it needs to be thrown into our practice regime. One, drawing to an off-centre jack. Two, drawing to the ditch. What's she doing? She's playing with all sorts of weight. Well, that's the was that the sure. toucher? Was that a toucher? Yeah, if that's the toucher, that's oh, absolutely brilliant. Okay. That's what a, a shot great that shot. Was. Well played. Didn't see the bit of uh, awesome shot. chalk on it, but amazing bowl. And we're going to see... That was a great shot from... It Robin. certainly was. We'd forgotten all about the fact that that was a toucher. As we Look at this. The Australians trying to put their toucher in the ditch. But oh, good try. It's going to be a two, I think. Two Stevens, Team Stevens. And a bit later on, we'll see if we can get a replay of Bromwyn's bowl. That was that was pretty. Uh, Pretty impressive. She got it at the right, the right part of that bowl too, Dave, to can it into the ditch and be close to the jack. And a toucher, of course, that's one of the coolest shots you can play as, as putting a, a toucher into the ditch. Well played from Bronwyn Stevens. Roger not quite getting onto his game at the moment. He's struggling a little bit with both facets, line and speed. He's not. Uh, he'll be wanting to settle down and just um, give Bronwyn some bowls to use on the head. Wait here. That's better. So Bronwyn goes to the mat holding shot, which is been a bit of a rarity for her in these first few ends of the game. Yeah, Ben, should be pleased with that. Makes her way down to play her bowl. Yeah, you mentioned that they're from the North East Valley Club in Dunedin, another famous club within the New Zealand bowl scene. Home of the Northeast Valley Men's Singles, which has now become a mixed pairs event. It was a, a, a fantastic tournament on the calendar, the Men's Singles down at Northeast Valley. Some famous players have won that event, and lots and lots of awesome players. And it was a fantastic event for years, but it's probably it had run its course, and uh, and. To the credit of the club down there, they made the decision to switch it to a mixed pairs event this this season, and that was also another hugely successful event. And full credit to them. Great club down there in Dunedin. Yeah, one of the famous clubs. You know, when you think what's top of mind when you talk about bowling clubs, uh, North East Valley often sort of comes into that conversation. Had a lot of very good bowlers out of there as well, and administrators. It's ball from Bronwyn Stevens, slightly overplayed. Nick just asking Nathan to play the back end side. Well, they've got their own bowl out there. Can um, roll it over or use it to their advantage. And or use it as a target. Oh. In other words, if I beat that bowl, 
on the inside of it, I'm going to be very, very close. But uh, he didn't have the speed or the line, in fact, with that bowl. So a bit of a rough head, this one, compared to the first few that we had. Yeah, it's a different length to what we have seen. And I think a player's just sort of struggling a little to make the adjustment. Roger deciding to play on his... Well, that's either the backhand or the forehand. That's his forehand, I think you'll find. Oh, no, backhand. Oh, no, it's his backhand. <laughs> See? Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You're right. I did, yes. I went to say one of them, and I thought I actually... I have no idea. <laughs> so I decided I wouldn't say anything, but I'm glad that you fell into the trap, Dave. Yeah. Now, this brings up another interesting <laughs> topic as far as coaching is concerned. Roger uses the what they call the, the rifle shot sort of stance where the coaching manual says that your anchor foot, which for a right-hander is your right foot, should be facing in the direction of where you're intending to set in the bowl. But if we look at Roger's setup here, you can see he's, he, his anchor foot, his right foot is heading way out. So they call that the rifle shot stance. Well, it's not quite the rifle, but it's close to it. And we don't really recommend that because as a coaching group, but some people use it and they use it effectively and we can't argue with it. Once again, do the same thing every time. That's fine. fine. And yeah. if it works for you, it's not affecting your performance, then, then don't change it. Leave it. But what what you're immediately doing is fighting your own body because that anchor foot is aiming in one direction, but you're trying to send the bowl in another. So you're auto automatically fighting your own body with your alignment. And that's yeah. why we recommend that, that you... Um, aim your anchor foot in the direction that you're going to send the ball. Yeah, I don't like it at all, but it's only because as a commentator, I like to know if they're playing their backhand or their forehand. You know? <laughs> if I can't tell before they let go of the bowls, I find that really challenging. There's a few, yep. a few who are yep. uh, like that. Yep, there is. Yeah. So the Stevens is holding a two on the crossover. Now they're playing... Flies overhead here at the Burnside Bowling Club. Bronwyn on the back end. And the solid bowls, remember, are the Team Stevens and the striped bowls are the Australian team. And Stevens looking to run a, a bit for cover here so that if the jack gets spilled out the back, they're, they're sitting okay. Strange, you're probably discussing the weight because you can actually just trail it around the corner. We saw on that first game a beautiful bowl played uh, by the Australian pairing to trail the jack two or three feet around the corner for a three. And I mean, there's, there's half a chance that, that could be what uh, the Australians opt to play for here. We'll see. Might go a bit quicker based on that uh, on that lineup. Yeah, not, not trailing, Dave. <laughs> Got rid of one of them. The ball. Unusual option there, I would have thought. I mean, look, unless they were thinking, look, we'll reduce the count. If I get rid of one of them with my first bowl and Bronwyn doesn't stick another one there, I might have a crack at the other shot with my second bowl. You know, that could have been the thinking. And, but an un you were ne unless you got the jack, you were never going to get an ideal result for yourself there. So yeah, that's the only logic I could. By that. Yeah, only logic I could see is that look to chip by that off shot the top. selection. That's a great bowl. Now exception. you go those she's two bowls. You go the two bowls, but she's very unlucky there. Look, she's had to draw another shot. She's desperately unlucky that she mm. sat it immediately beside Roger's original shot there. So. Uh, two bowl target here for Nathan Black and uh, to hit and they'll score. He could get lucky. Get he could get lucky. Bowls. Oh, he's only cannoned one out. He nearly cannoned both out by mistake. Well, not by mistake, but you know what I mean. Two nearly disappeared, but it's going to be one to the Stevenses. So three, four now the score. Four all. Well, there's, uh, they changed the scoreboard oh, back. So they oh, originally they? put two down. Uh, so, oh, okay, but yeah. it was only one. Yeah, I take right. no responsibility. Um, so it was only one on the previous end, so... Yes, okay. when we thought it was a couple. So 3-4, and this is the end. 
six and a good battle developing here between these these two teams. Roger Stevens. I think it's easier. I think if we think he's playing his backhand, he probably is. Well, that doesn't make much sense, does it? I don't know. Sometimes you seem to be able to tell which way he's going. Sometimes you can't, Dave. It's a bit confusing. But both times, he, or both ways, he gets it out pretty smooth. And that's a reasonable first ball here from Roger. If it just runs just a little bit more. So we can just hear that wind again, a little bit more blustery now perhaps than when this match started. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse and, and in fact dies down again. So if he's got the speed, he's played another pretty good one here. Just drops underneath his own. Yeah, that's a good bowl. Two good opening bowls from Roger. That's more like him. And this one's in the area big time. What a very good bowl that is from Nick Cahill. Lovely shot. Roman's turn to play a bowl here. On her back end. So you see why just two bowls are level level with the jack, well slightly low of the jack and to the right as we see it, so Brahman oh, oh, touch effort. that one oh, a little bit more would have got a good result. Nathan Black playing his forehand, which will be wind assisted on the comeback home here as it starts to turn now. Yeah, handy bowl. Yeah, good bowl. Roman to play a very similar shot with this one. Yeah, good call from Roger there. If he's, she's, he draw to my foot so that if he, if Bronwyn draws to. Roger's foot, she would have been through the short, the, the two wing bowls, the two second shots of Roger's out there and would have turned one of them in for shot. She just underdid her grass a little bit. Still holding one, but a little bit sort of one and one dangerous. out. Dangerous, yeah. A little bit of dangerous speed he played with there. Brave. <laughs> well, that's another thing. You know, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of being up there. And even though he did get onto his own shot ball, he 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 hung around. You know, so don't be afraid to be arriving at a head, even when you are holding. We talk about giving your bowl a chance, a chance to do anything. And gives you opportunities for a successful results. Roger on the tight side here. That's not giving your bowl a chance. Look, it's just stacking away, and he had dead weight. Interesting. Must still be looking to develop that backhand side of the head or even draw past. Yeah, look, there's a few options there. If he, he didn't, didn't really mind his line with another metre of weight. Onto his own bowls, or if he got just underneath and sat the shot bowl out, or if he just gets around his own bowl, he finishes in a good home. So there were options there. Now they're holding two. 
because that was overplayed a little bit as well. Once again, the Australians won't be too disappointed with that. The bowls are hung around. They've still got, you know, four or five bowls within a good region and, a, and a, four of them in the good catching pen, holding pen as we call it, just behind the head there. And they're two, they're two down, but there's the option of whacking those two bowls as well. So it might have to be three that they whack now as we see another very good Lovely bowl from Roger. And it's ended up in a very good home. Just asking Nick to play the tighter line, looking to arrive to the shot bowls underneath the jack. He's just oh, yeah. a wee bit over speed, but there was a few options there. He trailed right the jack area. into that little nest there, or if he was tight and, and, and got onto Roger's shot bowl and fell in, fell backwards off of that for shot. So there were... Few good options there for yeah. them. Though. Bromman really has to play the backhand here, doesn't she? So you look at that and you think, well, there's a, as you said, a nest of bowls to trail the jack into. So you do this, what Roger's pointing out. You have to play your backhand, you skirt around the blues, sit in the six o'clock position, and you're protecting against that forehand shot. Play the forehand on the swinging, you're a chance of accidentally doing their or playing their shot for them. Yeah, so Roger just giving Bromman a foot to draw to. On the back end side. If it lets go, it's half a chance. Needs to let go. Oh, very slightly overplayed that. Okay, so looking for a few options here. Or is he? Yep, he's playing. Forehand, maybe. A bit wide again, as you'll know. Here it comes. Oh, it's going to bite. He's close here. Oh, he's short. He's short. Oh, oh goodness gracious me. To. He would have felt that that was close all the way. I still think it's the back end cover. Forehand just is a bit scary, Dave, because we know once it whips, it continues to whip. And oh, I don't know. I don't know. Either that will be very wide on the forehand side, which is to the left well, as I we see the, it on the screen. The danger, the danger is the jack going straight back down the line by yeah. three feet. Yeah. So I think that if they can come between Roger's blue bowl right out there on the wing yes, he missed and wide the here. opposition's bowl there and just try and finish in that area in there would be a good home for Bronwyn's bowl this time. She's let it go very smoothly here. She's missing on the wide side. This is good. This is when you want just that little bit of a wind just to get that really late curl in. It's not going to happen. not going to get it, unfortunately. She had very good speed. So a chance here. First real chance for a number we've seen. Not an easy shot to play, but an opportunity. Same line as his last bowl, just another couple of feet of weight, and he'll be very, very close. Here it comes now. Here it comes now. Here it comes now. Have a look at this. Oh, he's got the <laughs> he's got second prize, which was landing the shot bowl and staying there for shot. Very, very well executed shot there from Nathan Black. First little, prize would yeah. have been the jack straight down the line, but second prize was exactly what he got, landing on the shot bowl and staying there for shot. A lot of effort for one, but it's better than not scoring, and the mat's been pulled right up again. You can see there just how far the mat has gone up and the jack staying on the rink. So we'll have a mat that's that's well up from the Australian duo. 5-3 in front they are.
handy opener from Nick Cahill. Following them down. Oh, it does always intrigue me. I briefly spoke about it in the in the first game, but subconsciously I reckon we, um, and it's not a bad thing, but we tend to fall into the habit of following the leader when you're off the front at lead, so your opposition will play the forehand, and provided they haven't blocked you, you tend to play the forehand as well. Um, and it's all fine and well if you're both playing well like these two are, but sometimes we try and follow the leader when perhaps we could be considering uh, switching this. It's fine if you want to play the other hand if it's not blocked. There's no, no issue with that, but very easy to follow the leader in bowls. this one to hold and it did so once again excellent stuff from Roger that's very good a lot better than what he was earlier in the game but the lovely little holding pen already that that Nick Cahill set up here now it, it's one of those things that if you haven't if you haven't got the real handy close shot as a lead then finishing where he is 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 definitely the second best prize you could you could ask for as a as a skip yeah and as um nathan here is playing the position of two and a four so he slightly overplayed that one but he'd be thinking to himself don't need the shot but if i put two bowls you see that bowl of nick cahill's that sits at five o'clock to the jack right where roger's foot is that's where nathan would have been trying to put two bowls on his forehand side and if you happen to take the jack with you it's happy days and if you don't you've now got four bowls that are two and a half feet away uh, from the jack for your three uh, to be really really helpful with which is why we're seeing an attempt from roman to cover that but she's been unable to do so tight side here he, he, he's playing with that just over the draw so that if you happen to you can draw the shot and land on the shot bowl or the second shot just just with that arriving weight but if you happen to pick up that little yellow thing on the way past you're singing ray time mm -hmm. and Bromma being asked to switch to her forehand Not sure. Oh, tight there. Could have been played on either hand really to cover, um, but must have looked better in, in, on the head to play that on the forehand side, which is to the left as we see it. We do talk forehand and backhand a lot in bowls, Dave, and I suppose um, we should explain it. So forehand is just away from your body, so if you're right-handed, the forehand is to your right and your backhand is to your left, and if you're left-handed, it's... It's the other way around. It's just uh, what we use in bowls to essentially explain the side um, that people are playing. And comes in handy when you're trying to... Look at this one. Oh, I just got a touch and ran on. Comes in handy when you're trying to visualise heads or if you're in the bar afterwards trying to explain what happened. Forehand and backhand is a much easier thing to visualise than this way and the other way. <laughs> or, or to the left or to the right or whatever other um, system you have for how people play their bowls. Good bowl here. That's classy. Yeah, very good bowl. Counting and covering. Covering a little bit. Of, if they trail it past that bowl, it's not covering, but it's in a, it's still ended up in a very good home. Yeah, really well played bowl from Roger, and this bowl's going to gonna drift out. Feeling like an interesting end is building here for... Team Stevens, who will now be holding three. So I'm asking Bronwyn for asking cover at the back. Back, yep, either hand. Nothing around that area where her foot is and three or four of the opposition's bowls there. So Jack in the ditch is not going to be a good option for the Stevens if the Australians look to play that shot. 
It's always what you're trying to predict, isn't it, when we talk about the tactics of the game. Is it's all well and good covering a shot, but you have to, you want to be pretty sure that that's a shot that they might play. Otherwise, we call it a wasted bowl. Often you can try and cover a place where the jack's never going. It's like, well, why? Why? <laughs> but then if the jack mm-hmm. does go there, you think, well, why did I not do that? Uh, it's a constant conversation to, to have. Well, he, well he's, he's lining see, up. Yep, yeah, might see some aggression here. I thought that might be a, the option. <clears throat> Look at this. Oh, he's hung around. Beautiful he weight. He got rid of two of the shots, with. though. He got rid of two of the shots. So very, very good bowl and a good option because... The big target they were looking for, of course, was Jack. Jack back anywhere was going to be good news. But plan B, he got rid of two of the shots. And so definitely a very, very good bowl still. Brown went on her forehand, just trying to place another bowl there or thereabouts. She's on a very good line. She needs to get another shot here. And I, oh, is she just going to pull up because... He's just going to check how many second shots I've got. Is that the bowl that he's measuring out there is Bronwyn's? Is that so? Is it worthwhile attacking the shot bowl? That's the question, isn't it? It may not be. It may not be if they haven't got two seconds. If I've only got the one second, or maybe even I don't think they're two down. But if you were getting extravagant, oh no, that doesn't work. I was just going to say you could just go off. Um, you may as well use. Roger and Bromman's bowl, get rid of both of them, the one at the top right, but then there's a bowl at the top left. I don't know, we'll just wait and see. They could get extravagant, Dave, but I don't think they will. See a reasonable crowd I'll watching on. Go. Definitely go hunting the shot bowl. Yeah. He's very close to something. Oh, he's under. Oh, just a bowl underneath. Interesting. It's a shame that bowl's hidden, isn't it? So just make a bonus here. You just want to make a bonus if you're Bronwyn. Draw another shot, yep. First time we've seen, I wouldn't call them cracks, but it's the first time we've seen the Australians. What's happening here? Oh. Well, the heart would have been in the mouth. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was lucky. <laughs> Two. Oh dear. Not the way she was hoping to get another one, but she got she got the result she wanted. But dangerous territory it was. But yep, five apiece. We're all tied up. On the eighth end, some crowd gathering at the inside bowling club. Great bowls to be seen as well. Other semi final is 7 5 to one of them. We'll get an update on that at some point. This is semi final, of course, uh, that is between Carl Healy and Patty Stewart in the skip position. And it's 7 3 to Patty Stewart and Kerry Becks in that game. Good opening bowl from both leads here. Just short of a gallop.
Try underneath the line as well. So two good first bowls and the second bowl, the correction bowl, which is meant to be the one that uh, better was worse. So they've done it in the wrong order here <laughs> off the front. <laughs> Northeast Valley, I'm not sure if they're new shirts, but I see the shirts are created uh, with D Dynasty or Dynasty Apparel, who are a supporter of Bowls New Zealand and have been doing a lot of uh, club shirts around the place. And actually a lot of manufacturers are. It's been nice to see, Dave, the last two or three seasons. There seem to be lots of new club and centre shirts uh, popping up. Uh, yes, you're right. Not the greatest of Bowls there from Bronwyn. Yes, it is, and, and I love the colour. I love seeing the colour when you see a green full of people that have, you know, in a tournament like this or at the Nationals where you, all clubs are represented, you know, the different styles of of shirt, the colours and some of the patterns and some of the designs, and it's fantastic as we see a great, great bowl. bowl here from Nathan Black. Well, people take a lot of pride in their shirts, don't they? And there's, uh, it's nice to have nice ones sort of making their way onto the scene and, and shirts that have been designed thoughtfully and have meaning behind them. Uh, long may it continue. Yep, gone are the days of, of the all whites. Exactly. See, the most whites to see nowadays are uh, social events or business house uh, where they think they need to, where they still think they need to wear white at a bowls club. It's the only time you see whites on a green. Yep. Stag do's or hen parties. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much it. Nathan Black on the back end. Won this last year with Cohen Litvin. How's the weight? Be enough to count. I think. Oh, Bromwyn calling for. Oh no, I thought she might have been calling for Roger to have a rumble down there on yeah. the forehand, but I think she was saying just to draw. the forehand got Feel Bronwyn like interested needs it to hold that's a lovely ball I think Roger played um, Musgrave for Musgrave Hill maybe maybe in like a state triples final with Dean Drummond who's another New Zealander who's over there Sure, I saw that in the last year or two. As you said at the top of the show, Dave, they spend a lot of time on that side of the ditch to um, Bronwyn and Roger playing bowls. Well, Great this is interesting. Here. You could play a positive good, bowl. Bad. Yep, it was, a, it was a good bad bowl, that one, because it's given... Roger, a nice little funnel down through there now to go hunting the jack, looking for at either one of those bowls, landing on either one of them, trailing the jack. Oh, he's under Dunny's line horribly. Yeah, it's a delivery problem. The weight was good, and that's unfortunate that he's also rolled the Australian bowl into a catching position. He'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, Roger was part of the 2023 Queensland State Championship Triples Men's Winning Team with Roger Stevens, Dean Drummond and Peter Brown. Uh, so he's obviously in pretty good form the last six months, six to 12 months. Because that's the, the other amazing thing about bowls in Australia. You've got... Because of the size of the clubs and 
there's, there's tournaments all over the place and, and you can uh, play in a lot of tournaments and some very good money tournaments as well. There's some outstanding prizes, prize money available in, in, the, in some of the and they don't even necessarily have to be high powered big events um, where, where the, not all the top players are at. It's just once again because of the the size of their clubs and the number of players they they can offer some real good prize money for the just what we would consider a normal sort of one or two day tournament mm. Roman needs this to turn it's a big miss it's like she'll be disappointed with that What do you do if you're Australia, Dave? Do you try and plug the hole, or are you playing a cover shot? What would you play? Well, not quite sure what he's talking about there, but it it looks quite pretty for Bronwyn and the shot she's attempting to play. You know, it's quite a nice target there. So whether they're just trying to change it a little bit, try to draw down, looking to turn one of their own shot bowls off the head a little bit, just to make it not look quite so pretty for an attacking shot. He's overcooked this one a little bit. He's into the back behind the green sort of area, but he may have been looking to cover there as well. But it does look like a nice yeah. funnel down through there for Bronwyn to play the shot that they're trying to play, and I thought the Australians might have just tried to change that up a little bit. Psychologically, Brom was just, ch you know, you just reset, right? Because there was nothing. Sometimes there's, you can't learn anything from your first bowl because you've missed it. You just go, I'll just start again. And she's, it's a rinse and repeat of the first one. This is a big moment in the game. She'll be disappointed with that. You know, she's um, played some incredible bowls in this match and would have expected herself to be a, a bit closer than that, I think. That opportunity to rub a bit of salt into the wound here from yep, Nathan Black. Bonus shot. Sitting with a good two, trying to make it three. Where's the bowl? There it is. He had the right weight too. Oh, eighth of a bowl underneath the line. And two there. But just deciding, the team, the Australian team deciding where they want the, the mat to be. After they take a 7-5 lead after eight points. So close. It's um, nip and tuck in this game. Neither side has really dominated. Yeah, it's been well contested. There have been chances for both teams it feels haven't seen shots for numbers executed we've seen some very good bowls Roman drove a toucher into the ditch that was a very impressive shot a couple of other moments which have been quite impressive but haven't seen any shots executed for, for bundles yet and both these teams are, are capable of doing that like, it wouldn't surprise me if before we get to the 15 ends day if someone plays a bowl for a 4 or a 5 yeah, the, the the heads have been just a little bit disappointing from my perspective. I thought we might have had some more intense, close, tight heads uh, than what we have. But I guess there is still a little bit of a breeze around out there, which can uh, nowhere near as bad as it was halfway through our first game this morning. But um, breeze definitely is the enemy of us bowlers. Yes, yeah. That's a good first bowl. Yeah, that's lovely stuff. On to his own or just round it. And that's a very good bowl.
Roger on the back end. Drifting a little bit, this bolt. Staying up on the paddock, is it? Yes, staying up on the paddock, that's something. Nathan on the forehand. He's, been, he's going to have to be a bit lucky here because mm. he was always a little bit tight. The uh, Queensland-based players in this Australian group that are over here will be heading back and getting straight into what's called the uh, Queensland Premier League, which is a an outstanding competition. When Joe and I lived in Australia, we were involved in that, and the, the quality of the players each week. It's a it's played under the same format as as the pennants over there. So there are three fours. Yes in the team and it and it's a master board so even though you've got your individual scores on each rink it's the master board that counts so the total of all three uh, rinks are added up and, and, they, and so so over in the corner of the green there's always a big board that that someone updates adds up the three boards you'd want to make sure you've done the that right board. <laughs> yep yep <laughs> it was like an important job but the who's who of bowlers in Australia play in the event. Teams, teams can they bring players in from out of state, uh, as well as having you know there's some obviously quality players in Queensland as it is, but players are imported from out of state as well, and it's a it's a real big show and it's a fantastic atmosphere. You go along to one of the games, they put the music on during the games, and uh, there's supporters and there's lots of noise and hoopla and fun and it's it really is an, an unbelievable event and it goes for goes for about six weeks. Some double headers are played. You one game in the in the afternoon and another game in the evening because a lot of the clubs have got lights over there, so it's played in the evenings at, at night time. As we see a great bowl here from Roger Stevens, that's a real good bowl. So the Queensland Premier League about due to get underway this weekend. It's a, another awesome event on the Australian Bowls calendar. How's this? Can't be far. Oh, it's diving now. Just as I got excited about it, I decided to swing there. So the master board concept is a very good... I mean, you can, you can win one out of the three games but win the match. Because you might have a big win on that rink and two narrow losses on the other two rinks. But the good thing about it is, even if you're on a rink where you're getting getting a, a bit of a hiding, you've you've still got to keep striving and working to get as many points as you can for that master board. Yeah, I like that. And it's, so it's, it's a very very good concept. It, uh, it's uh, very popular over there. That format of playing. This looks to be underdone as far as the green is concerned as well. Looking to probably try and arrive to the shot bowl. So he, he might have had the line right but didn't have the speed. He only had the speed of a draw shot there, so see if he can make the adjustment with his last bowl. Bron went on a pretty good line here, but just going a tad. Yeah. All the bowls past the head on this end. And there are some people discussing 
what went right or what went wrong. Do you know them, Dave? <laughs> oh, they're vaguely familiar, those two, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Seen them somewhere before. So that time I overplayed the green with his attempt to sit the shot bowl. So bonus bowl time for Bronwyn Stevens. Can she draw another one and tie us all up again on the scoreboard? To the air, it's not bad. Going to sit out or is it going to sit in? Oh, it's going to be square. So we're narrowed up. Seven shots to six now to the Australian pair. What do you think they're talking about? Uh, look, <laughs> it's probably remember back in 1986 when we were playing that game of football at Victory Square and we did da 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 da. That's probably what they're saying. <laughs> okay, that, sound, <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Great pairing. They'd have um, an excess of a thousand caps between them now, wouldn't they? With uh, they are continuing on with the New Zealand team, it would be it would be more like just about twelve hundred caps. Absolutely, unbelievable. Twelve hundred. Yep. Unbelievable amount of bowls for your country. Great bowl there from Roger. Roger has settled down, it feels. You know, the first few ends... Oh, to be fair, his first end was very good. Uh, for a toucher on the first end. Then had a few ends where he, it felt like he was being outled by Nick Cahill. But uh, matching him blow for blow the last three or four. And we see that reflected in the score. 7-6 on the 10th end. Yeah, definitely the Australians are not definitely not having things their own way here. It's a very, very good performance from Bronwyn and Roger. Another very good bowl there from Roger. Hello. Showing a lot Nathan of interest Black's in this. Very interested in this one. Yep. <laughs> Just about got enough of it. It's a very good bowl. It's opened it up. I mean, hidden behind Roger's sh shot bowl it was, but now Nathan can... It's out in the open. There's a bit more room. Long way to go in this... This end, the leads have only completed stage one of the end. Going past this pole, a bit of a missing short. On the forehand as well here. Underneath the line. More likely to hit Rogers bowl up than she is to draw clean through to where his foot was as Bronwyn Stevens here on the forehand. Just part oh, it affected. Oh, she's short. Run out of gas. I was going to say, it would affect it into the calculations when you say, I draw here, but you go, well, you look around and see what bowls it. That might be held up if it's your bowls. Probably the right hand to play, but Robin falling short on that occasion. So giving half a chance now for Nathan Black to take his opportunity. It's not far away either. Be in a handy catching position. So 
So the draw shot is probably all we've got for both players here, and that's fine. It's uh, Nathan Black could overplay his slightly and and try looking to drag the jack. He's got two good uh, catching bowls just behind the jack, as we see another pretty good bowl here from Roger Stevens. Yeah, that's classy, and it's sat down. Stops the jack from coming back in that 7 o'clock direction now. It's more likely to come back at 6 if it comes back at all. It has given Nathan two bowls to land on, which is the only unfortunate thing from Roger's bowl, but he's underdone it as far as his grass is concerned here. He'll be disappointed not with enough, that. Not enough green. Well, decisions, Roger. I think she's asked for the four... Backhand. Oh. Oh, she's up. I've seen three different suggestions. I liked, I think it was the second one, round the back, on the yes. backhand, round the back, trying to match that green bowl two feet behind the jack, but he looks like he's under Dunny's the green. two that you've got are okay. Maybe that's what must have been what was asked for. He's dropped short. So a nothing bowl. Another big bowl in the context of this match. Been a few opportunities for the Australian pair. And they've just been unable to take all of them. He's in the area this time. Oh, it's ducking again. Needs it to hold. Is he get one of them? No, he didn't get he didn't even get one of them. That ducked away again. So Nathan Black has seen those two attempts of Nick Cahill's and how much they turned. We did see, uh, it's not as windy now, but we did see in the previous game, the Australian team in particular, very effectively, uh, essentially just going full blooded drive. They had a bowl target, at least time for the, the bowl to deviate, and if you've got that shot on your locker, it makes sense to use it. I suppose that short bowl you need to have it play a swinging weight anyway, don't you? Oh. Big discussions here between Roger and, and Bronwyn, but for me there's only one shot to play, and that's the backhand drawing to Roger's foot. Yep. Well, it looks like she might be going to play it on the forehand, which is probably a better option. It's a bit safer out there. Play it, but definitely getting a bowl between those two bowls in behind the jack is the shot for mine. It's uh, Yeah, well, you look at the head, they're looking, they're looking okay. You know, the Stevens, they're holding a couple on the head as it is, so you just have to think, well, what are the opposition going to play? Uh, and you're right, you're just putting a bowl past the head a little. So see those two blue bowls of Rogers of the shot, maybe even the third shot, that toucher that you can see. Bromwyn. Willing to bowl on. Good weight, but not going to turn enough. Be intriguing to see what shot Nathan Black opts to play. Well, I've got a question for you. Are they two or three down? Well, that's a very good question. I think, I reckon... Yeah, they could... Oh. More? One, two, three. Maybe it's I even it's four. Three. three. Okay, if we'll go three. I think those three blue bowls are definitely in. Yeah, I'd He's definitely got to be playing to arrive at the shot bowls. Try and land, get the split between the two shot bowls, or if he's a little bit wide, he gets the jack. That's definitely the option for him. Is he going to turn? Maybe. Here it comes now. Oh, he hasn't got as much weight as I thought he used. Looks like he's almost... Oh, no, he's, yeah, that's pretty good weight for it. Very controlled weight. That would have been perfect to pop the jack back in the 6 o'clock direction. Interesting here again from the Stevens is, I mean, there's a couple of questions they'll be asking themselves. You've got to cover where the jack might go. So what's the best hand to do that on? Is it worth just stacking it up? You could stack it up. You know, there's an argument for that because you're never going to, stacking it up isn't going to make the shot easier for Nathan Black. So you're half backing him to miss. Be interesting. Well, they look like they've opted for the forehand here, Dave. Yeah, I think they're still trying to play that covering bowl. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is better. This is better. Any of it? Just ducking on him. Oh, that was a rock play ball. That was unlucky. It was. Steely eyed. Look for Nathan Black. Won this event last year. He's a number down, we think, maybe three down on the head. Taking a tighter line on this occasion. So now the question is, when are you going to turn, Bolt? When are you going to turn? Very good bowl. Oh. He's going to get second shot out of it. That's a great bowl. Very, very good bowl. Yep, well played. Cutting it back to one. Did have the he had good speed if he did happen to get to the jack to trail it, but he he got plan B, which was reducing the count. And seven apiece we are. All drawn up, four ends to go. Been a good game, Dave. Very, very good. Very close on the scoreboard. Some interesting heads without them being compacted. There have been some very good niggly heads, though, for people mm. to play to. So it's been very interesting. This first bowl. Oh. Well, there's a commentator's curse, I was just about to say, and I'd expect to see it be very close, but he's just pinched it a little. Yeah, Roger had been hugely disappointed with his first bowl. He's been going pretty good the last few ends, so he would have got on the mat with a lot of confidence, and this looks like he's made a very good adjustment here with his second bowl, though. Very, very good. Well done, Roger Stevens. Nick Cahill also on a very good line with his second bowl. Down, he says, oh, not quite. Half well, a bowl lower He's got the desired effect. Yes, the first day's play for these players on the Friday is always a massive day of bowls because you've got uh, two-hour uh, two time limits, but four games. So it's eight hours on your feet, but it's all this walking that you've, you've got to do as well, that um, the players definitely feel it at the end of day one of this event. It gets a little bit easier from then on. Only three games a day for Saturday and Sunday, but slightly less definitely that Friday. <laughs> Friday's a big day, especially when you get a... if you get a 30-degree de day in Christchurch like they did have... Excellent opening bowl from Bronwyn. Has been amazing weather here the last couple of weeks. We had one one little blip when we had uh, you know one rain cloud and Christchurch decided to park itself on top of the Burnside Bowling Club and hover there for a day. But every other day has been really nice weather. Even today's lovely weather. Really, we had it was a bit uh, gusty in the morning, but the gusts have died down and it's just slightly overcast. But Lovely weather. I can remember playing in this event many moons ago, and we were out on the back green at Burnside through the other side of the clubhouse, and it was a stinking hot day. We were melting out there, and all of a sudden, Ken Preble was the uh, greenkeeper in those days. He came out and yelling and yahooing, everybody off the greens, everybody off the greens, please. And we all got off the greens and he put water on it. He poured the water on because he could see a couple of places where the mats had been placed on the green to play an end. Yeah. The green was starting to burn. And uh, if he hadn't got us off and put water on the green, he would have lost it. The whole thing would have would have gone under, would have died. And so we were, we were only off for a quarter of an hour and he, he put the sprinklers on for a good quarter of an hour over the whole green. And then, right out, back you go. And <laughs> back out we went and carried on playing. And But, um, yeah, so stinking hot weather it was that particular day. Oh, it's an amazing job the greenkeepers uh, do do to stay in tune with the greens. Now, Jamie Ferris is um, 
manage that even over this last uh, 12, 13 days with, with some of the weather. Uh, there's greens that he's had to pay uh, special attention to and has been really successful in that, which is good. And, I mean, as I said at the top of the broadcast, I look out at the three greens here at Burnside and consider that they've had 11 days of competitive play and feet stomping and bowls being dumped, etc, etc, with hot weather, and they're looking absolutely fantastic. We're certainly blessed with some very, very talented greenkeepers. And the other thing I love about the greenkeepers, I mean, in my centre and Nelson, we've also got some excellent greenkeepers up here, but they love sharing their knowledge and helping each other out. They, you know, they up here. They between Nelson and Marlborough uh, centres, they they go on little caravan trips, as they call them. We'll, we'll get in the van and away we go. And they go and they they'll drive through to Blenheim, half a dozen of the greenkeepers from Nelson, and meet with their Blenheim counterparts at the clubs and have a good look at the greens and discuss what what they've been doing with them to make them better, what they can do, asking for advice and. And they're happy to share, and and it's a fantastic network of greenkeepers that mm. um, that we've got in New Zealand. They hold they hold their own conferences, of course. The bowls greenkeepers hold conferences, and it's just fantastic the network of of people we've got around the country. It is, and I think um, often underappreciated. I don't think we appreciate how good our greenkeepers are, and how fortunate our clubs and centres are to have those green keepers and you just have to look and again I mean we keep on using the Northern Hemisphere um, comparison but if you play on a grass green in the Northern Hemisphere generally it's administered by a council and the person who mows the lawn is the one who also mows the lawn that happens to be in front of your bowls club <laughs> it's not quite so it's not quite so um, intensive as what we have here and of course it's different uh, uh, different surfaces as well. We've moved to the Cotchula, which we found on the, the quiz, didn't we, Colin? The Cotchula. We've moved to the Cotchula greens mainly in New Zealand. Um, but fantastic surfaces here, and I'll just take my hat off to them. Very, very good bowl from Bronwyn Stevens, drawing a touch of this. She's a little bit unlucky because she's gone from one up to one up. Mm. Um, however, it, it just depends how brave she wants to be with her last bowl. Let's see what Nathan Black does with his one first. But then if we look at the head there at the moment, there's only one Australian bowl yeah. in amongst five, five Stevens bowls. But this oh, might well. change things here now. <laughs> it will because he's, oh, he's... It was a lovely bowl. He's actually unlucky not, to, unlucky not to pop the jack back, really. He swung half a bowl too much. But now there's a chance for Bronwyn. It's a big, it's a big opportunity here. She can play with weight, just not not huge weight. Play with a couple of yards of yard of weight, looking for her own touch of bowl there, the outside of that, or mm. just underneath underneath it, to land the second shot of the Australians and stay there oh, for a handful. It's worth, I'd say, more than a handful. It's a really big chance to sit there. You don't get these chances this is what that you often. You were asking for earlier on, Alex. You were asking to see someone play a shot like this. Or she's get close. That. She's close. She's very close. She needs it to hold on. Oh, she got the weight. She didn't quite have the weight. She had a beautiful line. Lovely effort. Probably needed another meter of weight with that line. She wasn't too bad, but it's interesting. They, they, having a good look at it to see who actually has got the shot here. Would have heard a bit very, more if they were close. one down. If you're one down, you just miss heavy. And if you happen to remove a couple of your own bowls along the way, you might sit with a three instead of a five. Interesting. It's been an interesting game. Very nip and tuck. And in a very, very close game like we've had here, that was an opportunity. And look, mm. she gave it a best shot. And just it wasn't too far away, just probably another... L a couple of feet of weight would they held the bowl just that little bit longer but those are the chances in these real close games that you've really got to try and pounce on
Mason Black, he needs to, he's looking for the jack here now, or he's just going to be on the outside of the of the Bronwyn Stevens bowl, but if he'd been underneath that little movement of the jack would have given him two or three, so good head, good excellent end of bowls that one Seeing so many bowls missed by fine margins in this game, Dave so it stands out to me, both from this team Stevens and the Australian pair, they've been within a bowl, probably a hand, both of them a handful of times, with a bowl of a really good result. And they just seem to be just missing. And it, it just feels like someone's going to play a bowl for a number. One, two. Who was it? One, two. One to Nathan Black. Yep, one to the Australian. So eight, seven. The score now as we enter the 12th end. And still anyone's match. The map being walked right up there. Look at that. Successfully stays up on the paddock. It will just be straightened up, which is what's happened there. Well thrown to the two metre mark from Nick Cahill. A loose bowl by his standards on the forehand. See, it's stayed up on the rink, but only just. And this is a great reply by Roger Stevens. Yep. Excellent. Really loose end from that's like a that's a rush of blood to the head or something, isn't it? That's not <laughs> absolutely be his two worst bowls that, that we've seen in this entire game, and that means it's an opportunity for Roger to go. Well, I'll just put another bowl on the two meter mark and the ticket off as winning the, the battle of the leads on this particular end. And that's exactly what he's done there. Really good bowls from Roger Stevens. Very good. So, once again, Nathan Black's got to be in the mindset of I'm playing two in the fours here. Mm. And the lead has, has failed in his endeavour, so I have to play the lead's role, basically, which is to try and draw as close as I can here. Whereas Brett Bronwyn, she's playing the two role, and her lead's done an outstanding job, so she'll be looking to be up. And she's achieved that. That's a great. That's very good. Yeah, good bowl. If you're not going to draw another shot, at least be up and and be behind the head. And that's exactly what she's done. And which is exactly the role of the two and a four. So well done to both Roger and Bronwyn with their first bowls on this end. Once again, oh, Nathan, the I've just got to, and, I've got to try and draw as close as I can here. And not a bad effort. Handy bowl. Still two down, but it's a handy roll. On the back end. Don't want to fit in the target. Don't want to fit in the target. Hasn't really, so that's... She was a bit lucky because yeah. she definitely needed to be higher than that, needed to have played a little bit wider. It's nowhere near as bad so as it could have been. No, no, but she's 
Still a little bit fortuitous there. Still going to try and use it on the forehand. Since it means if he can sneak past Bronwyn's bowl, there's a wide target there for him to sit on and off. Excuse me. Oh, he's oh and now he's blocked the hit. This is developing into a huge end for the Stevens combination. This could be the number, you know. It's a, one of their better opportunities at this stage. It's developing nicely for them at this stage, but there's still a lot of bowls to come. He doesn't want to shift the jack out into the open. Oh, that's oh, nice. Good <laughs> that's nice. Oh, lovely. Now I think you've got to see some aggression. <laughs> at least get rid of that short red bowl of, of Bromwell. Yeah, definitely got to be super quick at it now. Going to try and get that one as square as he can. He's got rid of two, one of them. Got rid of one of them. And the target's even narrower now. You know, Dave, if he can get that red square, all three will go and you'll have one to the stripy bowl that sits at 8 yep. o'clock. That'll be, that'll be pretty satisfying to watch. Either that or you'd have the kill if he... Yeah. If the, one of those blue bowls splashes onto the jack. Yeah, both of which you'd be very happy with. It's a great end being put together by the Stevens. Interesting. I want to... Interesting. He's on the forehand... Wonder where he's envisaging this bowl should land. Yeah, keeping it nice and far far away. As soon as you look at that as Team Stevens and think, well, it's a one bowl target. We've got two touches pretty much. We'll stay vaguely away from it and just be in a place where we can if the jet gets spilled, recover, etc. So we'll see full, a full boat of drive here onto that front bowl, the one at twelve o'clock to the jack. All three can go, could go. At least if he gets rid of that front red one, it opens it oh. up for him to be able to see. Oh, he's not. What he's intriguing way. Just a little niggly weight. Tell you what. If he gets it square, he could follow on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, I would have smacked it. But okay. he, gave it a, he gave it a great try for their shot. Well, what he's done there actually now is actually set it up brilliantly now for his second shot. Mm. He can really whack it now. It's a wider target. He's He's got rid of that red bowl is now right up in amongst it. I mean, if he hits the red bowl now, he's going to get a result. So it was very well played. And it was a, a good bowl setting himself up ready to let rip with this one. Wasn't as exciting as the shot that we were calling, though, was it, Dave? <laughs> yeah, it may have been the right shot to play, but it wasn't as exciting as seeing the bowls fly left, right and centre. But maybe that's what we're going to see now. That's what he'll be endeavouring to do with this one. Just want to let it go good. That's all you're thinking. Let it go nice and smooth. He's tight. Get that one square. Oh, he's got rid of one of them a bit luckily. He'll be disappointed with that. But... Uh... Still two to the Stevens couple and one bowl to come from Bronwyn. She can make this three. Another lead change coming up. Mm. Feels like the momentum has shifted just ever so slightly. Bronwyn will want this bonus bowl to count. Willing it back down into the head, but it's not going to be. So we'll see. Two to Team Stevens. And that makes the score 9 8 after 12 ends. Three ends to go. Nitty gritty time. It is. The other uh, the other game in this Division 1 semi final between Paddy Stewart and Kerry Bex are playing Carl Healy and Aaron Tees is currently. 9-6 uh, to Paddy and Kerry. So the Kiwi teams, and I'll touch wood, the Kiwi teams are in front of both semi-finals at the stage here at the Stu Butter Piers at Burnside Bowling Club. A 
as I mentioned in the first game this morning, this event now named after the great Stu Butter, forming New Zealand coach, one of nature's greatest gentlemen. Fabulous guy, brilliant bowler himself, won many national titles. And he'll be remembered forever and a day as a result of this event being named after him. He was a member here at Burnside. And uh, a great bloke and a fantastic coach. Yeah, certainly if you ever visit the Burnside Bowling Club and glance around the honours boards, the butter name is all over them. Of course, his son, Nick, Nick Butter, he's a very competent bowler himself. He he played in this event, always plays in this event. Obviously not successful in making the top division, but Nick is also a very, very capable player. Nick Cahill just, uh, just lost the plot a little bit over the last few ends. Just it's beginning to scatter the bowls a little. Rommet on the forehand. Played it pretty well. Yep, another counter, just a little bit short, but not horrendously short. So once again, Nathan Black with his two and the four mentality on board at the moment. He's skipped, uh, sorry, his leads struggled again on this end, so he has to try and draw as close as he can. On the back end. Good line. Ah, oh. yeah, they just it just feels like they've just loosened up a little bit, haven't it? The the Australian pairing of Nathan Black and Nick Cahill and the, the momentum absolutely with the Stevens husband and wife combination at the moment. Brom walks after this ball. As you said, a superb line with his first bowl, Nathan Black, but just didn't have the running as we see. This is uh, going to hang out a wee bit wide for Bromwin, and I, I would have would have liked to have seen Bromwin be up with that bowl. They've got nothing behind the head, so I would have liked to have seen her a couple of feet past the jack with that bowl, but it wasn't to be. And that's not a bad home. Interesting here. So Roger holding one. 11 o'clock to the jack. Again, backhand. I was going to say... Again, I've got no idea if he's on the back end of the forehand, but I can see the little dots on the inside. On the forehand. Trying to make contact onto the shot bowl and, and spit the, you know, that would have possibly gone onto the jack, would have spat the jack back. If he'd been tight, he could have got both of the shot bowls. So it was a pretty good option.
It's Bo just Spending running out. past. Running for cover right round the back with, with the Australians playing with that sort of speed. Rogers just looking to put some cover in around the back. Uh, he's high, wide and handsome again here. So Nick Cahill just struggling a little bit. Mm. Just the bowls Most have just the... loosened up. The confidence levels in the Stevens camp has gone up. Their body language is a lot better. Walking with a bit of a bounce in their step. They know they're right in this game. It's about making hay when the sun shines, isn't it? So if you're the team of Stevens, you don't question the trials and tribulations of your opposition. You just go, cool, you know, I'll take care. Uh, I'll take these chances that we that we have been given, and whilst we can score points, we will, and hopefully we have a little run that gets us to be a bit more comfortable than what we are. That bowl hasn't made anything worse, hasn't made much better. Sort of neither here nor there, I would say, as we see Nathan make his way back down to play his bowl. I'd be interested to see what speed he plays at. What what weight's he looking to play with here? He's got to be looking to to try and land the shot bowl or or get off the second shot onto the shot. So he's got to be playing with weight sort of through to Nick Cahill's feet here. But he's gone even quicker than that. It's sort of ditch weight that he's gone. So that's but but you've got to you've got to give your Bowl. When you're playing those shots, you've got to give your bowl a chance to bend. And and I think he just overplayed it weight wise. He, sure, he's got to be up. He has to, you know, he's got to be a couple of meters over. But that was a good six or seven meters of weight. If he can, as we see, Bronwyn on a pretty good line to add another one here. Or she's just going to fall short. Right. So huge. I mean, this feels like. I oh, know it's one the difference. This feels like a big moment of the game. You feel like if Nathan Black misses this, the momentum is all all with the Stevens combination, as it will just it'll be another bowl. The Australian pairing have just just missed. And look, it's going to be that's a bowl away, right? Yeah. Uh, now uh, that on that occasion, dare I say it, I think the wind. Might have just blown at the right time for the <laughs> Stevens combination there. Just looked like it was bending towards the shot bowl and then just held for a metre. And I think that might have been one of those infamous Burnside puffs of wind. So I think... So that, that was in benefit, of the, benefit for the Stevens combination. The penultimate end. And they open up a three-shot lead. On the second to last end here, so you have to score. The Australian team has to score. Will be their mindset. Roger Stevens again leading off. On the back end. Very good opener. Yeah, he's played well for the last two thirds of this match. So and three shots ahead with two ends to play. Score on this end is what the Stevens combination would be saying to themselves. Score on this end and we're just about home. Nick, interesting, he's opted to play the forehand with that bolt. Roger again, just looking to stack it up.
see that bowl. A very high line. Just, yeah, just loosened up the last few ends, the Australian pairs. At, at the same time as the Stevens, or Team Stevens has improved their level. Def definitely in that Cahill has, has just lost it a little bit over these last. He, uh, and the, it, it looks now like it's frustrating him, and that's mm. leading to more some more loose bowls from him so he is incredibly frustrated at the moment and that that breeze does sound like it's picked up a bit yeah I've... and obviously that's that's contributed to the challenges that these that the australians are facing over these last few ends yeah it feels like it's contributed and you, i mean you don't generally play better bowls when you're grumpy <laughs> and that generally is not conducive to the better bowls so Nathan on his forehand. I'll just try even if they they can score a one here, the Australian team will be happy. Yep. He's close Nathan here. To get down. He's very close. Good ball. That's a good ball. Very, very good ball. Staying on the forehand. Pulling it down. Oh, wrong half. And so slap the jack back here. Yeah, slice of hell there. For Brahman. So you play the same ball again then if you're Nathan Black and you'll be very close to, to where that ball has finished. Diving away. Diving away. That Maybe could the very well be that wind. I was just gonna say that one looked more like the wind had infected it. There was a like a gust of wind and it just sort of can kill your bowl dead sometimes. I wouldn't be surprised if we're just seeing the the gusts get up a little bit. Definitely sounds like it in the effects, Mike, that things have picked up a little bit out there wind wise. So Roger, he's one down. It's sticking out there very easy for him to see, and he knows that he's got two or three very good seconds. Might be too early to go really, really hunting it at this stage. It might be just... Oh, no, he is. He's decided to hunt it. On the backhand. Will it turn? Get it Will square. It turn for him? Oh, it's following it. Stole. Yes, he's got it. I don't understand got what I've just shot seen. Out of it. <laughs> Cannoned their bowl onto the shot bowl, which then stuck with the jack and rolled back about three feet. That's a, I mean, it's a great result. And look at all the bowls up front, Dave. It's blocking any any aggression from the Australian combination. I can't Goodness believe gracious. how much that bowl stayed in tandem with the with the jack and stayed with it right the way. Oh, yeah, just keep running right the way back past past the back bowl as well. Good bowl there from the Australian. Reply. Roger just asking for the gap between the bowl and the jack and Bromman telling him. We'll have a look at Roger's bowl at the completion of this end because uh, it has to be seen to be believed. A lot of <laughs> a lot of things happened at once. He was in the area, he played beautiful weight, but uh, it was a bowl wide and a lot of things happened at once there. Oh, he's not here with this one. He had a beautiful line. There is a chance for the Australians to be arriving down there on the forehand, can use the, the wing bowl, their own wing bowl, or if they're under that, get onto the shot bowl, might push it through the hole. The danger is pushing it onto the jack and turning it over a couple of times, and we've got that other blue bowl that we can see bottom right-hand corner of the screen. 
of Rogers that would come into the into play if he if he punched the shot bowl onto the jack. But if he can get the edge of it and put it through the hole, which there's room to do, if you can get that swing going, I think they. I mean, I think they do for a do for a result the Australian pair. So it wouldn't surprise me if they were able to execute something quite impressive on this end. Because this is uh, Nick Cahill. So Nathan Black still got his two bowls to play. Is this one? He's very close. Uh, very interesting. They do. They do a good result. That's a good shot. Well played. Outstanding bowl. Outstanding bowl from. Nick Cahill at a crucial time in the game. Great Lying ball. three shots now. The pressure's on Bronwyn Stevens to reply now. Oh, you just oh, you just felt like the game had been going along, plodding along, plodding along. Nick and Nathan played some looser bowls, missed a few opportunities, and you just felt like it was they were due they were due uh, nailing one of those shots. Dave, so not surprised to see that very good bowl. It's on a, the higher. Well, she's not narrow. Little feather off that one. <laughs> oh, beautiful way. She's got beautiful speed. Whip sideways, she says. Beautiful weight. So Nick Cahill been struggling over the past three, four, five ends and then pulls an absolute bomb out of the bag and plays that great shot to be holding three, Black going to the green, trying to draw another one to make it four and there's only one bowl left for Bronwyn Stevens to try and rescue the situation for the Northeast Valley pair. Yeah, it was a great shot. And there's... There's going to be a bonus situation here. It's where the Aussies get their tails up. And Bronwyn, they've seen her play some amazing bowls in this game, and she's going to need to pull out another one. If she draws this, it'll be a very challenging bowl to remove. So she has an opportunity here to play a really good shot. Her weight was good last time, so it's not much of a correction. You said earlier, David, it's about changing one thing. She'll just, she'll just think to herself, I'll just take a slightly less green. I know my weight's okay. Just don't be short is the other thing. <laughs> and we don't, say it, we don't say it like that. We don't say don't be short. We say positive draw. Be positive with the draw here. Oh, I'll just give much better line. Two claps. How's the weight? Very close. Oh, very she's close. Made a pretty good. Oh, what a bomb! Good what shot. a great bowl from Bronwyn Stevens. My yeah. word, we've seen it all on this end. Classy under pressure there. Well, now Nick's done it, and yep, now that's is it exactly what. Turn? Nathan's turn. He's got to play exactly the same shot that Nate, that uh, Nick Cahill played earlier on, which was an absolute screamer. He's got to play a very similar bowl. Looking to get the edge of the shot bowl out of the head for four. This could be a match deciding bowl we're watching right now. Chasing after it. Needs Turning it to hold early. on. It's gone. Oh, oh my goodness, is he two down? Might still, they're looking. Well, oh, just the one. There we go. Just, so. just one. For the difference on the final end. And that felt like the end, that if the Australians were going to come back, it would happen then. But there's still another end to go. And you can score eight points in an end of bowls of the walking pairs. So... Still a chance, but they're going to need to pull out something pretty special. Definitely see the trees swaying a bit more violently in the background there, so that breeze definitely has kicked up, which is unfortunate 
hopefully it's not too bad for the final, which is coming up after the semis, of course. But, um, oh, look at that. Here we go. We've got bits of paper all over the place now. <laughs> Those are your notes, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Can tell you quickly that the um, the other semi final, the score is fifteen nine to Patty Stewart and Kerry Becks as they enter their penultimate end. So the Kiwis going well here at Burnside. The other semi-finals actually just begun its last end, and the Australians scored on the penultimate one. So I'll just wait for Paddy to move, and I'll I can tell you what the score is. Looks like he's a statue; he's not moving at all. Good bowl, or a good reasonable first bowl there from Roger Stevens. It's not short. That's the big thing from Roger, and he got his line perfect. So he'll he'll be looking to make the adjustment. For the second bowl. So will Nick play a bomb with his fourth bowl of the previous end? You try and you you try and use that to just kick yourself into gear. I don't think they've updated the scoreboard in the background. It still says 11-8 on theirs, no. but we know it's 12-8 yeah. and that this is the final end. And the score on the other game, 11-15. So the Australian pairing uh, trailing four points. Carl Healy and Aaron Tees trailing. Paddy Stewart and Kerry Becks, 11-15. As they enter their final end, you can see them a little bit of that game going on to your right, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. So for the diff in both in both games. Yes, both, yeah. Both games, the Australians need a four to force an extra end. That sure was a very, very good bowl from Bronwyn Stevens that last end. Huge Under pressure. all sorts of pressure. Four down. And the opposition's got another bowl in their hand to possibly make it five. Beautiful weight with her first bowl. She made the perfect adjustment with her line on her second bowl with the same weight and drew the absoluta. It was a great bowl under pressure. Bowl. Yeah, good start. Passing through. Still half a chance for the Australian pair. Nathan would want this one to be effective too. And you just try and build the head up. Should let go from there. That's not going to run it out, I don't yep. think. Oh, could be in the count. Might be two. So for the Stevenses, Stevenses, for the Stevens team, it's just about not dropping your four, right? So you're happy to drop ones and twos around the place if you can just put bowls in really annoying places. Yeah, look, the mindset needs to be we, we're going to score on this end. Yeah. You get too defensive, sure, 
you've got to keep an eye on, make sure there's no pockets building up anywhere where they can For drag the numbers, jack to get yeah. a four. Or, But at the same time, you've got to stay positive and say, we're going to score on this end. If you get into that defensive negative frame of mind, that's when things can go haywire. We see a spell this finish past a bit, and that's what Bromman there is indicating. Look, you've got a two bowls past the head, or three by two and a half bowls past the head, a nice channel. So rest on any of the bowls reaching through the gate, and it's happy days. He's wide. No, he's quick again. So there is a little pocket of bowls wide here all. building up with the Australians. He, he was quick. He rushed that last bowl, actually, Roger. He was... Bronwyn had no, finish, no sooner finished telling him where about to be, and he was letting the bowl go. He was super quick. Oh, it's a poor bowl from Nick. The challenge is, if you look, look at the head for the Australians, their number wasn't really going to come from behind the head because the bowls were all sort of shy, so they would have been looking to try and draw seconds and thirds, isolate the blue bowl that sits at 3 o'clock, and then work from there. But Nick's put two bowls past the head. You're looking for a four. Uh, the challenge is developing, I would say. So just the skips to play their bowls to complete this match. Bronwyn will be looking to draw the shot. She'll be looking to get as close as she possibly can here. On the back end, getting out to Roger's bowl that's, that's uh, probably second shot at the moment. It's on a pretty good line here. Beautiful line. Here it comes, coming home nicely now. Oh, it didn't quite have the running. So decisions for the Australian pair. Where's our four coming from, they'll be asking. Do you try and draw two in, or do you change something now? Instinctively, looks like the forehand might be the option. I think that looking to see if, if they get to Jack to eat to the toe where there, then that could be four. But it's a I'm not sure how they get to the Jack. On the backhand, it looks like the Jack's protect, pro protected by their own yes, short it bowl. Does. So they are looking for a little bit of Jack movement. I think but he's going to try and get it on the forehand. So. It's almost like he needs to slice it rather than rather than get it in the belly. On the forehand side. The other option is... Oh, he's underneath the line, isn't he? Oh, I don't know whether he's even got the speed either, has he? Needs a massive oh, gust of wind. Gonna... I, a four is really hard to find now, Dave. And now it is. Now it's very difficult. I think Bronwyn just needs to play exactly the same ball as she just played, like, but just add another couple of feet of running. Yeah. Just to make sure, get it out on that wide line, let it drift home, put a couple of feet or a yard of speed on her last bowl. On the back end. As it sits, they'll be the first ones through to the final to be played a bit later on this afternoon. Right, here we go. All or nothing. Set they the blue out for still four. A chance, chance of a four. Yeah, they're setting the blue out. The blue that sits at three o'clock to the jack. Huge bowl to stay alive in defence of his title here. And look at that, it's just going to track out. Oh, he 
got the jack in the belly for one shot. Great try. Congratulations to, well, not to them, uh, to Brian Stevens and Roger Stevens. They're through to the final of the Stu Butter Burnside Pears. The other semi final you can see is still ongoing in the background. So, what we'll do, we'll put a, a um, what do you call it, a holding screen up. Uh, and we'll enter the two finalists. I'd say we're a little while away from restart. We're going to move them across to an, another rink. So 2.30, if you're watching, about half past two will be when we expect the final uh, to be. So you've got time to go for a walk or water the garden, take in the washing, etc., etc., or just sit and wait. <laughs> uh, but we'll see you then regardless. Um, and looking forward to the game. And as I said, just keep an eye. And uh, if you're a Kiwi watcher, Cross your fingers because we might get to see a final with two New Zealand teams in it. Uh, so until then, so long.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the Rawleys Stuart Butter Invitation Burnside Pairs for 2024. We've broadcast two games today and we find ourselves at the final stage where we're going to see Bronwyn Stevens and Roger Stevens take on Paddy Stewart and Kerry Becks. I'm joined today in country by Dave Edwards. Dave, we've seen two games today and we find ourselves in a final with two New Zealand teams. What do you think we can expect to see? Well, look, first and foremost, um, no disrespect to the Australians and congratulations on them for continuing to send an excellent contingent of players to this prestigious event. But first, it, it is good to see that the two Kiwis reign supreme in the semi-finals against the Australian teams. And uh, we wish them both all the best for the final. And this, look, this is a wide open final for sure. Uh, Kerry Becks is a very, very well established Canterbury player, played representative bowls for Canterbury off and on for a, a number of years. Uh, Paddy Stewart, perhaps not been around quite as long, but uh, definitely a, a comer on the bowl scene over the past few years as well. So. Uh, an excellent Canterbury combination up against an Otago married couple, a, a, a husband and wife of Bronwyn and Roger Stevens, who we saw in the semi final that we televised. So, uh, an intriguing game. Mm. And let's just pray that that wind stays away and we can see some good bowls. Fingers crossed as they make their way down. 15 ends, we're going to have walking pairs, as we've explained before. Goes in, in lots of two. You're essentially playing a force team with two players. And the strategy is very similar, unlike uh, 2 4 2, where everyone, how would you explain it? Take turn about. You play two, then four, then two, literally. So you you have different dynamics through this is lots of two. Australian Pairs game. Uh, yeah, it will, be inter it will be interesting, I think. In the first bowl of this final, Roger Stevens on the back end. Started off loose in the semi final that we broadcast, but finished playing very well. And that's, uh, he's continuing that form. That's a good first bowl, really, one to correct from. Yes, Roger, definitely the latter half of that match in the semi final that we watched, he. Definitely got the better of Nick Cahill from Australia in the Battle of the Leeds. He played some really, really good stuff over the concluding ends of that semi-final. Um, and the further it went, the more frustrated Nick Cahill got, and Roger just kept pl plonking them on. And it was, a, it was a good effort after a bit of a rusty start for him. Excellent opening bowl from Kerry Becks, right on the jack. We'll no doubt get the opportunity when we see a close-up of Kerry's delivery, we'll get to talk a little bit about very, very unusual delivery. And it's one that he's had his entire career though, and he does the same thing every time. Mm. And it's definitely not out of the coaching manual in any way, shape or form, but it just goes to show if you can develop your own way of doing things and stick to it, then it can work. And whilst we um, we wouldn't coach Kerry style, I acknowledge the fact that he's become a very, very good player with his delivery. Yes, and um, Kerry and Paddy were part of the winning New Zealand Fours team in 2016. So obviously play a lot of bowls together. See them playing together here um, in this Piers event. So this is Paddy Stewart here on his forehand. I'd call that like a, a, a static delivery, isn't, isn't it? You take a step and swing your arm. Yep, definitely. And then that we definitely don't coach and I remember Paddy attended Ray a couple Paul. of um, very very good polls so made two of it a couple of um, development coaching sessions that we had as Bowls New Zealand some regional squads and um, 
you know, he, he talked to me about it and he said, I just find it, I, I can't get my speed. And I said, how long have you persevered though? Have you, w- with taking a step as he delivers, step and deliver at the same time. And he assured me that he had given it a very, very good shot, a good good go at trying to achieve it, but but he couldn't. So in the end I said, well, fine, mate, you you go back to the to the fixed stance, which is what he's got. The only thing that would be interesting to have a chat to him and see whether he's ever played on a one of those on an incredibly screen. he would have come across some slower screens for New Zealand, which means it gets down to about fourteen. But I wonder whether he's ever struck an, an incredibly slow green and how he how much success he has with the fixed stance. Yeah, it's not it just doesn't work for that, does it? But a stance that we see a little bit in New Zealand, good fingertip bowling. You sort of you get a good feel for the weight because it's all through the arm. And one of our um, oh. national coaches, Dave, and you've been the the New Zealand national coach, um, John Murta, who was the one before, the one before, the one before you, I think. <laughs> um, he was a fixed stance. He used to take a step and swing his arm. Yep. And you look at Mike Kernahan, the oh. current national coach. He's he's uh, very much the same. So, And look at the success that all of those players have had over the years, you know, uh, Paddy hasn't played for New Zealand, but the other two we've talked about have both played for New Zealand with incredible success. So it's just about getting your own style, getting your own, and doing the same thing every time. And look, as I said, we don't coach that style of play, but it works for some people. And go for gold. So Roger, looking to have another drive here, I think. No. No. Last thing he wanted to do was drop that one short, though. Interesting. A couple down. It's intriguing if you look at that head. It's intriguing that he opted to drive on the back end. Yep. It's sort of, I don't know. The percentages didn't sit on the back end, I don't think. He says from his um, commentary booth, having not played a bowl <laughs> in the event, but it just looks easier to, to hit it on that forehand side, which is to the left as you see it. So two shots to the becks stewart combination at the moment. And the, probably the one thing that might be putting Brom and Stevens off playing too much weight to this head as they've got nothing at the back. All three of those back bowls are the opponent's bowls. Nope, she's going to have a crack. On the, On the forehand. forehand. Close. Oh. Got one of them thought those bowls were locked together and it was would almost be impossible to get one without getting the other one. On the back end, inside out. Good second shot. Played the end pretty well, the Stevens combination, even though they're going to drop a one or possibly a two here, or maybe even more if, if there's a trail to occur. But dropping a one is not a bad thing. And I think they reduced the count with that first drive of Bronwyn's. 
as we see Paddy, is he going to get the trail? Oh, he got oh. it on. He might have made three of it. He may have made three of this. Two. Two. But yeah, the, the Stephen, seemed... they didn't panic. Didn't panic. They played played the head pretty well, even though they ended up dropping a two. Interesting to see the lengths that these two teams play. Looks like uh, Stuart and Beggs are going for the dot-to-dot -dot length. Uh, it was interesting in the semi-final game, the Australians played very short ends, taking the mat up a long way and played the short ends. But not so the Canterbury duo. Yeah, it was interesting. And they pulled the mat up too as well, though the Australians they seemed to stop doing that as the sort of the last third of the game. Always a conversation to be had. It usually makes me... Um, oh, there used to be something called the Milford... Or there is an event called the Milford 5000 uh, played out of Auckland, Dave, that's for junior bowlers. It's a 1-5, to five, and I think you can have one 1-8 to eight player. And I can remember I played in it one year. And you look across at the start of the end, and everyone has their mat on the 2-metre mark. <laughs> it's, and it's all just this very sort of uniform, that's where it starts sort of situation. But when you get to this level and players who've, who are a bit more experienced, you often see a much more varied approach uh, to, where, to where the mat is placed, and you find that it changes during the game as well. Absolutely. It's a, it's a huge tactic variation of, of lengths, mat placement. It is a very important part of the tactics in a match. And um, funny enough, the, the recent national championships and the 16th title for Gary Lawson in the pairs playing with Tony Grantham, they have won very very regular and game plan that they stick to pretty rigidly and that is Matt on the two meter Jack on the two meter they play the maximum length yep fairly often and or almost all the time and the reason for that is there's a lot of players believe it or not who do struggle with those that length of end even at even at the higher level and you would have noticed in the in the final the Kelleher's young Kelleher, Kelleher brothers who were in the final against Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham they didn't really handle those dot to dot length ends and it was only when they managed to win one of those ends and got the mat and shortened it up and immediately their bowls improved they, the shorter lengths they played a heap better than what they did over the full length ends and so it's a tactic that I know Gary's used quite successfully over a heap of years to play yeah. the extreme length. You just expect yourself to be better than, than the people that you're playing in, in that situation. And on the two metre to two metre, your bowl is running a longer track, of course, so it does a bit more and you get punished more on the two metre to two metre length than you would on the shorter ones because if you miss your line, it's got more time to not do what it's supposed to do. That does make sense. Short bowls here, Dave. Yep. The other thing I always encourage people that I coach, when it comes to practice, if you're going for a practice, always practice the extremes. So practice this length and have a real good session at it. And maybe even have some, see yourself some, challenges of drawing count how many play dot to dot and play 20 bowls on the forehand and 20 bowls on the backhand and see how many you you got effective so count up exactly how many out of the 20 you got effective and by effective i mean within a mat length of the she's going to be through the jack here yeah she's got it pretty square across that's a very good result good result she was up when you're up you always got a chance. Yeah, so practice practice those and, and record them. And then next time you go down, see if you can beat your last score. And then maybe the third time you go down, 
play the minimum length and do the same thing. And by practicing maximum and minimums, the intermediate lengths tend to come a bit more naturally. So when you do get a three quarter length in, you'll find generally that you can latch onto it by the fact that you've practiced the extremes. There's that very unusual delivery that we talk about for Kerry Becks, but yeah. incredibly effective. We'll have a conversation about it and what it means for the for the arc of his bowl, because it does change when his bowl turns, because if you sort of draw a picture in your mind, where you let your bowl go, the point at which you let it go, it's then going to arc out, and then it comes back. So Kerry uh, lets the bowl go in a different place to 99% of, of bowlers, and it changes just the way his bowl arcs. So we will watch that. Here he is. So at this point, you're thinking it's okay, right? <laughs> Everything looks yep. normal. Yep, talk it's talk a, us it's through it, Dave. First and form, yeah, look, the first thing that I notice about Kerry, and I have done, like, I've known Kerry for years and years, as he punches another one of uh, the opposition's bowls up. So he could be two or three down there now. He's definitely two down, possibly three. But the first thing he does is squat. He squats down, very little weight going forward, very little weight on his front foot. It's all on his back foot. And then it's his arm swing. So he relies very much on the arm swing, and it's very much way out wide from his body. So what you're saying is dead right uh, in that he is taking as a lucky slide there, helps Roger get another bowl in. He's he's His bowl is travelling in a completely different line to what a normal person's delivery does because a normal person you deliver off the front of your foot straight out whereas his is coming from a lot wider way out wide on the rink and uh, so naturally different arc to the head traveling down a different part of the green so it's uh, it is an incredibly unusual but the arm way away from the body like he has it is not I've seen it before, and I've seen it on one of the best players that the world has, well, not world has ever seen, but a player who's won world titles, Jeremy Henry. Yes. The Irishman. Yeah. Very similar. Has the arm way out wide from his body. So very, very unusual, peculiar delivery, as we see a very good bowl here from Paddy Got Stewart. the right line. He got the running. Oh, not going to be. Just ran out of gas. Saying just drawing here, please. So <clears throat> yes, I think we've we've seen the Stevens husband and wife duo holding three shots at the moment. Should be trying to find a gap in some. No, oh, not got the legs. Not got the legs to get there. Be disappointed with that bolt and a, a chance for Paddy to make a correction. On the back end, with a bit of weight here. Oh, he got bogged. It's going to be a number. It is going to be a number to the Stevens team, and let's see if Brian can add to it. It looks like it's three at the moment. Three and a look, definitely three. Come from the left of your screen. Has it got the legs? No, it hasn't. Three it is. Interesting. That was the length that Kerry Beck's threw, and they dropped a three. Mm. What will Roger Stevens do now? Well, there's the question, because people... Yeah, it's a great question, right? There's often the logic is, like, oh, well, my opposition just threw it to the two-metre mark, so I won't throw it there. But you've just identified that they scored, they scored a pretty comfy... Th it looked good all the way. There'd be a strong argument to throw it back to the two-metre mark, I would say, but that's not what we're going to see. And my next question, the next time Bex and Stewart win the, win the end, 
where are they going to throw it? But, um, yep. <laughs> That's also a good question. <laughs> uh, Roger on his back end, and we're going to get another chance. Um, we're going to get another chance to see Kerry Bex and his delivery here, and I'll try and, without getting the the chalkboard out and sounding too technical, I'll try and explain what the release point means for the bowl. So Kerry's on his forehand there, and he's let it go to the left of the screen as we see it. So what that should mean in theory is that the bowl breaks a little bit later and a little bit more. So once this bowl starts turning on its forehand, it will continue to go more than you might see with a normal bowler. It can be handy if you're looking to get around bowls. He probably gets around bowls easier than other people, or if it's a straight hand, it might fight against a straight hand a bit easier uh, than your conventional delivery. And the backhand side's a bit harder to explain because he takes it from underneath the line, so the breaking point's different again but just sort of like underneath it. <laughs> it's, it's, it takes different lines as the point. Hugely different lines to, to a normal delivery, but uh, it's one of those things as a coach, like obviously you wouldn't, you wouldn't try at all to change Kerry's delivery now at all. He's been playing, I don't know, probably 30 years. And mm. uh, But one thing I get asked a lot as a coach is that a player or another coach comes to me and says, can you come and have a look at so-and-so? There's something not quite right with their delivery. And I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but can you come and have a look? And I'll go and have a look. And I'll and and I'll spot something that that might not be technically a hundred percent right. And so I'll, the first thing I do is say to the the coach that's invited me along, is is there is something there? But how's the player been going? How they've been going? Like oh, playing real good. Yeah, no no problems. Yeah, won such and such last week, and they won so and so the week before that, and they're going real good. But there's something wrong with their delivery. And I said, look, if this if if they're going well, don't go there. Mm. There's no need to change it. There might be a minor technical flaw with someone's delivery, but if they're playing well, it's not affecting their performance. Leave it. Why would you want to change it? So, a very very valid point. And so he said, "I'll oh, just tell me for future reference." I said, "No, I'm not going to." <laughs> <laughs> Refused to tell him what the little thing was that I did notice about the delivery because it wasn't affecting the players. Relevant, yeah, fair enough. Performance. Paddy on the forehand. Just about did a Joe Edwards look then when he when he sort of walked he sort of looked down at his feet upon release but didn't do the sniff so it can't be uh, it's not quite the same Dave. <laughs> Lovely bowl. Got the shot though. Very very good bowl. Lovely bowl. Be feeling about this end, Kerry and Paddy. Roger just setting himself on the forehand, one down on the head. One down on the head and probably got a couple of seconds. The head's not too bad for them again, even though they are one down. That could be a nuisance bowl for Kerry Bex. Let's see if he can draw, avoid that bowl, either under it or around it, and get another one on the head. Well, it down, under it. and this is when it should break and continue to turn. Oh, good bowl. Very, very good bowl. Excellent bowl. Two shots they're holding now. So, Roger, not, not, no panic from the Stevens team. He's a bit too quick with that one for sure, but just looking to draw between those two short bowls, the blue one and the black one, and make some contact in amongst the head there, but 
for his part, Kerry Bex will be trying to draw another one. He's going to go round that bowl this time. And he went this round it because line. he was a bit quicker. If we look at the head, we can see Rogers' bowl sitting at fresh to the jack, and then there's that silver fern bowl that sits at 8 o'clock, which is also a Stevens bowl, and then Kerry and Paddy right up the middle. They're looking at, they're trying to find a strike here. They could get unlucky, they could lock that bowl in. The bowl at 12 o'clock of Kerry Vex might just lock into the split and not continue to move if you don't hit it hard enough. Be interesting to see what happens here. I don't think, uh, I don't think Bromwood's going to be short. Don't mind the shot option. It's um, got a couple of thirds. Every chance. Are they all going or not? Oh, one of them went. A couple. So they hold on to second shot, but it's a lonely looking second shot, isn't it? Well, no, 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 I think they got two seconds. That bowl. Oh, the blue bowl. Okay, that's yeah. Yep. That's not. Yep. That's not. That's nowhere near as exciting as what I was suggesting, Dave. Uh, but <laughs> much more based in reality. No, two seconds, so they'll just be looking to draw another one close here from Paddy. He's on a pretty good line. Comes round that blue bowl. Has he got the running to come all the way back? Oh, yes, he has. Very Lovely good bowl. bowl. Bronwyn will be playing a similar shot. Jack right back. She's got the back bowl there. You can see there her blue blue bowl right at the back. In fact, she's got the three backer spots. Yeah. Bowls. Makes contact with the jack here. It's uh, Oh, good it's going to hold. Her. Yep. It is too oh, unlucky. dear. That would unlucky. She was wide. It would have looked so easy. That's one of those ones where it's almost too simple, isn't it, Dave? You just think, well, I've just straight up the middle and it's happy days. You push it. Just a few inches wide, and it didn't turn. It's a seesawing game so far on this th the third end. Yep, we're going to have uh, a change, change of lead early in the game again. He's pretty good, pretty well down again. He's just got to be on the inside of that. Oh, bowl. good yes, shot! Very good shot. Three, Three there. Classy stuff. Eight points scored. This game's rollicking along. Okay, now we're going to see what length the Beeks and Stewart uh, combination are going to play. Remembering they threw it to the two metre mark last time they had this opportunity. And dropped a three. Yes. Watch the jet come into shot. Here it is. Uh, so they shied, shied away from it. Understandably so. Yeah, I was just going to say, probably probably a good decision. Here we get the Kiribik's delivery again. Then it go to his right. And that's on his backhand, so he takes it underneath the line. And it's a much harder to explain what that does to the track of the bowl, so I won't tell you. But the, the forehand has a late swing. The backhand, it does a thing, but I can't. I just, I need a whiteboard. Stein in the rough a little bit there. Loose start to this end, definitely from the two leads. Can hear that wind again, perhaps that's just sprung up a little bit and causing some challenges for the players. 
see the trousers and mm. things definitely getting buffeted about by the wind again. On the crossover, as you say, not much to beat here. I suppose Roger is holding the shot. here from Patty. That'll be the shot. Very good ball. So we can see that the players are playing these two players are playing the wind assisted side of the green. So the wind will bring the ball back. You can see it turning back now with the assistance from the wind. Both of them have nailed their line beautifully. will be thinking if I just play the same bowl as my last I'm going to be very close again and he is he's stalking he's after this one good line he's just going oh. a little bit just going a little bit wonder what bowls Petty is using they look like a an older model so they'll turn a bit see if we can figure it out before the end of the match of course the black bowls now are almost uh they're the ones that stand out on the greens nowadays, Dave. That's how unusual they are. Ronwin just overcooked the green that time. So, pretty scattered head. Does say to me that that wind is back with a bit of a vengeance. Yeah, certainly getting a bit gusty out there now. We did the uh, final section play game this morning first thing, and that was the game that was most affected by the wind. It was, especially during the middle stages, did die, die down a little bit towards the end of the match, but in the early to middle stages of that game, it was quite horrendous, and the bowls were hugely affected by the wind. Yeah, it's no fun. Roger here on his back end. Now, looking through the previous winners, Dave, and unless I've mis um, miscounted, I, I'm pretty sure that a woman has never been part of a team that has won the Stuart Butter Memorial Pairs yet. So potentially history in the making. And ABT Evo's on a side note for the uh, the bowls that Patty is using. You can see that bowl there was definitely assisted by the wind. <laughs> it was held out very much as uh, now. Has Roger got the shot with his first bowl? With that bowl that he delivered, it might be the shot. I think so. Yep, looks like it. This bowl here could wait just wide as they cross over. Yeah, the great debate that we talked about earlier on, which side of the green to play on when there's a crosswind. And uh, definitely if you if you can latch on to the narrow side, if it's a consistent wind, if it's gusting, then I don't recommend the narrow side. If it's gusting, play the side of the green where the wind is going to bring the bowl back into the head for you. Whereas if you, if it's gusting and you're playing this hand, like this bowl here is being held out by the wind. Held yeah. out, held out, held out. It is absolutely getting a bit gusty here again. But the side that Bronwyn is playing now, the wind is bringing the bowl back into the head. Roger likes this one. It's just a wee bit heavy. Q 
Kiwi having a good look at this. What did he just say? Hit it, at did the he? bowl. Take the bowl out, yeah. And when it's blustery like this, that might be the best option. Let's go straight at it. Fair enough. He's going to go it now. Let's see if he takes a step. If he's hitting it, I wonder if Paddy changes his delivery here. Yeah. Yep, he does. And that's quite common for the people that with the fixed stance. They will actually do a normal delivery with their drive. Mike Kernan's another one. Got the fixed stance with uh, on the draw, but always takes the step on the drive. Can Bronwyn add the bonus shot here? Not far away. Seesawing game continues. Oh, I think she has. Yep. Two shots to the Stevens combination. Brings us all level. Five apiece. Exciting times. Four of the 15 ends. Now the mat's been, the mat's been pulled back. Roger delivering the jack. Where to is the question. The way Bronwyn's marching up the green, it's definitely going to be <laughs> a shorter length end. Yeah, we can see there's Bronwyn making a, a dive for a cap on her head before it blew away, so the wind, wind is definitely back. So just swirling around. A bit of slack. You can see that it's holding this bowl out. Holding it out. Kiri on the forehand. Reasonable effort here. That's a very yeah, good first bowl. Hand. Here it is, coming back into the head. Yeah, very nice first bowl. Speed, pretty good. Will be the shot. Kiri steering after this one. We'll have a late finish on it. Might not be enough of a late finish. Still trying. It's going to finish Sorry. wide. <laughs> on the wind assisted hand just hasn't quite got the running I don't think she had a good line yes it's always a, a huge debate uh, you know when play the wind assisted hand or the tight hand and I think each day each different type of wind has to be taken on its merits but mm. In general, I prefer the wind assisted hand. Back in. Away from it's a nice shot. Patty. Might have overcooked the the green with this one, the same as what Kerry Bex did with his second bowl. So Paddy on his forehand again. ABT. It's 
So they'll be a, the, probably the most tuning bowl out there. Cleared the first one. Persevering with the uh, tight hand. He's one down to the bowl that he's just about to go past. Oh, theory of it, really. ran on a meter or so so we'd say that it's one to Paddy Stewart at the moment Roger on the sand this hand with the winds blowing from the left to right to right member so it should be easy to be wide and he's played that really well set in very nicely should be the shot and that's what Paddy's indicating So yeah. a good shot option here for Kerry Beeks. He can turn turn Paddy's bowl in or just slip past it and sit the shot bowl of Roger Stevens out. Playing with that arriving speed, it's going to be a bit tight. Just missed the jack as well and run away. Yeah, lovely speed. You look where his bowl finished. If he had been a bit wider, he would have set up and over on Paddy or through Roger's bowl. So he gave it a chance, but just underneath the line in the end. So the busy period of bowls in the Canterbury area is drawing to a close after the completion of this game and then the attention switches to Taranaki and the Taranaki Fours are not far away from starting I believe. Yes they're very That's very shortly uh, beginning tomorrow <laughs> I think of the tomorrow. Taranaki Fours there the 15th of January through to the 21st then the Women's Fours from the 23rd of January to the 28th. And then we have the Trans-Tasman, which I'm really looking forward to on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of February at Nine Eye Bowling Club if you're in the Wellington region or even if you're not and you're thinking, well, what can I do on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of February? Uh, please feel free to come along and support New Zealand at Nine Eye Bowling Club. It's been years since we've had a Trans-Tasman on this side of the ditch and we would dearly love support and I'm excited about and New Zealand team's uh, chances. And we saw Paddy there move the jack quite nicely while I was busy rambling about whatever was on. Yes, he, very good bowl. Reached the shot bowl of Bronwyn Stevens and turned it over and flicked the jack back for the shot. But there is an, now a shot there for Bronwyn to play. You can see where Roger's standing. Well, that's the speed he wants. So he wants her to arrive to the blue, the blue bowl that's locked up against the shot bowl and try and pop that bowl off the head and stay there for two or three, probably. It's interesting to see if it snicks the jack or not on the way past. We'll know in a second. Only issue. Is it going to get the jack She's on the way close. past? No, oh, beautiful. No, great shot. Superb shot. Made four or five of it here, I think. That's a really nicely played bowl. Played it on the difficult hand too. And Paddy's it, coming to have a look at that. Play it on. That's yep. a fair call here. Yep, not a silly idea. But come down, just don't rush into things. Come down so, and have a good look at how things are lying. They will have had a look and seen that it was just a nice clean plant out of the head. She'll be sitting there for five, I think, Dave. Yeah. It was a 
well executed bolt, nice speed. Just got a little slip off the front bolt to straighten it up onto the target bowl, but the speed was just perfect to pop the shot bowl off the head. And she's hung around as well, and as you say, it looks very much like it's four and a look anyhow. Good view there so of the of the head from window cam, <laughs> which is what we've imaginatively named the camera that's in the window. <laughs> Up by the Very up good. by the commentary booth. Interesting. There's um, yeah, interesting discussion here. What are the shot options now for Patty? That like, there's a bit of room to draw it, but in these conditions, so yeah. What are the options for me? I think he's got to play with arriving weight to those two short bowls of. If he can play with arriving speed. To the two short bowls of that are in the count, or if he just gets around them and lands the back bowl, he's going to be reducing the count. I don't think he can go looking for the absolute shot here unless needs it to hold longer than that. It. Yeah, he just yeah. I think he might have tried to dead draw it, and he's punched the other one up to make certain of it being five. I'm pretty sure that was five shots. It's a really telling end of so, this game. Courtesy of a brilliant bowl from Bronwyn Stevens. For, for to sit with a four and Patty a bowl narrow, chunted it up, dropped a five. We think so. A huge end, really. Ten five the score now, as we enter the sixth end of this of this match, and the Stevens team will be on a high at the moment and looking to capitalise. Very, very well played bowl from Bronwyn. Um, got the, got the, res the rewards that the delivery deserved, and this one's gone a little bit further than what they've been playing. So now, important end for both teams here. The Stevens combination will be wanting to keep the momentum going. That's a good opener from Roger. And Paddy and Kerry will be wanting to bounce back straight away and score. Even if it's only a one, just score. Stop the, the Stevens momentum. Yeah, it's sort of, it ends like this uh, where it comes down to whether you seal in that feeling, right? Because if you've, we've just seen a number happen with the Stevens, if they score a one here, it's like a sealed in five and a break in the game where they've gone, look, we scored a big number, we continue to score, you're going to have to work hard to come back from that, Paddy and Kerry. Whereas in these situations when the team that's dropped the number, like Paddy and Kerry, if they can score a one, as you say, Dave, just doesn't feel as, as calamitous. You just don't feel like the game has has run away from you at all because you think, oh, we've dropped a five, but we scored a one or two, so we're well within Kerry. You, you drop two ends in a row, you start thinking, mm, maybe this game isn't going as well as we would like it to. Kerry swapping over to the wind assisted hand and forgot to feed that information into the computer. Mm. Beautiful speed, but nowhere near enough grass. I was also interested and, and not surprised to see that Bronwyn was skipping the these two. That Bronwyn was skipping the uh, Stevens combination. Mm. It's um, it it is Rogers Forte definitely is leading. He he likes to lead, and I think Bronwyn's control of the of the shot play is also pretty jolly good. As we see another very good bowl here, it's just going to run away with that wind. Look at it, the wind just really making it go sideways at the end. But, yeah, I think um, Bronwyn's probably got more confidence on when it comes to the shot play than perhaps than what Roger has. Yeah, it must be an interesting decision to have to make. Sort of harder, and uh, two four twos are always a challenging one as to sort of which play you want to play where because the roles are different. 2-4-2... 
you'd think at a glance it'd be the same game because you have 16 bowls on a head when it's all over a down and dusted. But the strategies are quite different because you get your four bowls in a row, whereas this really does feel like you're watching a very good game of fours uh, because it's in lots of two. The bowls are in lots of two. Um, so you get your positional play. But uh, like I mentioned before, I just had another look. So that the event started in 2006, and we haven't had a woman win it yet. So Roman Stevens on the cusp of a bit of history, if, if they're able to continue this form. The name will, will go down. It's actually around the um, the trophy. It's a wonderful trophy, Dave. You will have seen it. It's a framed shirt, isn't it, uh, from yep. the 2000 and something. 2004, a big event in 2004 maybe, or five. A framed shirt, and they engrave the names of the winners and plaques that go around it, which I think is pretty awesome. Another plane overhead. I think, yeah, I think the um, the event's been going longer than that, but it's been only been known as the Stu Butter Memorial Pier since 2006, and that's when, um, yes, that trophy was first presented yes. in... So, but prior to that, it was just the Burnside Pears, and but um, it has been around for a number of years, a lot longer than 2006. But yeah, it became known as the Stew Butter Pears back in 2006. Oh, just underneath the line. On a um, a quick side note, uh, Dave, and it's. Oh, it's vaguely to do with it. The Nationals this year, we finally changed the, um, we updated the trophies, which were first updated in 2000. And I was quite surprised when we looked at the trophies that we had as we see this bowl. Oh, it just keeps turning. Looked at the singles and pairs trophies, and they only went back to 2000, the New Zealand singles and pairs, national um, singles and pairs trophies. The engraving went back to 2000 on them, which must have been when we bought the, the cup, so it was quite pleasing this year uh, to be able to to go to the engraver and say I've got 130 years worth of <laughs> worth of names to chuck on the back of the shield, please, and uh, the champions' names have been chucked back uh, or oh, engraved back on the trophy, so that if anyone is inclined to have a look uh, on the back of the shields during the event, they will see it going back to I think 1886 for the men and the early 60s for the women. That's fantastic, it is, and they're awesome looking uh, new trophies as well. Very so they're very solid. Very solid. You wouldn't want to drop one on the green. <laughs> Having been presented, it would leave uh, quite a dent, but they do look, um, I think they're befitting the, the, their status. So the Stevens combination holding the shot the moment the blue bowl of Roger Stevens would be the shot so they'll be hoping they can hang on to that and can, and really lock in that five that they picked up on the previous end as we see a little bit overcooked this time from Bronwyn Paddy is taking his time on the back end. Not going to be too far away here. Back it comes now. Here it Look comes. Look at this. Will that win this distance? Oh, he might be. Who knows? It's close. Agonisingly, potentially agonisingly short there. Roger may think that they're still holding shot because he's talking about getting Bronwyn to change a hand. And that would be the reason, because he'd be they frightened. Got, yeah. Frightened that she's going to roll Paddy's bowl in for shot, so they must still be holding. On the forehand side, not quite the weight. So if Paddy's got second shot here, do you continue to draw on the back end, or do you just go, oh, is it worthwhile going through that gate? That's what Kerry's looking at. That's is it easier Kerry's in these conditions? 
Yeah, that's what Kerry's looking at. Maybe it's better to go hunting the shot bowl. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to miss by a large margin to get unlucky and chip your own bowl off. Maybe it's worthwhile just going around that shot bowl that you see from the player's point of view, chipping off the shot bowl for one. No, I'd be surprised if he missed by a metre an hour. And, you know, it's sort of, you'd have to play a poor bowl to get unlucky. Therefore, you back yourself to play the bowl. Yep. That's what he's going to attempt. He's going shot hunting here. He's looking for the shot bowl. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? The wind is like, oh, you're ready to play your bowl. So we'll just <laughs> we'll swirl around a little bit. On the forehand. Not full-blooded drive. He took a step first. It's holding off that one. Oh! Oh! Ho, 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 ho. We've oh, lost Paddy. Made a number out of it. We'll get a replay. He's got rid of. He's got rid of both of the shot bowls. That are both of the bowls on the head from the Stevens. So this is yeah, very fortuitous there, I'm afraid to say. Very fortuitous. That would rip your ration book, wouldn't it? Well, they could get their five back here. <laughs> That's three. So the Stevens combination had two bowls on the head, the shot bowl and another one, and he got rid of both of them. I think it might have been a three, was it? I have to wait until we yeah, get wait until, Now watch, watch this, watch this. So he's off the wide bowl. One, two, three. Wow. Can you imagine the sinking feeling in your stomach if you're Roger Stevens watching that and you go, oh, he's wide, this is fine. And he gets the first wick and you think, oh, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Removes one of your two shot bowls and then your actual shot bowl and suddenly you drop it. A three out of nowhere, that's staggering stuff. That would definitely rip your ration book. That would. It was. Um, and so this goes back to now. We've got the Stewart combination. It will be Cocker Hooper after that. They know they got a bit of luck, but they'll be thinking we're back in this now. After Ooh. dropping the five, we're we're back. And so that's a classy start. Yeah, I like that. It is immediately. Kerry. Abs a little bit rubs a little bit of salt into the wound for the Stevens combination by drawing a cracker with his first bowl. That's one that Roger would want back. A fascinating game, the ebbs and flows we saw. I mean, yeah, just, uh, there's no other way to describe it. It was a lucky bowl from, from Paddy. Well, they've go, well, we'll take our three, and now we've seen Kerry nut one on the jack. He's about to put another one very close, so they're taking their chance, and Roger's fallen shy with his bowl. So you've blinked 40 seconds ago, a minute ago. Um, we were thinking, oh, Roger and Bromwood will be 11-5 up, you know, as per sort of whatever. It'll just chug along, and they'll probably be okay. Now we're 10-8. And Kerry's got two bowls within a foot of the jack. It's crazy how fast the games can change. And look at this. Good bowl. Yeah, good bowl from Roger. Changed his hand there. And uh, got the line pretty good almost immediately to get second shot out of it. Yes, you're right, it can ebbs and flows the momentum swings that can occur in the within a game quite amazing on the forehand have you been playing much bowls yourself Dave dabbling a little bit dabbling How's it how's it yep. gone this season for you? Um, mixed bag <laughs> would be a fair way of saying it. I know the feeling. I 
for this bowl. It's a lovely track. Funny being a coach and using all the tools that you assist players with on with yourself and the biggest one is the mental skills side. I think for me, it was like the, the fun part I've been having is working on my mental skills side and the frustration levels and 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 it's been quite interesting, quite comical. I've had a few conversations with Joe about it, just um, how to handle. Those frustrating days when you are struggling, and yeah, and I've been dipping into my toolbox of <laughs> tricks to, <laughs> with some success, I must say. It's oh, been good. good, yeah, good. It's an endlessly um, challenging game that we play. Look at this little wick. Oh, another bowl on the head. The only thing that the Stevens combination will be a bit concerned about at the moment. They've got nothing behind. Got Rogers bowl way, way short, and then all three of their other bowls are also short of the jack. Nothing behind the head. So make their way down. So you can see that's the two, two bowls of the Stuart and Biggest combination at the back of the head. Kerry on the forehand. Got a very colourful bucket hat on as well. I'm quite impressed with the bucket hat from Kerry Bex. Easy to spot. Played this pretty well too. This it's a lovely good. shot. Really nice ball. Roger straight into his work. He so was Roger down. Roger from mine. Should be playing to, to beat that last ball in or even get past it in that area there somewhere and he's gone way past all of them which is not a bad bowl either at least it's something well he hasn't gone completely past them but something behind the head probably on the wrong side of the head when you look at the angles that the uh, shot bowl is to the jack at the moment he's lost this bowl Okay, important bowl here for Roger. He needs to get another one on the head. I would, if mm -hmm. I was, well, Bronwyn's getting him to play a, try and play a little shot now. I don't know whether that's... Feels a bit early. Well, yeah, I'd be rather getting, I'd rather be getting another bowl on the head, I think, before I attempted any... Oh, he's not playing a shot. She's getting him to draw around the side, which is not a silly idea, but probably gone a bit deep, but too far for what she wanted. But it's on the good side of the head when you look at the angles of the shot bowlers in relation to the jacket. I think she's put the bowl on the right side of the head, definitely. So if the, if the shot bowl gets shunted onto the jack. It's definitely going out to the right-hand side of the ring, yeah. which is where she got Roger to put her last bowls. Sort uh, of the four, four o'clock direction, isn't it? Be interesting, yep. be interesting to have a good look at that from the player's point of view, as they'll figure out which bowl they'd like to, to play through. It looks at this angle like there's half a chance. That front green bowl that sits at 12 o'clock, if you go through that, you could get the, the green bowl that's the shot out clean with no jack movement at all. You could go wide and push the shot bowl onto the jack and pop it in the direction that you were talking about. Be interesting to see what uh, Roman and Roger up to play. Paddy Stewart, anyway, is on his forehand. Remember, Roger's bowls is probably the bottom right corner of your screen, I would say. Now, well, here's the decision. Are oh, they opting just to to draw? I think yeah. here, Dave. Yeah, I think. Can't be look, quite I, on. I wouldn't be too worried about dropping a one here if I mm. was the Stevens combination. I just, I just think that the head's not set up nicely for them. And playing any sort of attacking shot leaves you open to perhaps dropping more than just the one. So, yeah, I'd be playing with caution here. Yeah, it could be dangerous, right? Because if, say, Brom, Bromwin attacked it and chipped one of her bowls off or one of their bowls off with her bowl, uh, Paddy now has an opportunity to chip your other bowl off 
and then you're six down, <laughs> and you've got a bowl yep. to try and salvage. So, yeah, I think they're just looking to, to go, well, if we drop one, it's not the end of the world. Close here. Very close. Clears that front. Oh, he's just underneath it. Even very good attempt. Very good attempt. Now, to my way of thinking, I'd be just trying to draw this. I think one down is not too bad here. Things could go horribly wrong if you tried to play any sort of weight to this head. That would be my expectation. So Bronwyn, yeah, just be drawing on her forehand side. Giving herself a reasonable chance here. It could start breaking. If it starts breaking, this is very close. This is very close. What an effort. That was a, a mighty attempt. effort, wasn't it? Awesome attempt and a wise decision, as I said, to try and draw that shot. And he dropped the one. Keep their noses in front, but it's Paddy Stewart and Kerry Becks making a comeback here after dropping that five. They've scored on the next two ends, which basically negates the five. Kerry's brought the mat way up this time. We may even see an umpire called here. You can see Kerry stepping out from the mat to the tee. Remembering if the jack is not thrown correctly for this event, the opposition can place the jack in the mat wherever they want it. It's not re-delivered. So even more important than normal, we see the two umpires prepare. David there who's at this end, has had a bit to do with uh, uh, the Hanmer Springs Bowling Club, Dave, which has recently been revitalised um, as part of the golf club facility. I think he has a, a house at Hanmer Springs and has assisted them uh, with getting their club up and running. But wonderful to see uh, a, a club join Bowls New Zealand, as we have seen with both Hanmer Springs and Tuakau Bowling Club have both affiliated to Bowls New Zealand in the last year. And really nice to have two new clubs Absolutely, that's fantastic news. It's been over a number of years, there's been clubs having forced to close, but that seems to have slowed down a lot now, and, and there's a bit of a resurgence in the sport, definitely. Yeah, it's slowed right down. Um, it's down to a trickle now. Uh, I know there was, a, there was a time, probably from, I don't know, 2005 through to 2015, or maybe 10 through to 15, where... It was quite an alarming um, drop-off in club numbers, but it slowed down to a trickle. It's one or two a year, and as I said, to have two account Hamner revitalise themselves and and join Bowls New Zealand again was quite gratifying and optimistic signs for the future, I think. Absolutely. Good news. Now, interestingly, that jack wasn't up, so that meant the Stevens had the right to place the Matt and the Jack where they wanted and they've gone dot to dot hmm. so we remember earlier on that was the Kerry Becks and, and uh, Paddy Stewart tactic and they it, it backfired on them and they dropped a three but now looking a bit better Stephen's comment, uh, uh, they've tried to uh, they've given it a go this dot to dot length much better bowl that one from Kerry it's a very good bowl Bronwyn's interested in this one. And so she should be, I think. And so she should be. That's she a lovely bowl. Pull up short. So on the crossover. Looking like it's one to Kerry Bex, whose bowl sits at just past six o'clock to the jack. It's the players crossover. 
An intriguing final so far. 9-10. It has been, been nip and tuck. The five we thought, well, maybe that's you know the break that that uh, the Stevens would perhaps run, well not run away with it, but perhaps just um, get some momentum out of that five. But fortuitously, <laughs> they, uh, for the Bex combination, Bex and Paddy Stewart combination, they got that three on the very next end. And that's um, brought us right back into a nip and tuck situation yeah. again. Well and truly in contention. Needs to connect with something here. Needs it to hold. Oh, good try from Bronwyn Stevens. Played some key bowls over the last two games. The running ease he has another good bowl here. This will be a second shot for Patty Stewart and Kerry Bex. Lovely Bronwyn shot. doesn't need to make much of an adjustment on her first bowl, she was pretty close. Nice track just down to the weight, overplayed it. willing it just to pull up I think it has stopped so still two to the Stuart and Bex combination <laughs> I'm immediately starting to think about this decision to, to play the long end too you know it's Ooh. quite it's, it's interesting that I suppose he was thinking back to you know that, that early end when they did pick up a three when Kerry Bex did throw this length end with the jack and they and they picked up a three so he's probably thought well why not we should give this a, another go as Kerry misses his line horribly here he yeah, doesn't want to get on the back of the that line. blue bowl again good weight Roger on the forehand. That one's flying too. Absolutely flying. Yep. Easy to do on the longer ends, I suppose. You look at it and go, oh, it's a bit further away. Here he looks like he's overcooked his one too. That's uh, high, wide, and handsome. Roger. Well, he's going to need a massive gust of wind. Very tight line. Either that it. or land on something. Man, he was going too. He was oh. very quick. Was he looking I at? See what was what... he looking at? Jack in the ditch. Yeah, well, or... I could see what Bronwyn sort of said to him was to, you know, to play to turn your own bowl up, or if you're tight, you're going to sit on the shot. But he played it far too quick. It's still was... only a draw shot that I think Bronwyn was after. She just wanted him to arrive. <laughs> Perhaps a little surprise. But, um... I mean, it's one of those moments when it leaves yeah. your hand and you go, oh, maybe I didn't communicate that as well as possible, as well as I could have. It's funny in Piers, the, the communication. Communication is vital in, the, in all four set formats of the game. Um, but he was lucky that he didn't make contact with the blue bowl. If he had ripped that off the head, then he's given them a lot more room to draw more shots. I mean, admittedly, Bronwyn's got one out here, bottom right-hand side of our screen. So that that's another third, but yeah. Interesting decision to be made here. You just spend two bowls drawing it on the forehand. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a super duper amount of percentages here for any sort of weight if they're two down. Yeah, I, th 
They're two down, but I think this is not a bad shot option. They've got two thirds, so I think what Bromwyn's looking at here and both. is backhand. Yeah, looking for both bowls. Inside edge of the wing shot bowl, the green one on the right hand side of our screen at three o'clock. Inside edge of that, and might come a, and that should come across uh, and get the back bowl as well. Get both the shots. It should out. do. She might have to play it on her four. Oh, we'll see what sort of weight weight um, she can manage. That's not slow. Look at this. She's very close. Yeah, I think she probably couldn't get underneath that bowl that she just went whistling past. That green bowl that sits at two o'clock to the jack. That short one. I'm not sure if you get underneath that and hold long enough. But looking to get both of the bowls. It'll be an impressive shot if she's able to execute it. Generally, when uh, you drive with your first one, you've committed to driving with your second unless something changes. So we should we should get to see a second attempt here, Dave. He clears that bowl. He's going to be in the area. Or he's just short again. Oh, there's no reason to oh, not yep. have another go if you have already committed no, to it. You're dead right. She can have another crack at this for sure. Make the adjustment. She knows the line. Knows how much it turned the last time. It's just a matter of whether the wind's going to have the effect on it. As she lets it go now. Looking to get them both. Looking to get them both. Oh, that Oy. was so close. It was a mighty effort there from Roman Stevens. And it's going to be two to Paddy and Gary. Genuine attempt. Uh, talking of um, communications or miscommunications, I think I've shared this story before. Uh, so obviously in indoor bowls, if you kill the jack, it's a bad thing, which is all you need to know for the story. That's points against. And there was a pair um, playing, and the skip said to the lead, nail it. And in the skip's mind... Uh, he had told the lead to draw as close as he, he, he could draw. And in the lead's mind, the skip had asked him to drive at the head. Uh, <laughs> and the lead drove at the head, and there was much surprise and confusion as the jack flew off the map. And quite enjoyable for everyone involved. Uh, but I don't think he'll be using the term nail it anymore, and if he does, he'll make it very clear what nail it is supposed to mean. Eleven ten now the score to Paddy and Kerry. And dare I say it, Paddy and Kerry scored on a dot to dot end and now mm. they've shown throwing a well, it's not short short, but definitely a short one, so yeah. Just keeping everyone on their toes. Obviously the, yeah. um, the Jack Length decisions. Pretty good bowl here. Very handy bowl. Roger, persevering with this narrow hand coming this way. Well, actually, he's, he's tending to play the narrow side of the green both directions. Handy bowl, that one. Possibly over the last few ends, he's he's been outled by Kerry Beck, so maybe he might want to contemplate perhaps changing to the other side of the green, the other side of the rink. Willing this bowl back in. Not going to be. Bromwyn on the forehand. Here it comes. Once it dives, it, it won't comes. stop. Look at this bowl. Good shot. Oh. Yeah. Another good handy bowl on the head. She can play with confidence out on that side of the rink again because it's both of their bowls out there. 
Paddy looking to change things just a little bit here. If he gets the edge of the shot bowl, yeah, that's a pretty good effort. That's oh, not bad. Try. Whilst it has exposed the jack, it's made, made the shot a little bit more difficult for Bronwyn. We'll see what she does. Just overcooked it a little bit this time, but it's going to come to a good home round the back here. They'll be happy to have a back bowl. No doubt there'll be um, a few at the Northeast Valley Club huddled around phones or computer screen <laughs> or something down there watching this game with interest. Well, it's Excellent been an exciting club. one. Very, very good bowl here from Kerry Beeks just past the jack, but it'll be counting, I'd imagine. Pretty close. On the back end, reaching line, a reaching line from Roger Stevens. Inside out, oh, he's just gone past the shot bowl clean. That was a great effort. Kerry Stain on the back end. This is a good bowl. Yeah, classy yep, stuff. Lands on the shot bowl. That's what the players see from their end. Two shots it is to the Patty Stewart Kerry Beck's combination as we see it. Um, on this occasion, the Stevens team have got that back bowl. That I'm sure they're pleased they've got it now because I don't think they'll be looking to draw this. They'll be, I'm not saying they're going to drive, but I dare say there'll be some sort of weight yeah, played Bronwyn, to this head. Bronwyn indicated the forehand side using that blue bowl that sits at 10 o'clock to the jack. Roger on the forehand. This is this turning hand, right? So it's going to, once it starts turning, it won't stop. He could get very unlucky here. That's just unlucky. Oh, That's just unlucky. He played that well. Is, that is unlucky. He didn't play that very well. Holes for bowls, eh? I mean, you literally, he did everything he possibly could. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the bowl, yep. and you just have to go, look, I gave it every chance in the world, and it was the one out of ten times I could put the bowl down that track, and it isn't going to work. So what you say to yourself, if you're going to play the same shot right, I'm going to try and go through that hole again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you go through the hole again, you go, ah. Oh. <laughs> you go, oh, okay. Didn't I didn't know I was that good. Twice, <laughs> <laughs> Paddy on the back end. Okay, so Bromwyn will be looking to play. I thought Roger had another bowl to come, but he hasn't. So Bromwyn will be looking to play the shot that Roger attempted. Contact on the blue short bowl or just underneath that to land on the shot bowl. Get the jack. A few options there. Very close if it lets go. Just needs to oh, let go at all. Did it, which surprised me because that's the wind assisted hand. Yeah, I think she'll play. You've got a feeling that her second bowl will be very accurate. Well, it wouldn't be good to miss it twice. 
Petty on the back end. Yeah, second time lucky here. It's a plane flies over here at Burnside Bowling Club. She's made the adjustment with the line. She's close here. Close to nothing. Oh. <laughs> a swing and a miss. And the game. Two shots. Momentum has just swung. It's been a few ends since we've seen from when a Roger score when they did score it was a five to be fair as we approach the tenth end 13 10 the score now to Patty Stewart and Kerry Becks intriguing so the dropping dropping the five was the wake up call yeah kick them <laughs> into gear <laughs> We've got the jack on the two metre mark, but the mat is up a few metres this time, so not quite the dot to dot length end. Be a three quarter length, this one. Roger persevering with that tight hand. And onto the good jack. Effect Very, this good time. Bowl. Very good bow. Very good bow. The handy one here from Kerry too. And if this stays on, it's not in a bad home. Yeah, just oh, hang on. Yep, it did. You can see there, Kerry's bowls past the jack. Rogers is right on it. And Rogers other bowls right by the ditch. So no doubt the Burnside Greens will get a good watering tonight, if not yes. a, a flooding. <laughs> Expected. Have you seen the um, how good's that machine, Dave? That was created by the engineering department of the Canterbury University in the early 70s. That Jamie Ferris he puts it out onto the green and presses a button, and it's gradually it floods it. Well, it's um, yep, it's a fantastic contraption, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, so, um, the, f the flooding of the green <clears throat> brings up a good story. When the Asia Pacific Championships were held in Christchurch, I think it was 2007 or somewhere around about there. Yeah. And the the finals day was held at the Papua Nui Club where, um, oh, now I've forgotten his name, the greenkeeper there. Right, um, oh, doesn't matter, I can't remember his name, but anyhow. It'll come to you. <laughs> we had a lot of... The Asian teams, Thailand and Singapore and Hong Kong, China, play, teams like that were there. And play finished for the day, so the tournament was all over and done with. Ronnie Saban. There we go. That came to me. Ronnie Saban, the greenkeeper. What a great effort that was. Close. We see two very good shots here for the Stevens combination. Ronnie Saban went out and flooded the green. Put the plugs in the in the ditch and f slowly but surely put the hose out and flooded the green. And these it really fascinated the the visiting teams and and they were all up at the window and some of them were out there taking photos. And so <laughs> Ronnie Ronnie snuck into the shed and comes out with a fishing rod <laughs> and casts out into the middle of the well. The cameras were out big time then. They were, here he was sitting on the side of the green fishing in the, as the water was uh, flooding the green. It was That's fantastic. very comical. And he had, an, he had an aluminium fish on the end of it. That, um, <laughs> yeah. 
That's great. Thank you for sharing Ronnie that story, Sa- Dave. That's very funny. Ronnie Saban, a real, real character and a fantastic greenkeeper in his own right. <laughs> Would have gone down well, I'm sure. Oh, they loved it. They were just couldn't get enough of it out there with their cameras clicking wildly. This Close is here. Line. Very Look at this. Line. Has he got the jack? Oh, he's oh, he got just... that front pole square. What a beautiful effort. Good result, though. It's opened up the head now. They can see that bowl. They've got two or three seconds. If uh, Roger doesn't get another one there now, even if he does, it's a good shot option now for Paddy Stewart when he goes down to the mat to play his first bowl. He can he can play once again, looking to arrive to the head, sit that shot bowl out. In fact, Kerry's still got another bowl to come. He must have yeah. oh, he followed, followed his bowl down. Such as his excitement, he followed his bowl. Fair enough. Every time I decide to follow my bowls, Dave, they tend to not turn out very well. So, well why am I following rubbish? So <laughs> I tend to stay down my end of the uh, end of the rink. Kerry on the backhand. So the probe again. He's very. He has bowl. to be very close here. Got the jack, I think. Oh, oh no, how did he not have the jack there? I thought that was perfect. Beautiful effort. Yep. The number of times, too, that you see players when it comes to following the bowl number of times when players are on the draw just trying to draw the shot and they decide they're going to follow their bowl down they finish short mm-hmm. it's a common fault because we're going to oh i'm going to follow my bowl down so we come up far too early and don't send the bowl before we leave the mat as we see an excellent bowl here from roger very very good bowl from roger stevens i don't think that'll stop patty from playing with some weight but it's another bowl on the head for Roger, so they'll be happy about that. Yeah, it's handy there. As Paddy makes his way down. Slightly older model bowls. He's been playing very well with them. Now what's he doing? Is he lining up to have a proper go at this? No, just the way he was standing on the mat. No, he's playing well, with a fair bit of weight. It looks like it's going to duck across tight. the head. Yeah, yeah, he's tight. Yeah. So that bowl's gone clean. Still worthwhile. You look at all those bowls at the back of the head. The Stevens combination have to be thinking, well, there's serious danger at the back, right? Like that's, <laughs> if the jack does go it's in there. Seven o'clock direction. Did Roger, did Roger have one of his earlier on though that just stayed on the? Yeah, I think. Is oh, there the toucher in the, the ditch? Oh, it could look. be too. Yes. You're still yes, correct that though. Was Roger's... Yeah. Yeah. Not quite as dangerous then, but still probably prudent to to cover on the forehand. Definitely. Definitely not fatten the target up, that's for sure. Don't want to be doing that. Well placed bowl there. Yep. That's what the head looks like. Paddy had tried to play the back end, which is to the right as we see it. Interesting. Will he still play with that same speed? I, I, I su- suggesting that he probably will. I think so. He's almost a better result through the blue, but that would require a change of hands, and in general you want to stay the back end. You know, if you've played one shot on the back end already, easier to make a correction than it is to, 
to start from scratch. So probably a backhand run shot from from Paddy. Be in the area, he'll be happy. Very square. He's close, He's close here. This time. Is he going to get down? Oh, oh, he got one of them. Oh, <laughs> he's just shifted it. I think it's still two. Well, he would have done for another half an inch of turning there. Favour us for two, I hear. Roger say. So, bonus shot for Bronwyn. Chance for her to level things up if she can draw another one here. Just Not going quite. a tad, I think. Biting at the end. Now. Uh, yeah. So Bronwyn and Roger are going to get off the dreaded 10 at long last. And the question has to be asked, where's the jack going to be thrown, Dave? Very, very good question. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough, I suppose, but you've got a pair that scored a five and then haven't scored since being able to score again. There needs to be some consideration going into to where they want the jack to be thrown. So Roger thinks it's two after he's been down and measured it. He's just invited Kerry to double-check that. Looks like it must have been two. Yep. So, 13 12, the score now. On the 11th end of 15, here at the Burnside Bowling Club. Final day of bowls here after what feels like about a month's uh, high level play. <laughs> it's only been 10 days, 11 days worth. And Roger delivering the jack. Doesn't look like, like it had a lot of force behind it. Hey, Bronwyn's walking up to meet it, so... Very short. Longer Very than, short. The, it's short, yep. If you are uh, tuning in, having participated in the... Somerset National Singles and Peers. Uh, please check your inbox. There will be a survey there asking you what you thought of the event. Where we ask this, we've asked the same questions plus a few bonus ones for the last three years. So have a look at your inbox. If it's not there, look at the junk mail. It may be there. I invite your opinions. It's always nice to get uh, feedback from participants and it informs our decisions going forward as we appear to have lost one of the players, Dave. <laughs> Maybe gone for a, on a toilet break or something? Yep, looks a bit like it. Yes, it is always good in the, and for players and people, participants, to give their feedback on, on an event. I mean, there's enough bar room talk about events and moaning and groaning goes on sometimes. I'm not saying all the time, but so, yeah, put... Put pen to paper or get your keyboard working and give the feedback on yep. how you think the event, these events can be improved. Yep. The most constructive thing that can be done is to actually uh, communicate back to any organisation that runs any event as to what you think might be done differently. And it's how we find um, uh, the bonus questions are often sort of, it's sort of changing questions. So we get a gauge as to whether the participants are happy or not happy. And if they're not, you can change something around. So have a look in your inbox and answer that. We've had 150 people respond so far, but we had nearly 810. So wouldn't mind a few more, wouldn't mind a few more filling out that survey and letting us know how you think we got on. Gary Bex has settled down to be very, very consistent in this final. Look 
That's another bowl yeah, that's just with your bounce. Interesting that he's played the swooping hand and Roger's played the narrow hand. I'm surprised mm. Roger hasn't swapped because he hasn't nailed that. Coming this way, not so bad going back down towards the car park, but coming this way, he's really struggled. So I'm surprised that he hasn't swapped his hand. Sometimes we are... You can see it a bit easier as a as an outsider looking in or a rinkside coach or even the skip, Dave, and maybe that's when you just sort of... It's the function of an outsider, isn't it, or the skip in that, in that space where you might just gently say, have you noticed, how do you think you're going on that hand? And that either uh, improves their ability to play it or they realise that maybe it's an idea to switch. You're absolutely right, and it's um, it's amazing in this game. I mean... That wind looks like it might have dropped down again a little bit because these bowls are not swooping back quite as much from out there as what they were. But yes, it's amazing that um, Roger plays the narrow hand, but as soon as Bronwyn gets down to the match, she doesn't hesitate. She's on the big swooping hand, mm. although she has to change this time because there are bowls in the running on, on the hand that she prefers to play. So Look at this from Bronwyn Stevens. Played some very good bowls today. That's another lovely one. What a beautiful what shot. Outstanding bowl. What a great crossover. That's, she's played very few bowls down that side of the rink, and she leapt over there and nailed it straight away. Excellent bowl. Onto his own bowl here, is he? No, he's just oh, around just it. around it. On this occasion, we'll definitely let Roger play the back end. <laughs> bowls in the way on the forehand, of course, or opposition bowls in the way. Probably find that they'll play the forehand, Kerry and Paddy, but uh, definitely the safer option for the. Stevens to stick to the back end now. Pretty good for speed again there from Roger. Oh, that surprises me too. I thought Kerry might have stuck to the forehand, rolling his own, own bowls in on that side. Although he, he was after the shot bowl. So that, that I understand now what he was trying to do. Roger will be desperately keen to get another shot here. Their bowl's a bit lonely on the head at the moment. How much speed's he got here around his own? Oh, that might help a bit. That'll help. Yep, another positive draw on the forehand this time from Kerry Bex. He can reach the shot bowl itself, turn his own wide one in out here. He's just hit the wrong line, that's all. It was far too wide for what they wanted. I'm not sure whether that's one or two for Roger and my yeah, measure for second, definitely. Maybe favour the mm. blue bowl. Call it one and a half. It yep, covers, covers all bases. <laughs> Bronwyn on her back end. I'll be a million miles away here. Turn that Up and over. over. Lovely shot. Ow. Do you Lovely think... shot, but a little bit unlucky with the result now. Think... She's left a nice target there for Patty. Do you think Patty will be short? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's tight, though. Oh, swing and a miss. 
You look back there, there's the two bowls right at the back. You can just see just how short that head is. Paddy almost has to go a bit quicker at this. And there is danger for the Stevens combination. They're looking at definitely getting around the back now. It's whether they go for the extreme back bowl or whether they this, they're three down out the back there. So whether they go for the backest bowl or whether they try and split the three bowls up out the back. She definitely will be heading round the back with this bowl. As Paddy joins the spectators on the seat there, just mulling things over. Going deep. Heading round the back. Or has it come back onto the rink? It may not have. Just oh, they're leaving it there. Perhaps it is. Right, so Paddy on the forehand. Needs to use anything. He's oh. missed it. Big moment. Big moment. Two. Two to the Northeast Valley combination, back to back twos, and they've hit the front. 14 to 13, four ends to go. We're going to have an engrossing finish to this game, I'm thinking. So we had that um, break when the Northeast Valley combination got that five and shot out to a 10 5 lead. Then the momentum swung on as a result of a lucky bowler, to be fair to say, on the very next end, when Paddy Stewart picked up a three, but then they scored on they scored on a three, a one, a two, and a two to take the lead. Uh, and then the last two ends, it's been the Stevens as have come back with back-to-back -back twos. So she sure has. Apart from that five, it's been nip and tuck. Oh. We'll see. Oopsie. <laughs> imagine oh, if, he, imagine if he'd gone Jack in the ditch there. <laughs> oh, dear. Roger decided to play that full-length end again. And obviously in his own mind he was determined he was going to be up and um, consequently he's had a running toucher. Good bowl there from Kerry Beggs. Well, I've got the back covered. <laughs> the bowl in the ditch you're not wrong he's a bit quick again stayed up on the paddock Gary Beck's it was a really good example there of his delivery he takes it to his right so the bowl it should mean it swoops across the head more easily than a bowl taken from a, a normal starting place. Players make their way down. Bronwyn looking like she's going to play the back end, so because it's an off centre jack, means she'll go into sort of a less played part. You can see the bowl there on your screen. It's not far away here from Bronwyn Stevens, just down to the speed. Stayed up on the paddock as well. That's a good shot. So 
Patty will be just looking to beat that bowl of Kerry Bex's that we can just see on the screen at the bottom of the screen there, but he looks like he's a bit quick as well. And all the way into the ditch. See the centre from the right of our screen. There it is. It's got better speed this time. And it's going to be the shot, I'd imagine. Oh, good shot. Yep. Has he sent it? No, oh, he's going to pull up ball. short this time. A very loose head by these two team standards. Started off with well, Roger Stevens accidentally <laughs> snicking the jack over the side and ended up in the ditch, which is, is sort of the way to start it. Oh, I don't think that's helped people at all, the fact that <laughs> yeah. that happened and... I don't know whether Rogers sent this one either. He's overcorrected. He was worried that he was heavy both times with his feet. Well, he was probably at good speed. He was just um, narrow on that end. tight line. Easy to be narrow with that delivery. Willing it to hold. Has He's done so. Shot, though, Very yeah, well, good bowl. Yep. Much a seesawing game here. We watch this bowl. Well, Roman's still watching it. Oh, just going a little bit. Just passing through just a smidgen. So one shot to Kerry Beeks at the moment as he's let his last bowl for this end go. And he's changed his hand. Why? Yeah, I wonder why myself. Not quite sure why he's done that. but uh, And he's going to go sailing into the ditch. I have no idea why he changed his hand there. Very interesting decision. See some crowd in the background. Yeah. Sunny Christchurch Day. There is some options here for jack movement. For the look at all those bowls behind the jack. Every single one of them belongs to the Stevens combination. So the opportunity to go jack hunting, and if she's a bit tight, shot bowl hunting. She's getting herself ready. Definitely a definitely a chance here on the forehand. Just missing that short bowl of Rogers. Looking for the jack, or if she's a bit tighter than that, she can get through to the shot bowl. She she's having a nibble here. Tight here, though. Oh, I just yeah, chipped just it off. Too tight. So Patty, his last bowl as well. Remember, on the back end. Either Clears side that of that bowl. He's not too bad. Oh, he's just going to run away narrow now. So the shot's still on for Bronwyn. Oh, Roger doesn't want her to have another go. Oh, okay, drawing now. I wonder what the situation is on the head. Are they only one down? It's just hard to know exactly how far back the nearest bowl is. Have a look. This bowl's going to be short. Oh, so. she's short. Yeah. Um, oh, so they could be two down. That bowl is just showing at the top of the screen there. Oh, 
she didn't want to be short there. I think she, I I suspect she was prepared for another nibble, and I think yes. uh, I think perhaps she wasn't expecting Roger to say just draw it. I think she had psychologically no, gone. Drawing. I've had one. I've had one drive. I'll have another one. And I'm not sure if she was ready to to switch back to the draw. But Patty hasn't been able to add the bonus there, so we'll just see how many that was. What we do know is we're now on the 13th end. That was one to see Bronwyn signalling. 14 apiece on the 13th end here at Burnside. Well, we've got a fitting final as far as Close stuff as concerned. It's clear that on the scoreboard, on meaning, it's um, very, very close. 14 all can't get any closer, of course. It's been very well contested indeed. And Kerry's turn to bring the mat up and play a shorter length end. He started off pretty well here. Look at that. That's a good shot. Well played. So essentially what we are in is a, a three-end tiebreaker, or a three-end game, as it's all square. That's a good bowl too from Roger. Run on a little bit, but it's in a lovely position. So, huge weekend of bowls for the for all the players. I mentioned earlier on about the big day that they have on the Friday, the first day of the tournament, where they play four games to our time limit, but with all the walking, it's a massive day of bowls. Eight hours on your feet on the green, all this walking that you do in this format, and then three games on the Saturday. There'll be a few that'll sleep well tonight. Yeah, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get your steps in. <laughs> you know, something would be wrong. A great correction there from Roger. Jack right on the two metre mark. Looks like we've, things have calmed down a bit again wind-wise, even though the planes are still going over the top. That's a good start there, Paddy. Which is good. Thank gives us a good yep, conditions to finish this game with if we can keep it this way for the next um, 20 minutes or so. Around the corner for three. So asked for a little trail there. On the backhand, looking for the jack. It's one of those ones where it's the, the, the instruction that you give. Asking to suck the jack round the corner for three. Whereas I oh. prefer... Genuine attempt, but I prefer draw the shot if you happen to touch it, bonus. Because asking a player to specifically drag the jack, he just, it's not a very big target, that jack. It's a pretty challenging and bowl to I, play. It is, and so I quite often think, look, just draw the shot. If you happen to touch it, bonus. It's a nice green Sometimes. there from Bronwyn. So, so Paddy purposely tried to trail the jack and he still finished in a very good home don't get me wrong he has but if he just the instruction is try, try and draw a shot if you happen to bite, to touch it round the corner happy days yeah. 
So here we have Kerry on his back end. That idiosyncratic delivery. Let's it go to his right. Presume that is the bell for the other divisions. Needs us to hold. Look, all these narrow bowls. And that's an indication the wind's died down, isn't it? Because it's a hand that has been holding a lot because the wind's been blowing left to right. It now looks like it's holding left. Uh, or holding less, sorry. And that would indicate that the wind is just quietened down a little bit. Yeah, most definitely. Yep. And I noticed for the last end or so, that the last couple of ends, that the big sweeping hand is not swooping as much as it was earlier either. So, yes, definitely conditions are a lot more conducive to um, just taking your regular lines on the rink now. Roger really needs to get another bowl on the head here. They've only got, they might have the shot, but this is a very good bowl. lonely. Inside out for two. Yeah, that is, that's that's quite classy. Bowl. That's quite good. So it's another bowl that'll be locked on the head too. It's uh, they may not have the shot, they may have it, but they definitely needed another one up there on the head somewhere. Yeah, lovely bowl. When's this one going to break? Not in time, just snicking past. It's going to finish past the head, so there's a catching pin. If they decide to play, if Bronwyn, uh, if uh, Paddy and Kerry decide to play that more aggressive shot. So this one from Roger, he doesn't want to be short, and that's what he's going to be. He needed, desperately needed that bowl to be up and past between the jack and those and those back bowls that we can see to the bottom left of here. That's where he needed to be in that area there. And I wouldn't mind betting what I talked about earlier on occurred. He knew that he was going to be following that bowl down the green. You just come up and out of your delivery just that little bit early and takes the speed off the bowl yep. and you drop short. You know the moment you let it go too. So Paddy here, this is a big moment. You're 14 apiece on his backhand. Got an OK head, got opportunities for results. It looks tight out of the hand. Very tight. Give it a chance, Paddy. Give it a chance, we heard from Harry Beck. So he hasn't got the weight either, so... He only had dead draw, not even dead draw rate weight. What are they looking at here? They're looking at playing a shot. That's very brave. Oh, I don't know whether I like that. Why not just draw oh. one round the back? Do you want to use your commentator's veto, Dave? <laughs> just yep, say, I'm going to put the... Say big, no. The big, yep. Yelling out the window. No, wrong shot. You're not <laughs> playing that. I'll throw them a paper playing. Interesting to see if they're actually going to play that shot. It's well, a very complicated Rob, way of achieving a very simple thing, isn't it? Well, I think that... Yeah, oh, yeah. Danger is being playing with the weight that Roger wants, being a foot or so wide and just clipping the jack and sailing on past yourself and playing the opposite shot for them. She's going to end up playing the shot that they wanted almost. No, nah, it was all locked in. It was a complicated way of playing a simple shot. Um, but again, they're in the final and they've been playing well, so fair enough. However you see it. No doubt Paddy would have heeded Kerry's advice here and he'll be a little bit he's more very positive close. this time. He's very close, but he's going to miss it wide. Oh, he's hold it. And as I said earlier on, very, very difficult shot to play that one because that jack's not very big. And if, if Paddy had had two genuine attempts at just drawing another shot instead of going jack hunting... The chances are he would have played the shot anyhow just by trying to draw another shot 
or draw the shot if they're down. We don't really know who's got the shot here. Oh, the Stevens are deep in thought here. So maybe they are one down. And they're looking to play the shot, to punch the shot bowl off the head. In which case, if they do that, they're going to make three or four of it. Yeah, high risk, high there's reward. danger. There's danger involved in it. It's high risk, isn't it? Because you, you miss a bowl wide and you, you've sold the farm essentially with an end to go. And if you nail it... Right. She's just drawing by the looks of things. Just drawing. Try to play Patty's That's shot. That weight, that right. weight's not just draw weight. Goodness <laughs> gracious me. Oh, it's one, two, the Northeast Valley combination. So they hit the front again by one, 15 to 14, and we've got two ends to go. Just deciding what length to throw the jack. On the forehand. Okay. Oh, he's going to try and do the same. Well, not try and do, but he's <laughs> doing something similar to what he did the last time coming in this way. Not quite as dramatic as the last time, and he didn't touch the jack this time either. Not got the running this time, Kerry. So the long length end that was decided was would going to be the end for Roger and Bronwyn. Roger felt that that bowl of Kerry Beck's was in his draw line, so he switched to the back end. How's the weight? Needs it to run. So the penultimate end, a one shot lead to the Northeast Valley Pier. Huge end this one. Northeast Valley score even a one. They go into the last end a little bit confident. And it's two bowls that anyone you would rather have back to have another go at. Correct. Anyone scores a number here. Mm. And they're going to go into the last end full of confidence too. So crucial, crucial end. Just that. That wind dropping away is not bringing those bowls home like it was earlier on for Bronwyn. And she probably had a similar line to what she'd been playing while the wind was about. Now she'll have to make the adjustment. And Patty looks like he might have done the same thing. Sending it out there looking for that wind to bring it home, but the wind's disappeared and consequently that's what's happening. Both of them have wasted beautiful weight there. Get a line this time, but taking all the speed off. This is a loose oh, end very, for the very ultimate end, isn't it? Are they a bit nervous here? We got some nerves coming into play. Potentially. Ooh. 
Now Paddy hasn't sent it either. He's dropped one short. Dare I say it? Following his bowl again. Mm. So Roger on the back end, very loose end, so that the players would expect that the rest of the bowls will get closer than what they are now. There's plenty of room to draw it. Beautiful line, just overcooked it. Kerry following his first bowl down this end. Not far away if it's got the weight right. Well, he's going to. He's chugging on through. It's like the jack... It's keeping the bowls away from it. <laughs> One can get close on this end. Kerry obviously hasn't got enough steps up yet. He followed his bowl down, and now he's got to go back up the other end to play his second bowl. And Rod just put even more speed on that one. Mm. Not a great bowl that last. I mean, you were heavy by... Um, two metres with your first bowl and then to add more speed with your second is uh, a bit baffling. Maybe the nerves are kicking in. Maybe, maybe. I mean, the wind's died down, so nerves are an absolute chance. Kerry on his back end. Skipped and won a New Zealand Fours title. Needs it to hold this here. Horribly tight. Word. We've got a shocking uh, end we, here. We've seen better. We have seen better ends today. <laughs> it's just, um, I suppose it happens. But ultimate end. But uh, even the players, I think, will just be like, <laughs> "What's going on?" We've had heads where the what? entire sixteen bowls have been between uh, where the bowl and the the jack is here. <laughs> on the back end. So it will be Roger holding shot with that short blue bowl of his, and this one is no. going a bit quick. Overplayed. I mean, there's plenty of room here. I wouldn't be surprised oh, if we saw Paddy put two within that. There's plenty of plenty of room. Oodles of room. You'd back Paddy to to draw the shot with this first bowl, definitely. Yep. Easy peasy. Kerry just giving him a physical sort of indication of where he wants the bowl to be. Paddy just taking his time. We would expect this bowl to draw the shot. I'd be rather surprised if it doesn't, to be fair. So there he is on his back end with the static delivery. Well, based on that reaction, I would say maybe it isn't... Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like it, yeah. And this, that's the reason why. He's high, wide and handsome. No. Oh, oh my word, that could be the shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hard to tell. Maybe the blue bowl still got the shot. That's, um, I don't even know what to say, which is not great from a commentator. Bronwyn taking just two or three extra seconds on the mat here with this bowl. Here we go. This is a good line here from Bronwyn Stevens. Got a metre of room to draw within. Oh, she's no. going running through again. Well, a golden chance to go one up last end oh, if they were already word. holding the shot. We've literally seen entire heads in this game, which could almost fit between the jack and the closest bowl here. This is... Um, Quite unusual. It's just got to be nerves. That's all I can put it down to. Yeah. They maybe have thought, look, we're on the penultimate end of this massive Piers event that's been going for a long time. Look at that. 
There's a bit of it's a bit of space. There's a fair few. Let's just wait for the bowl to come in to a fair bit of room there. A fair few ugly looking bowls. Is Kiri, how's Kiri reacting? No, it's gone sailing on through. My it's word. One of the strangest heads of bowls I think I've ever I've ever seen. Essentially saw sixteen ineffective bowl sixteen ineffective bowls and the most ineffective bowl got a wick off a side one and sat in for, for one shot. <laughs> so so we're gonna see fifteen all as we go into the final end. That was bizarre. I hope, hope the um, well we expect to see the standard get up in this in this final end, but I think nerves, I think you're right. I think the occasion sort of got to all four players there. But we get another opportunity as we approach this final end. Fifteen apiece. Fifteen 15-15. And Kerry's decided to throw another longish one. So neither side can come into this last end with any sort of confidence at all after that last end. <laughs> They'll just be having to mentally put all that out of their mind and just, I'm drawing another shot here. Simple as, I'm just drawing another shot. And Kerry Beeks has started with a pretty good one. Not a bad reply either. Those two were closer than all 16 of the last end. Yeah, it's, it's just bizarre, <laughs> isn't it? It's just this game we play, just strange. Yeah, good bowl, good home. Interesting decision there from Roger. He's third to last bowl of the game. He decides to send one down the other side of the rink. Mm. Even though there was still room to draw the shot on the backhand, the side that he'd been playing all along. I sort of mentioned earlier on I would have liked to have seen him give the forehand a try, but maybe not leave it till the very last end. Pretty good bowl here. Very good bowl from Paddy. Lovely bowl. Inside that bowl. How far is this going to come? It's got home? the right line. Hasn't got the running. Mate, I'd, I'd rather you... Yeah, throw it down here. Give me the best one. Not a silly idea from Kerry Bex. Let's get the back one in now. We've got two good shots up there. They've got to be beaten or... So let's let's just get the insurance policy in early. Not a bad one. <laughs> he, <doesn't, laughs> he hasn't done that. He's drawn another <laughs> shot. Oh, it just ran through a little bit, but definitely not where Kerry Beeks wanted it. From it on the forehand. She clears her own bowl. She's in the area. She clears her own bowl. 
Oh, she oh. wouldn't have been too bad. That was a great effort. I thought she had that absolutely perfect. Just an eighth of a bowl underneath the line. Ruining her first bowl because I think that would have been very close if her first bowl hadn't have got in the way. Absolutely. Stand there waiting. As Patty and Kerry talk through all the possibilities. Well, I think Kerry was on the right track. They've got to get one round the back, I feel. Just in case the North East Valley pair decide to um, play with any sort of speed, any sort of weight. Okay. They're not, though. They're not. drawing another shot. Just trying to stack it up, are they? Clear the front bowl. Oh, he's made. It, he's actually made it harder. That's a really annoying bowl for a forehand shot. True, it is definitely in the eye. I'm not. I mean, it's not intentionally there, but absolutely sort of mud in the eye situation. And a reasonable head building for for Paddy and Kerry. I tend to sort of agree with you, though. The way you look at that head, it's actually looking fine. You don't need to score more than one point to win this game. You're on the final end of the final. We should be looking, if you're Paddy and Kerry, where the jack may go and just sort of make it easier to recover if it goes there or even better have the shot if the jack goes to wherever you think it might be headed. As we see Roger on his forehand. I've decided to still keep trying to draw the shot. He's close. He's, he's very close. close. Yeah, he gets, oh, oh he's there's the mud in the there. eye. That's that foul. Now you might see some aggression from the Northeast Valley pair. Underneath those short bowls on the forehand with weight looking to attack the jack, get the result off the bowls. They've eliminated the opportunity to get the draw on the forehand now, so unless they swap and just try and dead draw the shot on the backhand, which I don't think they will. So I wouldn't mind betting that with his second bowl, Roger will be playing with weight up there on the forehand. So the so Paddy and Kerry have to go around the back this time, surely. What? I'm very intrigued by the decision making here. He was trying to get round the back, but he's drawn another shot. Oh dear. I think Paddy had his foot out the back here. Yeah. He wanted, yeah. They wanted, I yeah. think they've got to go hunting the jack here now. They've got to go looking for the kill. They're very talented. Underneath the front yeah. bowls. The talented bowlers, right, There's both the Stevenses, they've been around, they've played a lot of bowls by now. You've got three bowls left to go. You may as well have, just go, look, one of the three that we have a nibble at this is going to is gonna connect. Um, well, they've decided not to. They've decided to draw the shot. Well, I mean, if, if, if they successfully draw the shot and win this final, I'll eat my shoe. Um, actually, I won't eat my shoe. It wouldn't be that. <laughs> I'll watch that. I take. I immediately take back my statement. I mean, if they successfully execute that shot selection, fair play. But it does certainly look um, looks more inviting just to to back yourself. They're very talented. They've got the ability. It's easier to play those aggressive shots, particularly in these situations. But yeah, you know, opting for the draw, and it's looking interesting, Dave. So I'm glad I took back the thing I said about my shoe. He's very close. If he lands that and falls back in, oh no, he's just going to fall out. If he'd missed a so drive shot by down. that much, he'd have been effective. Right, you had to be you had to be within a bowl if you're trying to trying to dead draw it. I guess that now does give them the option if they're only yep. one down. She's just and um, 
Bronwyn was just checking that to see whether they were one or two down. Did he get the second shot with that bowl? Because if he did, now's the chance to play on the forehand to get rid of the Chip shot bowl. Off. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you aren't going to get your own bowl at the back there without getting something up the front first, without getting the jack or the shot bowl. So. Paddy, I would suggest they do have a second shot because they're trying to draw a second shot here. Run it out, he says. That's pretty classy. Oh, and they have. That's a great bowl. That That's is a lovely a shot. Bowl. Yeah, really good bowl. Well, that's forced the hand, I would suggest. Yeah, Where's the jack going? You into net. Yep. Yeah, where is it? Is it killing? Or is it going to spring off those back bowls and go dead? Yeah, interesting, isn't it? It's certainly going in the sort of 7 o'clock direction. We'd need to have a proper, a better look at it. The players will be able to see where the jack's going. Going in 7 o'clock, I would suggest it might hit the the two bowls that are touching each other that are to 10 o'clock of the tee and maybe spring off and kill from there. But we'll know when she hits it. On the back end. Okay, needs a good result now. She's underneath the line. Needs a good result. Got the opposite of a good result because oh, it's blocked up the front. She's rolled a bowl over and right on the line, right on the drive line now. Do not go anywhere near it. Take a million miles of green on the forehand and just go deep somewhere. <laughs> Gotta go deep. <laughs> Surely go. this time. We've been asking we've been asking them to go deep for the since about the fourth bowl of the end. I feel like I've heard it a few times. <laughs> Here we go. So potentially Paddy's last bowl. On the forehand, he's... What's happening? How's the weight? Yeah, he's got oh, sorry, I was briefly, con I was concerned. There we go. Oh, that's a good it's bowl. a very good that's bowl. A very bowl. good bowl. So if the kill is the only option, but how do they get at it? So hard. To get enough turn on your bowl to get the shot bowl. I know, it's far too far out. You'd almost legitimately just about have to hit the shortest bowl. Like, <laughs> to get that, the the shot bowl square enough to kill it. Maybe you could yeah. swing across on the forehand side. Yeah, Collins just said she'll just draw, she'll just draw the, a side toucher for one. That's Collins' contribution to this commentary. Thank Is you, Colin. Eat his shoe? Uh, no, he wouldn't be eating his shoe. He wouldn't be silly she enough to... <laughs> Uh, they'll find something to hit and hit it. Uh, it's just figuring out what you want to hit here. Beautiful bowl of patties in the end to draw that front touch up. Really forced the hand of the Stevenses, who sort of perhaps were a bit cautious on this end. And we see now Bronwyn with her last bowl to save this match. So, you heard the instructions loud and clear there from Roger. Just swinging round the bowl. Swinging round the short bowl to make contact. She's very close. If she gets past that one. Oh, she was unlucky. What a mighty what a effort. Attempt. And congratulations go to... Patty Stewart and Kerry Becks, who've been crowned out champions for the 2024 Rawley Stewart Butter Invitation Burnside Pairs. What a mighty final. What are your final thoughts, uh, Dave, on, on how the day's gone? Well, it's been an awesome day of bowls. We saw some fantastic bowls uh, once the wind settled down. Real challenging conditions for the first game that we that we commentated on. The wind was really up and it caused havoc for the players. Then it calmed down and the heads became so much better. Mm. Our semi-final game was an enthralling affair between uh, Bronwyn Stevens, Bronwyn and, and 
uh, Roger and the Australian pair. Uh, and it was good to see, you know, as I said earlier, no disrespect to the Australians. They support this event fantastically with the top players that they send over here. But an all Kiwi final. And well, we saw it all in that final. We saw some enthralling bowls. We saw the lead change hands left, right, and centre, and then we saw a couple of shocking hands, especially the second, to the last end. So the, <laughs> the the final had everything it's you the full wanted. Mix. It had everything. <laughs> it sure did. So uh, an enthralling day's bowls and a, another fantastic uh, Burnside pairs. Stu Butter Pears comes to a conclusion. Oh, great stuff, and thank you for that uh, rap, Dave. And that's us. That's us for. It feels like we've been broadcasting from Burnside for the last three or four months, but it's just been ten days, and that's our ten days done. So, thank you for tuning in to watch both the Burnside Pears and the Somerset Nationals. Keep your eyes peeled on the Bowls New Zealand Facebook page and the YouTube channel. We've got more events uh, coming up soon, uh, but until then, uh, so long, and thank you for watching.